Good morning, everyone. Hello, welcome to Sewing Street. It's great to have you here on what is National Cat Day. It might even be International Cat Day. It's one of the two, but it's great to have your company and it's great to be here. Thanks so much for all of the comments that people have sent me personally. If you don't know me, I'm Adam, and I do a lot of uh, dressmaking usually and demonstrating. But today, they've put me in the hot seat. They've put me in charge, and it's great. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got a great day lined up for you. Really looking forward to it. But if you're a regular Sewing Street fan, you're going to know this anyway. If not, this is how we start with Sewing Street. We're going to start with our early birds. Tweet, tweet, here we go. Fabulous stuff. So here is today's early bird, and it's the hands-free LED magnifier. Now you can get this at a great price. We've had this on a few times, but it's a real great tool. If you're somebody that perhaps struggles with threading a needle, I know even at my age, I do, um, it would be a great tool to have. Um, what features has it got? Well, it's got a uh, six times magnification area. So that's a uh, the little bit at the bottom. Then there's two times magnification with the whole piece there. It's got LED lighting, which is absolutely fabulous. It can stand up if you want it to. It's got a little stand on the back. Um, so you just flip that down and that's good. Um, so you can perch it or you can wear it like I sometimes wear my glasses with a neck chain. Look at this. <laughs> It's adjustable on the back, so you've got all of that as well. The non-slip foot pads. So uh, that is today's early bird. 9.99, it's not. We're gonna give it you a good price. Here we are, we're crashing it already. Look at this. 7.99, all right? So that's it. People are already coming through for this already, which is fantastic. Um, so 7.99 for your magnifying glass there few messages on the bottom of the screen now am i going to be able to read this morning adam lovely to see you presenting today from susan in greater manchester oh thank you so much oh another one adam good luck in the hot seat from claire thanks claire bless you from bristol getting the messages in from everywhere keep the messages coming in as well we do like that um so yeah that's our early bird don't forget that if you've got that in um, your basket as always with all of our products it's important to make sure that you check out there's one p and p all day all right so however many items that you order it's going to be one p and p so there we are 7.99 you want pp and you don't have to wait um throughout the show you can put things in your basket and check out and then you'll only pay that one pmp all day which is fabulous right let's see then what we've got coming up on today's show let's have a little look at the menu okay so 8 a.m we've got cat fabrics and kits this is fantastic kicking off our international cat day today and we've got a little surprise as well to start the hour. Um, we'll see what that is, but being a dressmaker, I had to get a little bit of a something in. So there we are, 9 a.m. Are oh, one of my bestest friends in the sewing world, Alice and Marion joins us for pet coats. That's going to be great indeed. So that's pet coats with Alice and Marion at 9 a.m. Then we've got 10 a.m which is cat and dog toys with joe carter another one of uh, our sewing uh, street favorites and uh, i've never actually worked with joe so i'm really excited to get her in at 10 a.m 11 o'clock is pet beds with alice and marion uh, so we'll be welcoming back for more pet makes and then at 12 o'clock let's see if i can do this perfect homewares We've also got a load of new fabrics scattered through the hours that we've managed to pinch and get in there, which is absolutely great. Lots of um, stuff as well. So there's three ways that you can get in touch. We love it when you get in touch with us here at Sewing Street. So the first is the email, studio at sewingstreet.com. The second is our Facebook Live. I know over you love to use Facebook, a lot of you do. So Sewing Street TV. Um, we've got some messages here, How, actually. Rebecca Harrison, oh bless you. Morning, Adam. Have a fabulous day presenting. Derek says, good morning, Adam. Welcome to Sewing Street as a presenter. Oh, bless you. Fantastic range of products today. Large order already placed. And then, uh, of course, that's Facebook Live. The third way, then, is on the website, okay? 
www.sewingstreet.com. You can view the show by clicking the top right hand corner, watch the show live. Uh, in a minute, we might come up there. Send a message there in the box as well. Yes, <laughs> there you go. If you scroll down, there it is. Everything that we've got coming up on today's show. Look at all these fabrics, lots of cats, some exclusive ones, a bit of Delphine Brooks kit there. We've got Cat of the Month kits. Oh gosh, and they're so versatile. We'll get onto them uh, when we get to that segment. All the cats of the month there, which is fabulous. Mia Charo, a Spanish designer with some lovely cat fabrics there. Aren't they gorgeous? Uh, lovely, lovely stuff. Oh, and what's this? This might be the surprise I was talking about. Oh, you've spied it already and we'll get onto it in a minute. Brand new waterproof fabrics as well. We've got some rip stops in, in different prints as well. Some camo there. Really versatile stuff and stuff that we don't ordinarily have on the show. So that's great. Super soft fleece. Perfect for many makes. Many makes indeed. Oh, oh yeah, a snuggle up. I'm forgetting that I did that pattern. Would work for that or some pet makes as well. Some pet toys um, here. That's going to be Joe Carter's hour. A few tools thrown in there for good measure as well. Here's Alice and Marion's pet coats. Look, look at the little doggo. I must say, although it's National Cat Day, we have thrown a few dogs in for good measure. We're celebrating all our furry friends. We can't exclude the doggos. And then uh, some swivel kits and little bits of hardware there. Fabulous. And then we've got, oh, look at the, the fleece, a snuffle bag. Some fleece as well, your snuggle bed, that's what Alice and Marion's bringing for us. Some wonderful plaid. This, this flannel fabric, the plaid and the gingham is brand new. It's new, so that's exciting, isn't it? Get your hands on some of that for your stash. Oh, already apparently we've had some sellouts. Look, that's sold out there, wow. That's amazing. Fabulous. Let's get cracking, shall we? Right, this is really exciting. This is Helen Rhiannon's book, Dressmaking the Easy Guide. Now we have been waiting for this to come back in stock for so long. You can't really find it anywhere at the moment, but we have managed to find 300 of these in the warehouse. That's all we've got, all right? So we found out about it yesterday and we were like, we've got to have it on the show. Now, I was lucky enough to actually be in the studio uh, when Helen Rhiannon was in um, with the launch of this book and we were chatting about it. And, oh my goodness, it is amazing. And from a dressmaker and from a dressmaking point of view, I can't sing its praises more highly. So let's have a little look through here. Somebody apparently at Festival of Quilts said to Haley, it changed her life. Now, um, <laughs> it's life changing. We're changing lives and creating dreams on here. Right, okay, so um, I'm gonna go straight away to page 40, which talks about the sizing, because this is one of the key things, I think, that Helen Rhiannon has got absolutely bang on. Now, you know when we're shopping for shows, um, shop, shopping for shows, shopping for clothes um, in shops, we've got sizes, and we get so fixated on sizes. Well, Helen Rhiannon has done away with all of that, and she just gave them a number from one, two, three, four, five, right up the way up to 19. And she says here, there is no reference to UK, US, or EU sizing. You are your own unique size, so just choose the number nearest to your key measurements. So what she's doing is she's encouraging you to measure yourself, and that's really, really important. So you've got the lovely table there um, and then you've got lots and lots of help pattern cutting not only is she just giving you the patterns but she is teaching you she is teaching you through the book how to um, use blocks and um, adapt patterns as well which is really useful in dressmaking because we're not all the same size and the old thing of being able to sew is to make sews that are, make makes that are custom to you they are look, alteration technique, adding onto the hips. All those questions that you have and you message in with us on the studio, you get from um, the experts and the demonstrators, but you've got it all here in Helen's book as well. Alteration techniques, adding to the waist, taking off the, bod uh, the body's side seams. So it really goes into detail. Sewing your darts. And it's a really lovely quality book. It's hardback. 
talking about double pointed darts as well which you know are an, a nice thing to add shape into any garment transferring your alterations to the pattern and using a mannequin bicep alteration i often need one of them <laughs> there we go we're having a quick flip through so she's really taking you through as i say when this book launched it was so so popular we've managed to get 300 back in but that's all we've got i don't know whether we'll be able to get it back after to be honest with you um different finishings look on there sewing a puff sleeve butterfly sleeve there's so much there's so so much and then there's patterns as well it comes with all the pattern sheets in the back and i'm thinking that's for all the blocks that you can adapt and make your own um there she is our lovely uh helen rianne and it's it's got some beautiful pictures in yeah separate every time this has been on it has sold out and i can absolutely see why it's a book that i would want on my um my shelf definitely um it's a lovely coffee table book um who is this book for it's for you <laughs> the book will teach how to make and fit a beautiful dress for yourself wonderful we're getting some more messages cheryl said good morning adam you're off to a great start with your welcoming smile have an amazing show oh that's lovely thank you very much cheryl sandra oh i must read sandra's out good morning adam you're doing a grand job thank you very much it's lovely keep those messages coming in um, i'll try and read as many as i can throughout there's a message on the bottom morning as a dressmaker this book has taught me so much more brilliant that's fantastic is that from a leader in west yorkshire thanks for getting in touch another couple of messages good morning adam and good luck you're off to a great start joe two kisses thanks very much joe oh that's lovely that's it okay morning adam you're doing a fab job like the shirt as well from ian is that ian's deals is that the ian Ian S Deals, he does such a grand job, Ian. I must say as well, all of our presenters and team do such a grand job and it's lovely that, you know, you're giving me all the support. But I tell you what, I must put a shout out to Mr. John Scott because he's got me where I am. And John, I hope you're having a great holiday. It's well deserved. Right, okay. So there we are, you see. And I think that's really important as a dressmaker, even if you're somebody that's done quite a bit in intermediate, like this is going to take your dressmaking to the next stage, which is fabulous. You know, and it's like got the things like tools and must haves in it as well. Of course, many of which that we do sell on, sell on Sewing Street. Choosing a sewing machine. Do you know what there's a lot that happens there like a lot of people ask me in terms of sewing machine like what do you recommend and i always say it's like the best sewing machine you can buy with your budget i mean i obviously bring my juki ux8 on on the show um which i love using but that is a considered purchase but wherever you are in your dressmaking journey buy the best you can buy with your budget but books like this are always going to take your sewing to the next level now there's lots in baskets don't forget if you've got them in baskets check out i'd hate for you to miss out on what is a wonderful purchase uh, from helen rhiannon pressing a seam back stitching at the end what to do if you go off track i love that <laughs> uh, listen no matter how experienced you are right we all make mistakes um even I, you know, do at times and I have to get my own picker out, but I love that. And it's considered, you see, what's if you go track, she's holding your hand all the way through this book. And then we talk about fabrics as well. Many of fabrics we have on Sewing Street. There's loads, honestly, I just can't believe the breadth of this book. Um, talks about calico and making twirls, cotton, denim, crepe. And that's one of the things, if you move over from perhaps being a quilter, where you're dealing in a lot of cotton, to being a dressmaker, um, then it can be understanding fabrics sometimes. Um, but we're going through it here. We're talking what about, you know, what is poly cotton? What is poly satin? Wool sewing language. It could be a whole, you know, different game. 
It's a jargon buster, this is. Um, and a graded nest of patterns. This is going into real detail, but giving it you visually in such a lovely um, visual way. So as well as explaining it um, in the text, you've got nice colorful pictures as well. If you're anything like me, you do love a diagram. All right, we'll have a few messages in and then we'll get cracking. All right, so um, what else? Oh, Be Becky Alexander Frost, I am Beck. Good morning, Adam and team. You're doing an amazing job on your first day as presenter. Jenny Jackson, so, so proud. Oh, bless you. Who's Jenny Jackson? The sailor in the gallery. They're never Jenny Jackson. I've missed you. I've missed you at Festival of Quilts. Morning, Adam. You look fabulous. Oh, I say. And looking forward to watching you today with a great lineup of lovely guests from Joyce. A few more messages for us. Great to see your smiling face this morning, Adam, from Sandra M. Fabulous. They're just saying in the gallery, and we apologise, he's struggling to keep up with all the messages, Breast Ben in the gallery. Um, we'll try and read out as many as we can. Listen, it doesn't mean we've not read them, and thank you so much for, um, for messaging in, because it's absolutely fabulous, and we love to hear from you as well. Don't forget, if you've got any questions for any of the demos today, message in, and it'll be lovely to answer some of them as well. So there we are. That's Helen Rhiannon's book. Um, there we go. We'll keep it there all day and we'll keep coming back to it as well, which is fabulous. Let's get started then with some fabulous cat print fabrics. Now these we're going to be um, selling by the half metre. They're absolutely gorgeous. Let's have a little look at these. So Maria Charo, a Spanish designer. Look at these. These have got the doggos on them. Very um, Frida Kahlo here with the headdresses on. They're absolutely beautiful. Look at this one, Lord. We've got some cat ones as well. Look, the pastel colours in that are just absolutely stunning. And I love as well that she's designed all of these doggos um, in like little little coats almost with the stripes and the flowers. Um, it could be a panel, actually. You could use it as fabric or a panel. Imagine if you just use this rather half meter and, you know, put a backing on and quilted it. So it is a panel then. Oh, fabulous. So that's $9.99 for that one fabulous the next up let's do some cats as it is national cat day of course the subject of our show today right let's have a little look at this so very similar colorway but we've got a bit of green in this one again with the frida carlo kind of thing on there as well another panel that we've got here this would be really um, versatile, really. You could use this panel just to quilt as is. You could make um, some cushions, tote bags. Um, and I love a little bit of straight line quilting, but if you wanted to do a little bit of free motion quilting as well, that would be really nice. This one is very popular. There's lots in baskets. So if you want to check out, make sure you do. And we don't have an infinite stock of these as well. We are quite limited on them. Um, so make sure if you're wanting these fabrics that you grab them today. Wonderful. OK, we'll move on to the next one then. So that's that panel. Um, what have we got here? We've got some more doggos. These are slightly smaller on this panel. So we, uh, we think these are by the half metre now. We're just checking. Yeah, they are. All right. So $7.99. Here we are. Mia Chara Floral Pets Collection wonderful so there we are um you're getting more dogs on here again like it's very similar to the panel although the dogs are a little bit smaller but you could buy half a meter of this and quilt it if you wanted to or you can buy a little bit more have some in your stash look we've got what looks like a little yorkshire terrier there oh i'll have to tell you about my new addition to our family at some point stanley he's our new puppy he's the reason i couldn't make it to festival of quilts fabulous all right we've got some cats here as well look at this now so this is on the pink oh do you know what this feels absolutely beautiful as well okay so there we are um i love all these little cats little tabby cats and stuff it has well i think i'm right in saying that mia charo is spanish so you know the frida carlo kind of connection would make sense in these designs it's the one with little glasses on. Oh yeah, I've just spotted it. Look at that. 
Oh, yeah, real characters, and it um, it really uh, you know brings it to life for all you pet lovers. And I know that um, if you're a pet owner, you're going to really enjoy these fabrics. And I like nothing more than being able to make for my pets, and I like making uh, accessories from a sewing machine as well. So if you're an avid cat fan, you could do that. Oh, we've got some more doggos here on this one. This is on like a lemon background, this one. This is beautiful. Yeah, you could have this one look with the cat one. If you're a cat and dog person, which I know Alison Marion is, then uh, they kind of complement each other with the pinks that are in there and the lemons in there. They're lovely. All right, so some doggos in the kind of Frida Kahlo reefs. They're really, really nice, really nice. Oh. I do, I just love that they've got all of the um, little jumpers on. As I say, these are brand new. So um, it's great to have them. Just 7 99 a half metre. Um, you know, you're getting some really lovely, fun, characterful fabric um, that you can do all sorts of projects with, from quilting to bag, you know, making tote bags and things. Oh, look at this one. Okay, so we're going on to some florals now. Again, these are from the same collection by the same designer, Mira Charo. Um, so versatile. So this is uh, $7.99. And again, if you wanted to buy some of the dogs or the cats and then wanted to use, you know, some floral prints as well, if you wanted to make a quilt and then break it up with a few solids and things, that would be lovely. You pick out the same colours. But that, again, the flowers, very Spanish, very Frida Kahlo. Again, these are new to us on Sewing Street. So, um, yeah, there we are, $7.99 for the half metre. We've got um, it in a different colourway as well. Which ones are you going for? It'd be nice to know uh, which ones are, are tickling your fancy this morning. Oh, now I like this. Now, I have to say, I am a fan of uh, anything that's got navy in it. I love navy. I just think it's a really nice classic colour. It really makes those flowers pop, don't you think? It's really, really nice with the yellows and the peaches and the pinks. And of course, the green leaves There's some really lovely colours in there as well. And the leaves, even the detail, the leaves aren't just one shade. Like They've got lots of different shades of green in there as well. So $7.99 for your half metre. So that's it in a different colourway. That's really nice. Um, I think we've got a few more fabrics. Um, Let's see if we've got another Mia one here. So there we are. Yeah, we've got another Cats by the Half Meter. Look at this, Cats galore. This one. Oh, th do you know what? You can see the, the uh, cat with the glasses on a little bit clearer on this one. This is wonderful, this is. So there we go, that one there, 7.99, half metre. We've got plenty of choice for you. So that's our uh, Mia Charo um, cats and floral prints. But we've got a few more. We just keep coming at you with them today. Look at these, saying I like neighbor. The Here we go, look at this. These are beautiful, these are. Again, you could use these as like little like blenders and stuff, really, I suppose, although they've got the print there, but it's, it's a real fine um, print, but it really pops with the white on the navy. Again, going on a floral theme, it's gorgeous. Really, really nice. And don't forget, even if you're not using them for quilting, like it's cotton, so you could use it in dressmaking if you wanted to as well. If you've bought, you know, Helen Rhiannon's book and you want to order a few metres of one of these that you've really, really liked, then, you know, you could make yourself something from it. It's all cut from the bowl. Now, we do have one more, OK? And this is um, in the pink colourway. So there we go. Oh gosh, this is nice. This is more subtle. So you might uh, struggle maybe to see it a little bit on your screen. I don't know, but it's the same print, the same design that is the navy colourway, but um, it's um, a little bit fainter. But you know, getting these two together in your stash would be lovely to have. I think you know, pink and navy is a nice colour combination. There we go, absolutely. 7.99 then for the half metre on all of those. 
Oh, aren't they absolutely fabulous? And listen, we think about everything here on Sewing Street and we have got a complimentary fabric bundle. All right, so let's move on to these now. OK, so all of those cat and dog fabrics and you've got those pastels in there. Well, we have got a bundle for you. So two metres of fabric and you're saving three pounds on this. So 15 pounds 16 for this bundle, complimentary fabrics. Let's have a look. So we've got the lemon. We've got the pastel blue. The lovely green there and the pink as well. Look at that. They are beautiful and they are going to go so nicely with um, all of the fabrics. You could put them with any of the fabrics that we've just gone through, to be honest. Yeah, if you're looking on the website, it, perhaps the picture doesn't really give these justice, but I can tell you from being with the fabrics in the studio, they're a really nice pastel colour. They're very summery colours, actually, which is really nice. Again, it's great to have solids in your um, collection as well. So, yeah. What's the weather doing this week, Ben, did you say? It's meant to be quite nice. Uh, we're going to have a bit of summer by Thursday. Oh, well, that'll be nice, won't it? Fingers crossed, a spot of summer. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So that's that bundle for us. Now, let's do something a bit more unique, right? I'm really excited about this. These have been flying out. We're going to do some waterproof fabrics. It's going to be great, all right? First, we have got the ripstop. Now, look, we've got it in all of these colourways. I don't think there's a colour here that we haven't got, apart from maybe a rainbow printed one, which, you know, this is a rainbow, a rainbow of ripstop. These are honestly going so well. There's so many of them, so we'll go through these quickly. Look, we've got the black. How many? How much are we getting of these? It's half meter, isn't it? So you're getting half a meter. Price by the half meter. We'll get the graphics in on the screen in a sec. So that's um, a black one there for you. Um, yeah, we've got a code on it. We've got uh, JTC four three four on that first one. Oh, it's actually green. Do you know what? My eyesight, I need that magnifying glass from this morning's early bird. <laughs> it's a very deep bottle green, so it might look black on your screen. So $1.99 for the half metre. Now, ripstop, it is great for anything that you need to be waterproof. Great for lining makeup bags. Maybe you've bought some of the Mia Charo fabric and want to make some little uh, pouches and bags out of it. Uh, wash bags, then it's great for that. So that's the bottle green. We'll go on to the yellow now. These colours are lovely and bright. Lovely and bright. Look at that, the yellow. So that's the yellow one, $1.99. We've got it in the white, <laughs> as you can see. And it's quite, what do we reckon width wise? I'd have to get my tape measure out for that. But um, 145 to 150 wide. So, you know, a standard width um, as far as fabric's concerned. So that's the white ripstop at 199. Oh, I like this. This is the fluorescent pink. Look at this. <laughs> that's a proper pink. Barbie pink with a new movie. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I've not seen it yet. Has anybody seen it? I want to see it. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see what all the fuss is about. Mind you, I haven't been cinema for years. Might have to. Ben thinks he's a classic Ken. <laughs> oh, downtrodden, he says. Oh, you're not. Ben, we all love you here at Sewing Street. You know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the uh, pink there. And if that's not enough, we've got it in the... We called it lime, have we? It's like a neon green. There we are. Wonderful stuff. So some more rips up. Half metre, one ninety nine. Isn't that nice? As I say, it's really practical fabric, this, and it's not stuff that we usually have on the show. We've got the orange. Maybe if you wanted to order more and make yourself a cagoule. <laughs> cool and a cagoule. Do you know what? If you did, if you piece some of these neon colours together, you'd look very 80s. There we are. 
<laughs> so that is the orange ripstop. We've got it in blue. A royal blue. Very nice indeed. Look at that. Do you know, it's so practical and versatile. And again, it's one of those fabrics that you might not have sewn with before. Um, but I'm sure when Alice and Marion comes on, she'll give us some tips as well, because she's got some fabrics and projects that might include a little bit of water repellent and waterproofing. This has got to be the navy, is it? Yeah, my eyes haven't completely gone. There we are, so we've got some navy there for you. I've actually just bought some of the navy myself because when I was in Japan, I managed to buy some fabric that I'm going to make my mum as a um, present. Um, I'm going to make her a wash bag, so I'm, I've got some. That's what I mean, it's perfect for that. Right, so we've had the real hot pink. This is a bit like a softer pink, a paler pink. There you go. That's nice, isn't it? Some lovely colourways in this. Really complement as a lining with your projects. A purple. A purple. So in street, you've done so well getting this in all these colourways. They're fabulous. With 199 and a half metre, you cannot go wrong. And do you know what I say as well? If you've never sewn with ripstop for 199 or to half a metre, and have a play. That's how you learn. Cool, so that's the purple. One more left in these colourways than of the ripstop. And it's the grey or silver. There we go. It's a silver there. Few messages. Uh, so nice to see you in charge. <laughs> oh, I don't know how they've dare let me be in charge, to be honest. Bright and cheery as usual. Um, from that uh, collector in Banffshire. Oh, fabulous. Banffshire, I have to think where that is now. I'll be honest with you, my geography's not the best. <laughs> Another message. Morning, Adam. You are such a natural for sewing street on screen. Well done. Oh, do you know what? My head's going to be so big walking out here. And Tim. <laughs> it's so lovely. I really appreciate it. Morning, Adam. You're a natural. I'm going to love today's show. Bunny. Ah, oh, in Oxfordshire. Oh, we like to take some little jaunts to Oxfordshire and walk our dogs there. Lovely places, Oxfordshire. Right then, so we're going to do some more waterproofs. If the ripstop wasn't enough, these are brand new. Never seen before. Look at all these. Um, so it's got a little bit of a different feel uh, to the ripstop, um, but there's some uh, weight as well. So we've got the yellow one that we'll do first then. All right. There we are, so 3.99. Again, this is for the half meter. It's 100% polyester. Now, the only thing I will say is when you're working with these fabrics, don't let them near an iron. <laughs> Listen, I've learned the hard way, all right? But uh, yeah, just as a word of advice, but have a go at sewing it. It's, um, it's gonna be really water resistant, this. So that's like a nice yellowy mustard color. 3.99 meter. We'll do the, uh, this is like a um, vintage pinky color really. It's a bit muted. We've called it Rose. Riviera Rose. We were talking about rolling your R's this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Riviera Rose, there you go. How could you not want a bit of that? For 3.99 half meter. Here we go, we've got some blue here. Isn't this lovely? There we are. Wonderful, so that's your blue. Again, waterproof fabric. So again, we make great linings for things that need to be waterproof. Any pet makes maybe that you've got that need to be waterproof. This is uh, terracotta. Um, yeah, this is a little bit thicker than the um, ripstop. It's a little bit more higher end maybe. So, you know, if you're wanting to use something that's got a little bit more weight to it, or if it's gonna be seen, you know, then uh, maybe go for this rather than the ripstop. The ripstop works great as a lining and uh, along with other fabrics, but this has got a little bit more weight to it. So there we are, that one's the terracotta. Moving on now, oh, this is a lovely shade of red. 
This has been the most popular of the lot, a claret, yes, there we are, waterproof fabric, half meter, 3.99. It's got some texture as well, um, but it's great. And do you know what? We love seeing your makes as well on the Facebook fan pages. So if you do um, order any of these today, we'd love to see what you've made and you know what you're making throughout. That's one of the biggest things I love about Facebook is seeing people's makes and it's inspiring to see people. There we are. So that's the claret. Um, we've got a nice plain white for us as well. It's got a bit of texture on the surface to these as well. I mean, obviously um, it's 100% polyester, but it's, it's got a little bit of texture on the right side and it's softer slightly on the inside. When I say soft, it's not like cuddle fleece soft, but it's, it's, it's a little bit softer on the inside. You can, it almost feels a little bit anti-slip on the, on the right side. So again, there's another property of the fabric that might be really useful in your makes. Wonderful, that's the white. And then we move on. Oh, we've got a nice dark green here now. Do you know what? A navy is one of my favorite colors. And then like a forest green or a bottle green. And this is that. The lads are saying that's the color of their bedroom. That fabric is their bedroom. <laughs> We're finding it all out today. So that's bottle green, the waterproof fabric, half meter, 3.99. Very nice. Okay, and then we've got some more um, black here. All right, there we go. Again, we've done so well, haven't we? All of these different colors in all of these waterproof fa fabrics, not seen before on the show, it's great message from mark from jewelry maker here oh mark's messaged me before apologies the last time we were in the building together i was so starstruck i was too shy to say hello oh i have a fab um show from mark oh thanks mark bless you and he's in oxfordshire as well hey we should be uh, starstruck to see mark really shouldn't we I always say whenever shows and like festival of quilts and stuff, I love it when people come up and say hello. And I always encourage people, you know, uh, and a lot of my friends that I speak to had gone to the event and they says, oh, I'd really love to see John, but I'm too embarrassed to say hi. I said, just go do it. It's lovely. And, you know, everyone is. We're a big family here. We're only human. Right. So that's the black one then. 3.99 for your half metre. A few more messages on the screen as well. Um, Angela says, morning Adam, lovely to see you presenting. Well done. Have I missed Jess, Jenny messaging to heckle you? No, she said uh, that she was super proud, which is really, really nice. She's been kind this morning, which is great. Oh, my friend Hina. Hello, Hina. Um, hey, up, Chuck. Loving this. Oh, bless you. Uh, Hina is a very close friend of mine and was the reason I got into sewing. Scrubs in the lockdown um, was when I got back into doing it and they owe a lot to us. So morning, Hina and John. All right, this is sand, this one. Now this, under the lights, catches it lovely, actually. It's, it's not metallic, but it's almost giving a metallic feel. Sand, there we go, is the description for that one. Yeah, you can kind of see on, on the screen, look, how it's catching the light, that one. I like that. 3 99 All right, so there we are. That's that one then. Wonderful stuff. This is a camo. Now this one's got a different texture actually. So this one, um, this one's really um, quite weightier than the others. This has got a different feel to it. It's almost it's almost not rubberized but it, it's um it feels a little bit like that on the back that you can the waterproof in this is 35 percent polyester and 65 percent cotton that'll explain why it feels different of course um yeah because i can see the weave in the camo as well but really nice you know if you're doing anything if you're an outdoorsy person or wanted to make things for maybe camping or um you know going outdoors bottle holders and bags anything like that um that'd be really really great yeah there you go so there we go there's the camo we've got one more waterproof left for you 
we've had loads of it. That's really great, that camo. It's got a nice weight to it, that has. So this final one then, here we go, is um, dark grey. It says it on the screen. There we are. 399, your half metre. There we go. And that's again the, the kind of texture that all the other ones have been in. Um, so it's only the camo one that had got that cotton content. So that's just the camouflage that had got the cotton cam cotton content. Now, remember, today, back in stock, very exciting. Don't worry, we're getting on to all the pet stuff when Alice and Marion's here as well. And we've got a few more bits and bobs. But back in stock today, dressmaking, the easy guide, Helen Rhiannon, 19 99 That's a deal price, by the way. Uh, and it is a deal. Let me tell you, we flipped through the book this morning and um, we'll have a quick flip through now again. But literally, she goes through everything. You've got your pattern pack in the back. Um, can I open that? Let's be naughty. I'll do, try and do it carefully just so you can see um, what the patterns are like. Oh, it's on good quality paper, which is always nice to see as well. And looking at it, yeah, you've got all your blocks in here that are graded. So it's, it's very much like a, you know, dressmaking pattern that you, you'd buy. Sometimes when you buy books, they can be quite nested and lie on top of each other. But it looks with these that they're not, which is good. And let's say these are your skirt blocks. Really nice and, and uh, simple to read. Morning, Adam and team. Great show this morning. Yippee, just got the Helen Rhiannon dressmaking book, says Sue from Staffordshire. Well, congratulations to you, Sue. There were so many people on the fans page that were so sad um, that they'd missed out on this book because it's sold out a few times since Helen Rhiannon, you know, released it here with us on Sewing Street. And we didn't think we were going to get it back, but here it is. Um, so it is exciting and it's one to get your hands on, particularly if you're wanting to further your dressmaking. But equally for beginners to advance, you know, I always say books have so much knowledge. Yes, you can go online, but having a nice hard copy book, going through all the detail that Helen Rhiannon does in this. Plus, she's just a lovely person as well. When I came, honestly, so chatty, so friendly. It's nice to see good people succeeding. Right, I'll pop those back in there. Okay, so that's your little pattern pack in the back. And as we say, I explained about the sizing this morning. It never goes in the way you came out, does it? <laughs> I've got it folded the right way. There we go. I'll just leave them in the back there for now. Um, but there you are. So I was explaining about the sizing, which is unique. Helen Rhiannon's made a real point of saying that you're your own unique size. So, um, you know, you should be measuring yourself rather than saying, well, usually I'm a size 12 or 14 or 16. We've gone away with that. There's no reference to UK, US or EU sizing. It's colour coded and, and the measurements are in centimetres as well and inches. So she's done both. That's great. Good morning. This book is amazing. I got it from the previous show. So Sue, is that another Sue? Yeah, it is another Sue from West York. West, oh, I've missed it now, but West, from West Sussex, there we go. Um, I love as well when books have little tips and top tips and stuff. And uh, Helen Rhiannon's done that, choosing the right size blocks. Yeah, I know that um, when I was chatting to Helen, she says, you know, she's been working on this book for a long time. Um, ben seems to think in the gallery it might have been up to four years. But I tell you what, it takes a long time to produce a book. But the fact that she's put that time into it means that it's edited well and it's perfect. Look, even the, the images are gorgeous. The sides are colour coordinated as well for the sections, which is nice. So you can, you know, skip through and whatnot. As I say, it talks about sewing language, it talks about measuring yourself. One of the most important things to do when you start dressmaking is take some accurate measurements, get somebody to help you if you can. Um, so there we go. Sewing your darts. Darts are always a thing to master first off. Um, 
Oh, I like this continual dot, cheat technique. Now we always find our little ways and I always say sometimes with certain things, there's no right or wrong way, it's the way that works for you. So I quite like that Helen's taking it, you know, she's put a cheat technique, but if it's something that works, that's great. Um, pinning and sewing your sample toile. And again, I like that with dressmaking and saying, you know, it's worth making the effort to make a toile. Um, choosing the correct size sleeve. There's all of it in here. And then uh, sweetheart necklines at the back. We looked at the butterfly sleeve this morning. Look at the beautiful shape of that classic dress with that lovely sweetheart neckline. Morning, Adam. This really is a great book. She walks you through every stage of getting a great fit. And that's the important thing. It's not just the pattern. It's not just right, like, okay, here you go and here it is in these sizes. What Helen's doing in the book is she is talking about fit. She's talking about making a toile. She's talking about adapting a block to make you, you know, your garment custom to you. And that's what it's about. So many compliments for this book and I can see why a gathered skirt how to sew the gathered skirt, drawing a circle skirt, an A-line skirt, box pleated skirt, and again talking through box pleats, collars we're talking about, pockets, and she's talking about how to do inseam pockets as well, finishing your dress. Look, there's just so much, lap zips, zips are something that, you know, when you start dressmaking, especially if you come more from maybe a quilting background, you can fear zips. But, you know, they're absolutely fantastic. Concealed zip. Separates. We'll leave it there for now on the book, but don't forget, there it is, $19.99. We've only got in stock what we've got, so make sure you don't miss out. All right. Right, we're gonna go over now and do a couple of kits. I've got some fabulous kits for us. So we're going to start with the cat of the month quilt kit. All right. Now, these um, we've had on the show before, but they are so versatile. So we've got everything that you need to make the quilt and we've got them back in for you today. So the whole kit is $129.99, but you're getting a lot with this. All right. We have got it on split pay as well. Um, so the split play offer there, you can see on the screen, $64.99 with a, a two split there for your option. So if you wanted to, um, but these panels, look at these, all right? So this is one of the first ones and then we've got the cat of the month individual ones as well. But this is the kit, all right? And you've got all of these cats. These are 40 coordinating fabric squares. Aren't they lovely? And you've got some uh, plain, some blenders um, in there as well. Some little bits of print and then all of your cats on there as well. I mean, the panel itself, that one, you could just uh, quilt if you wanted to. It'd be absolutely fantastic. Right, so that squares panel is available on its own on the website as well. So make sure you have a look at that. Okay. What else do we get in the kit? All right, let's have a little look then. So we've got one of the panels here. Now, as I say, you can make a quilt from this, um, which would be nice with the whole kit. And you get your free instructions as well. It's always good to have the destructions, isn't it? <laughs> so perfect for cat lovers, it says, is what it says on the tin, cat of the month quilt. It's the one that's hanging behind me, actually, I think I'm right in saying. Look at it. You've got these lovely cornerstones in here. This has been quilted really, really nicely, you know. Absolutely fabulous. Nice binding on it. And then obviously your 12 um, cats there, one for each month on a different coloured background. And again, some like pastel -y colours really really nice this one's on the green this is bengal the bengal cat look at that so it's a ten and a half inch by ten and a half inch with five coordinating fabric strips which are two and a half inches wide by 43 inches long and you can use that for whatever you like really maybe some sashing some binding that's going to be great so there we are there's the bengal cat i'll show you a few but there's a lot um in here so we might not get through them all but as i say they are all on the website which is fabulous let's have a look at another cat this is on a uh, blue background by the looks of it wonderful 
Oh, there, Tuxedo Cat. Look at that. Just move that so we can see it in the graphics there. Look, always oh, a posh cat, or oh, she's a posh cat. Tuxedo Cat. I love the little street signs down there as well. They've not been integrated in the quilt, but you could even use those as something if you wanted to. And do you know what? With any kind of panel, I save any bit of fabric. I remember having one that got the instructions written on, and I remember using those as well. So there we are. That was Cat of the Month for August, Tuxedo Cat. And we're in August now. But I say, this is one that we've done before, but we're lucky enough to bring it back. Um, shall we have a look? So we've got a few more cats. Obviously, you're getting your instructions in this quilt kit as well. And then we've got this super duper big panel. Oh my word, look at this. Look at this. Hey. It's huge. I could use that as a duvet. <laughs> Not quite. Um, but this is um, fab. And these are all the extra bits that you need, all right? So I, I'm guessing you could use these. These are the cornerstones or the corner squares we were talking about. Um, so they are, you've got those there as well. I'm wondering whether they're the same size as the cats or not. I think they're a little bit bigger, but hey ho, um, you could use those. They're spare coordinating fabric cats. And it looks like, yeah, so they're smaller versions of the bigger panels. So you've got um, the tuxedo cat that we've just seen. He's there. And then as we move along, look, this panel's so huge. You can see how I'm fighting with it. Now we've only got 14 of these kits left, all right? And we've got 19 in baskets, right? So that means if you want to get your hands on this, then, you know, you're gonna have to make sure that you want to um, check out. I don't want you to miss out, so check out. There we go. <laughs> um, we've got the Bengal cat there that we'd seen as well. Oh, and I love this, quilted by and date. So you can really personalize it, whether you're making it yourself for a gift or just want to put a little reminder of when you made it as well. You've also got some, um, lovely pieces there again these are strips are two and a half inch long that's two and a half inch wide sorry spare coordinating fabric so there's lots of um extra bits on there as well and that's everything that you need to finish off um your quilt now obviously you're going to need to um supply the wadding but you might have enough fabric in there with the spare fabric and the sashes and stuff to piece together to make the back there we go. So you're getting your instructions in that for free, 129.99. There it is on the website. Oh, this is breaking news. Haley's just rang into the gallery. Oh, what's she got to say? Oh, can we say that? All right, okay. So Ben's telling me in the gallery, Haley would rang her and then and then she rang off the phone call cut out she was driving uh, okay for yeah for a car speaker obviously being safe um, and ben saying that he she said something about 99.99 but then she cut off so what does that mean ben what are we doing <laughs> He's reading between the lot, we're doing it. Oh gosh, I hope you don't get in trouble for this. Uh, here we are, 99.99. There we are, we've crashed the price on it. Fabulous. There you go, so you can get your hands on this quilt kit. Don't worry if you've already bought it, you'll get it at that price. Um, there you go, so there we are. We've crashed the price of that down from 129.99 to 99.99. For today only, It'll, we think it's going to sell out because they say we've got 20 in baskets and only 10 left. So more of you got it in baskets than, you know, than we've got. So it is a gorgeous quilt. Just look at it. You know, all those lovely cats and stuff. You've got your instructions and you've got all your um, 12 panels of cats there, plus the 40 um, squares as well, which is lovely. It's a really nice shape. It's a really nice size. It's been done lovely, the sample in here. Fabulous. There you go. Wonderful. All right, so that is our Cat of the Month quilt. Now, we've got um, another little surprise for you. This is stunning, all right? And it's um, a demonstrator that I really admire. Let's have a look at this one by Delphine Brooks. 
All right, this is Chester the Cat. Chester the Cat. I love um, Delphine's artwork. She's had a fabulous new collaboration I've seen with Lewis and Irene. But this is one of her kits that we have had on before, but it's great to bring it back. Plus, I like Delphine because she's got the same surname as me. <laughs> and she spells it the same as well. Right, no relation though. Well, I don't think we are anyway. We were trying to work it out at one of the shows. Okay, <laughs> so instructions and templates on how to create Chester the Cat art quilt using the raw edge applique method. So you're getting the instructions, all right. It is a kit and then you're getting the feather, um, the um, fat quarter pack, eight pieces of fabric, all right. So you've got the uh, navy colour, the orangey colours there, the peach, everything that you need um, to make the front artwork for this. There we go. All right, so that's your Chester Cat Kit, $27.99. We're just going to show again the Cat Squares panel, if I've still got it. Is that the 40 cats? I think I've got it here. Look at that. This is available on its own as well as being in the kit. It's been flying out. So if you want this on its own, it's on the website. We've got it at $14.99. All right. There you are. You can see the graphics there as well. All the other cat uh, panels are on the website. You can buy them individually, I think, if you want to, which you can. If you wanted to make a cushion or a tote bag, the options are there all on the website. There we go. Right, it is time for a break. That's our first hour done. How quickly has that gone? All those fabulous fabrics. Um, we're looking forward to the next segment where we'll be welcoming Alison Marion with some wonderful pet makes. Anything that we didn't get through, we might recap some uh, throughout the show as well. Thanks for joining me for that first hour and we'll be right back after this. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. of Sewing Street, why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. 
never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Hello, hello, welcome back to Sewing Street with me, Adam. It's great to have you back. We've had a great first hour. We've had lots of fabrics and lots of kits, but, and lots of messages as well. Yeah, keep them coming in, it's been fabulous. Um, but it's my pleasure to say hello to a lady that I just love, and she's gonna be doing some fabulous demonstrating for us today. Um, hello, everybody, here she is. Hi. It's Alison Marion. Hi, everyone. Oh, Alison, it's so lovely to have you here. <laughs> Thank you, when you're I doing a brilliant job. <laughs> oh, bless you. Well, you always do a brilliant job. And do you know what? I, when I saw your name there, I was like, oh, yes. Because I've met you a few times, and we've yes. always clicked, yeah. so it's nice. Yeah. You've got some wonderful pet makes for us today as well. I've done quite a few, actually, yes. Yeah. You have. You'd never guess I've got pets, would you? <laughs> <laughs> what are your pets called? I have Pendy, the Romanian rescue dog. Yeah. And I have Ike and Tilda, two um, tabby uh, Siamese cross. Oh, lovely. Ginger tabby cross, yeah. So we're making for cats, we're making yep. for dogs. Yep. This is going to be fabulous. And what have we got? What are you going to be demonstrating for us today? Well, the first thing that we've got is the. Um, the coat yeah um and i was watching and a lot of the waterproof coat uh, fabrics that you had earlier would work as well yeah so um yeah that's fab uh but the the actual pattern you don't get a full pattern what you get is you get a a top yeah that goes around the neck oh i can yeah. see that there yeah the top that goes around the neck and then you've got the bottom piece here and then you take your dog's measurements or your cat. This is clever. Take the measurements. Oh, it looks a bit messy because I've got three dogs on there. But these are ones I've made for um, different dogs. So we've got the one that was for my Pendy, which is this one here. So that's the dog so coat. You actu yeah, you actually add the center so that it can be the size that you Any want. Size. Yeah. That is so adaptable. And that's a brilliant yeah. way to do it, Alison. And then we've got Roxy here. She's a little chihuahua cross. Yeah. So that's quite Aww. a tiny one. So that's this one here. And then this blue one, you can see if I take it out. Can you guess what sort of dog that's for? <laughs> <laughs> a bigger dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's redashened. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, you can extend it to whatever size you want. Yeah, you to put make in it the longer. Panel. Yeah. Do you know what? That's genius. <laughs> Uh, this is going to do so well. In fact, I want one of these for my little doggo. Honestly, he's lovely. We've yeah. got a little Welsh Terrier. He's uh, only 10 weeks old. Aww. He's beautiful. Oh, there he is. Oh, you've got the picture of him. What? Oh, look at that. So that's Stanley, that's so the black and tan Welsh yeah. Terrier. And then we've got um, Rufus as well that he's laying next to him. He's a wire fox terrier. And they're just our little babies. They're so gorgeous. Yeah, lovely. And listen, if you have got pets, then what better thing to do than to make from? Oh, I embroidered that as a little blanket, actually. Oh, Loads okay. of ideas you could do. Yeah. Right, so let's have a little look at the pattern then, first of all. So here it is. Pendy's quilted dog coat. Size is extra small to extra large. Um, it's coming off as £14 there, but it's not. 
it's not let's sort it out there we are we like them blue arrows <laughs> 9.99 there we go that's a bit better isn't it that's just for the pattern all right and as Alison was explaining there it's really adaptable to make for the size of your dog for yeah. the length you get the top part and the bottom part and then you measure your dog yeah. and the panel for the middle that is great Lots of people are coming through for this because, you know, we all love our cats and dogs. We do. <laughs> there Sometimes we go. too much. <laughs> so this is great, assembling your pattern. I love um, images and diagrams, mm. Alison, and you've done this fantastically. Um, oh, and look at this. You think of everything. This well, is great, the harness my hack. <laughs> my embroidery wasn't as posh as yours. Oh, look at <laughs> that. We'll be able to see I it on the overhead, maybe. There, but there we go. Oh, there yeah. it is but it's in vision also now. if your dog wears a harness yes um you can put it in a buttonhole you just have to put the harness on then put the coat um, on once it's made yeah and then you put it to where Position. the point is on your your harness yeah that's fantastic i love the embroidery touch yeah and i love that you've thought about that harness hat because ours yeah. wear harnesses you yeah. see um so yeah you've, yeah you've thought of all of that so you've got the instructions there for that for 9.99 right and you've also got the so, um i've also put in the little pet bandana i was just about to say is that yeah. a little freebie in there yeah, as well is, yeah. oh well we like that <laughs> so we've got a little pet bandana pattern the, in there as well they go on the collars because my they cats go on the wear collars. collars yeah um, obviously cats have to have the special um, clasp but uh yeah they just go on the collars brilliant make for um fundraising yeah absolutely yeah. if you've got uh, a particular pet charity they I mean, little scraps and things like that. That's that's a lovely little make, and they Fabulous, go so Alison. well. Right, we'll do some fabric, all right? Because we've got to got three different bundles and three different colourways for this kit. This is exciting, isn't it? Where are we going first? Which colour do we want? We'll start with the green in the small size, okay? So we've given two options for sizes here. So this is the green in the small size. So you get your instructions a meter of fabric okay that's lovely that wonderful and you've got the fleece there so for a smaller dog this is going to be perfect for 16.99 or my little puppy at the moment <laughs> little stand the man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at this so this this is a waterproof fabric isn't it it is yeah it's got this like a rubberized back yeah but that's it's good because you don't need a special needle. I've only used a universal needle. You're using a universal needle on that. That's if good to know. If your machine tonight. struggles, you could use a denim or a, a you know, something yeah. like that. A I denim don't think we have any of those needle. in stock, but a universal yeah. needle, universal if it's going to do the I job, used. Yeah. that's fantastic. A nice new needle so it's nice I was just going to say, make sure you Stop. start with a new needle so it's got a good point. Fabulous. Yeah. Wonderful. So the paws. So that's for the smaller doggo or, or cat. You could do shall a little I, Shall I just say that the, the small dog one is for the extra small, small and medium. Yes. And the larger kit uh, bundle is for large and extra large. Right. That's and good to know And it all goes by then. neck size. So let's bring in the graphics now for the larger bundle. Yeah. So two metres of fabric, same fabric. There you are, the green and uh, the lovely paw print waterproof stuff and that is for 24.99 so you just need to ex assess what size you think your dog would be if you think you know extra small small and was it medium Alison then that would be the smaller bundle yeah you and then go the, by its next size and you go by the next yeah. size oh all right then that's good isn't it there we go so that's that colorway really really nice let's move on to the blue colorway i love anything blue but i love all of these all right so this it's is the small the bundle again all right so exactly the same as we've seen we've got the lovely fleece there as well the waterproof fabric 16.99 so that's a meter of fabric for the small i like the blue it's really nice alison would i be right in saying that because we're using the fleece which has got a little bit of loft to it i'm guessing you'll show us in the demo quilting it a little yeah. bit yeah you, yeah and you don't need a wadding as well you don't well. need a wadding they no. are so they are you've got what you need in the bundle you see yeah That's having said that if you don't want waterproof it, having and said you that, just want a decorative warm coat yeah you could do a normal cotton top with a wadding and oh. a backing there you are yeah. options for you there we are so let's do um the larger size for the blue now where you're getting two meters of fabric that's for 24.99 nice no, absolutely beautiful 
Yeah. And then the final colourway is the red, which has been the most popular so far. There we go. All right. So there we are. We've got the um, fleece there. The red's really bright on the waterproof stuff, really nice. And then complemented by the nice colour of fleece there as well. So a metre of fabric, that's the smaller bundle for a smaller dog. Instructions with all of these, 16.99. And then uh, if we did a large bundle then as well, here we go, is the uh, graphics 24.99 for the larger bundle. We've got a question. Hi, Adam and Alison, love these patterns. Could I make two King Charles Spaniel size out of one large bundle? My brother has four of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And that's from Larry in Cambridgeshire. Oh, we really need to know the next size. Yeah. I mean, if you can um, message the next size I in. I would but... imagine that um, because Pendy well, he's a bit of a chonk, but he's a kind of um, Spaniel size, I think. Yeah. And yes, I think you probably could. Because right. basically, can I show people? This yeah, is basically of you can. all you're doing. Is it? Oh, there we are. I'll there like we that. are, look. So there that's, you can see. That's all you need out of your your top and your bottom fabric. Yeah, well, another great idea, Alison, we have got um, the fabrics by the half metre as well. So you could, yeah. I mean, four yeah, King so Charles Spaniels, add. was it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you could add if you wanted to. You could order two of the larger bundles, then if that's not quite enough, well, yeah. order some more. Yeah. Yeah, add some half metres on and that'll ensure it then. And I'm sure with this kind of fabric, there's lots of things that you can make because you've got That's lots right. of, of and, pet. And it's also not directional. So if, yes. I mean, I've done this along the um, selvage, but if you were to put it along that way, mm. you would get one this side and one that side because it's quite wide, yeah. the fabric. Yeah. That's really good to know. So yes, I think you'd probably get... Uh, That's fab. So yeah, lovely colour demos. large you would. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. Right, before we get onto the demo then, we've got one more thing to talk about, Alison, <coughs> and it's really exciting. This has been flying out on pre-order. It's brand new, isn't it? It is, yes. It's brand new, and I really yes. love the idea of this. And I think, for what you're getting in it, it's a real bargain. And this is the USB Pampered Pets Digital Collection for 36.99 Alison I want you to tell us about this because <laughs> it's such a great project well it's just that some people like PDF patterns yeah I mean they my PDFs have gone all over the place I couldn't believe it we sat one night and had a look and you know Mexico who wants a dog coat in Mexico someone does well there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah so what this has got everything that we're doing today and some yeah. I mean, some of it is um, little upcycling projects that you can do, again, because I like to do a lot of um, stuff for charities, for fundraising. There's upcycling projects there. There is a, a dog bed or a cat bed out of a jumper. Um, what else have I got in there? Um, oh, Let's there's these uh, food mats, the food place mats. And I love them. Dog They're walk in great. bag with the little oh, poo bag dispenser that. on the back. <laughs> Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> I think you were telling me before the show, there's something like 14 projects in yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, it's like this one here. This is just upcycled denim. But yeah. in with it, I put in a little little squeaker. Squeaker. And is that in, in here? That's it. If you want to have a look, you can see what's in there. Oh, fabulous. Because it's a really cute little uh, oh, thing and It's got well. the little paw print tissue. Your attention to detail, Alison, is absolutely <laughs> fantastic. But yeah, so you've got your bits and bobs in there then. And the USB itself then has got a little paw on it. I don't know if you can see that, but that is super cute. We're coming in to see that. <laughs> Now, something that's really important with the USB in terms of using it, if you to purchase it today. Yeah, there are instructions there. Yeah. Um, how to use it. But one thing that we will say is that when you get it, if you download everything onto your computer so that you don't overwrite it by mistake, because it's a large USB stick, so you will get a lot more information on that if you've got any other PDFs that you buy. 
you can put them onto that stick because it's eight gigabytes, is it, or something like that? Yeah, and it I hasn't think that's even what taken it, one. Yeah, eight gig. Yeah. Well, that's so it. So you can use it to add more to it. Yeah, which is fab because if you've got an embroidery machine and you wanted to personalize, embroidery, yeah. you could save those files on there and yeah. transfer it to your machine. Yeah. But all we're saying is just make sure that you save the files onto your desktop or your computer yeah. so that you've got a backup of it. And that's just to ensure that you, know, you don't yeah. Accidentally I mean, my, use them. My doggy and cat bags, this one over here, I don't know whether you can oh, see that one. Oh, they're just gorgeous. Those two Look are there them. as well. There's the dog and the cat. There's the other side Woof. of the dog. <laughs> and that one. And a meow. The cat. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh. this. And what did you call this? Well, you gave a me the challenge of guess, guessing what it was, and I've named it a mouth excluder. Yeah, <laughs> I put it down as a mouse guard because anybody that's got a cat that hunts, I've got hard floors and I couldn't believe what small area a mouse or a vole can get under. It can get under the, a, a biro. Yeah. It can get oh, a, I know. through a hole of the biro. So anyway, I've made all these for my under my door. They just slide in underneath your door. But if you've got carpets, you can still use them because you had that ripstop this morning. Yeah. That would slide, glide nicely over a what carpet. What a great idea. Yeah. So these have been an absolute godsend for us because I can sit in the lounge, know the cats have come in and not think, oh, what's going to come under the door now? And you know, I mean, I've not specifically <laughs> looked for these, but I've never seen them in pet stores or anything. So it feels like this is a quite a unique solution that you found. I, I needed something. And yeah. if you put a, a dra long draft excluder at a door, you've still got places at yeah. the corner where it can come through this yeah. actually fills the door Fabulous. so it works brilliantly what well, else have i got it. in here and these are all on the usb stick. they are yes they're there's, absolutely fabulous in the um box there's some feathers a bell and some elastic for a cat toy oh yeah there great well actually you need to open the bag because there's something in there as well for the people's uh, sewing all There's right, a, okay. A make Let me there. open this one then. Out of an old t shirt. This is great. Do you know what? It's so neatly packaged, Alison. I don't <laughs> want to ruin it. Let's I'm just going to have to go for it. All right, there we yeah. go. Tear it. I bought it for you to open. This is great. Digital pattern collection. Look at this. Um, fab. So you've got all your information that you need for the USB yeah. drive. Look, even yeah. the packaging that it said it's got the paw prints on. Oh, I love it. Okay, so you've got all your information there and the important thing about, you know, saving yeah. it as soon as you get it. And then uh, the little paw print stickers are so cute. Honestly, these, I'm gonna have to get some of these. It's a really well thought out kit. So this is all the elastic and bits that you need then for the toy yeah, and, and the feathers. Yeah, and there's a little something else in there for... <laughs> that's the squeaker. I found the squeaker. <laughs> Fabulous. Wonderful stuff. Oh, gosh, the bell. And there's the little paw as well. Look at that's that. That's a little needle threader. That's a needle you to threader. to keep in your sewing box, yeah. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> for all you pet lovers out there, Alison has really thought this out. And I can't wait to get onto this demo and this see This is another one make. which is the same pattern, but there's an upgrade to the pattern, a hack to make a dry yeah. coat. How great. And has that got more of like a collar on it? This goes see? over the head and you can yeah. dry the head with that. Oh, I'll yeah. show you, I tell you how to measure it. And then they can sit around in this until they dry out because we've got a dog with um, long fur. So it takes a little while. Yeah. Well, my dog, when we're washing them, I had to wash them the other day, you know, Alison. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> so um, Rufus, our older dog, was out in the garden and he was doing his duty. Um, but the little one likes to follow him around like his shadow. <laughs> Um, he followed him around at the wrong point, shall we just say that? It hit him square in the eyes and we had to get him straight in the shower. Um, so we could have done with that to yes, give him a bit of a dry. that's right, yeah, just put it on. <laughs> Obviously you don't need, because you're not walking them, this is around the house, you don't have to be so worried, especially with little boy dogs, with where you place the, yeah. the strap. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you've thought of everything. And there's pet oh, treats that. in there as well, a little and recipe. And the pet treats. So you can take those for your two. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> oh, bless you, Alison, thank you. Oh, I'll right, put back on display. let's have a little look then. Let's have a little talk about how we start to make the coat then. Um, I love the diamond quilting on it. It's really nice, isn't it? It's yeah. traditional. Yeah, I, know, I, I like mean, that. you don't have to do that, um, but the easiest way to make sure that you get a nice square, because if you just 
go by eye, you'll end up probably with a diamond ra rather than a square. So when you um, place your pattern, you're going to mark the centre before you turn it over and draw the other side. So you've already got the centre of your pattern marked. Yeah. And then if you've got something with a right angle, you match up a centre line and you yeah. know then that if you start your quilting on that side and I've marked this side, I've done all those ones, but if you mark your line this side, mm -hmm. you know that when they cross you're actually going to get a square because yes. you've lined up this centre line. Absolutely. So, so having the right angle. Yeah. It, you don't actually have to use a ruler if you haven't got one. You can use a piece of cardboard as long as it's got a right angle. As long as you've got a right angle. And the centre lines up with your two centre marks on your pattern. Great. Because all you do is mark it out on your um, top fabric. Yeah. Then you can tack it down around the outside if you like, but I 505 this because it holds it nicely while you're quilting it. Yeah. And then it's just off to quilt and if anybody um, hasn't got a quilting machine one of these bars I'd, ah yeah it's here one of these this quilting bar is a is a worthwhile purchase if you want to do some quilting sorry I lost my foot Oh, I use mine all the time on my sewing machine. Yeah. I quilt for fun mainly because dressmaking is yeah. kind of my job. But um, it's really, really handy to have. And I suppose with that quilting bar, all you need to do, it slips into the foot, doesn't it? All it the does, walking yeah, foot. along the back of the foot. If you buy a quilting foot for your machine, you'll get one of the bars with you. But most machines that have got um, quilting feet will have one in anyway yeah that's and it I, i've got my what's your setup i was gonna say i've got my um stitch at three yeah it's a nice length for a quilting yeah. stitch um because you've got the layer here you don't want it too small a stitch so what you do is i've done the first line there mm -hmm. so if i show you now this bar you run down along a your previous line of stitching. Oh, I forget yeah. to put the foot down. <laughs> <laughs> put your foot down, Marion. Yeah. Alison, come on. I'm calling you by your surname then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's, it's so handy. And that way then you get the neat diamond quilting. That's right. And you know you're getting the right way. Fabulous. Because so obviously you're, you're stitching in the centre of the fabric. Mm -hmm. You haven't got a line here to run along exactly yeah so you've got that guide then yeah so yeah. when you've done that side or you turn around and come back down this side Do and you, know you just go all over the two layers doing that to start off with yeah and as i say if you've got 505 spray uh holding the two layers together you don't have to worry about your fleece moving no because obviously fleece does stretch exactly um but your top fabric doesn't mm -hmm. so do you find then with this because you've got the fleece on the bottom being driven through by the feed dogs you're getting it through evenly anyway without yeah. having to use a walking yeah. foot for yeah this. oh yeah i haven't got a walking foot on i don't i mean i one of my she machines at home has got an feed foot that i leave on all the time whether i'm dressmaking quilting or whatever yeah. i do but um yeah this hasn't been used and you can see on the back yeah it's not oh you can see it's been up in my sewing room <laughs> all the bits <laughs> but yeah i mean it does a lovely job it does do you and have a designated nice sewing room at home i do i have a an office in the garden oh, oh very but, nice oh, it's, it's very horrendous <laughs> it's horrendous at the minute <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I moved into my house about eight months ago and yeah. the first thing I got was a room to sew in and it makes all the oh, difference, doesn't it? Oh, I bet that was it? lovely. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. And we've got like a three-storey house, like a townhouse, so I'm right at the top. Oh, like lovely. Like Miss yeah. Habersham in the attic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Up with the staff. <laughs> oh, yeah. But honestly, it's just so nice to have that space. But yeah. I've got so many machines. Yeah. Are you like that? Do you have a I've lot? I've had to we're downsizing a bit because when we move it's good i just can't take everything yeah so uh yeah because we're gonna go down to cornwall oh are you gonna move down there yeah oh fab. well i'm i'm from there anyway yeah. but we're gonna go back um most people know why because my little my little girl who's 30 odd 
<laughs> 34. Aww. She's having a baby. Oh, how exciting. So I've got a big granny, haven't I? <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, we're so moving exciting. down. So I've had to, I, I think, about four machines. Some of them were older ones, and I gave them to a lady who's going to start mm -hmm. teaching. And, you know, it's, it's a shame, but how many machines do you need? All of them. Yeah. All of them is the answer to that one. I've got four featherweights. Oh, have you? <laughs> yeah. I've got three. You're beating me. <laughs> They're gorgeous, though, aren't yeah, they? They're absolutely gorgeous. Does yeah. she know what she's having? Boy. Oh, little boy. Yeah. Well, yeah. it'll be baby makes next yeah, then on a USB. That's right. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, right. Okay. Right, so where are we at? So I tell you in the instructions how to measure for what size band you want around the centre. And all you do is you make a tube and then we'll uh, top stitch all the way around closing up this bottom end and then it's sewn on at the end so I'll take that one out of the way so once you've done all your quilting you've got all your cross hatch there you just cut round the shape yeah and on your strap you put on your um, hook and loop hook and loop tape I think we've yeah. got some hook and loop tape on the show actually oh it's nice core bond stuff so so on one yeah so there we go so we've got the black or white there's the black one the they um, are 199 for that if you want to do that wonderful yeah the only thing you must remember when you're putting on your velcro is to put one up one side and then one on the other so you haven't got them both on the same side and the yes. same with the, the top here you'll yeah. have one at the bottom and one on the top but you need to make sure that the hooky bit actually comes round to go onto the uh, loopy bit so that it doesn't catch your fur yeah that's you a know, really good so point so you make sure that the loopy bit is on the top yeah no sorry the, the hook way. bit the is on bit. the top because that will go down there because if if you're putting the hook bit that way this bit that's if you don't use all the velcro that'll be catching on the no. fur so you just need to make sure you're not catching yeah. the hooky bit yeah the hooky bit goes the on the top when yeah. you're doing it on here and the same on there it goes on the top when you put that on there i love that the hooky bit and the loopy bit <laughs> do you know what it makes sense and we'll all understand yeah. honestly sometimes it can get a bit caught up in sewing jargon yeah. but we just and need I to go call it velcro today we did just then <laughs> <laughs> do you know i made that mistake on a channel once yeah. and i was like oh i've done, I, I done so well yeah right until, you try so hard don't yeah. you and then it just goes out of your head hook and loop tape yeah. there you are <laughs> <laughs> right so right. let's go on to the next stage then so we've yeah. got our shape cut out our quilting done the so straps prepared yeah so now you need oh that's some of the velcro so we'll put that out there in a second you're just going to um bind the outside edge now it's up to you if you're an expert binder you can try and put it on all at once if you want to but although i do a lot of binding with my um, aprons and things like that I still like to do this one because it's going to be seen and very visual mm -hmm. I still like to do it in two stages I do I prefer yeah. to do binding yeah. in two stages I mean I'm quite expert at it if I'm doing it for my aprons because I've done so many and I use a zigzag yeah now there you are. so what you're going to do is you're going to open out your binding Mm -hmm. fold it over so that when you come round to the other end you're going to have a nice finish when it's joined and then you're going to just stitch along the first foot down stitch along the first fold so you've got the right side of the bias binding to yeah. the wrong side of the coat right with you right side of bias binding to wrong side of coat yeah i'm not going to go all the way around because it will take too long but i will show you that That's it goes it. around a corner nicely and this is a nice satin binding we've actually got some of this it is it's lovely studio. yeah so here's your satin binding then and you can use this for many things it's useful to have in your kit yeah i have a dedicated box for binding 199 there you are and there's two and a half meters of that 
it's 20 mil wide so yeah always and handy that, to have in your stash it's a nice width if you haven't done very much binding it's a nice width to start off with as well yeah well, that's if good you go, if you don't want to go too tiny yeah that's it you don't want it too small if you've yeah. never done binding before um right and do you uh, machine sew it on the other side yeah yeah fantastic i mean on a on a quilt yeah i would sew my binding on the front and then turn it over um, and then hand stitch yeah. because of the finish but on this let me just cut that little bit off it's gone lovely around that curve yes. obviously it is bias binding yes. so it's going yeah. to do that so and then you can pull this one around to the front mm -hmm. and then you can pin in here it does pin okay oh it's on my wrist <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i do things like that all the, time. all the time and it's crazy isn't it <laughs> i'm on the phone and looking for my phone yeah <laughs> and the other one for me in the studio is that Alyssa iron that oh, we've yes, got yeah and i forget every time that it can lift itself i'm the opposite because when i'm at my staffordshire stitches group and i'm using the normal iron there yeah. I forget and I put it down because I've got the Alyssa <laughs> at home. It's singed a hole in the ironing yeah. board. <laughs> so oh, there dear. we are. That's going to go down over the front. Yeah. And then we'll just stitch that. I'll go down a little on the stitching. I'll go to so because 4. you've lined up the binding the first time you've sewn it against the raw reg, you're not having to trim anything away or trim anything no, back. No, if, if you find that it, I mean, that might, it should be all right. Cause that, because it's also got give as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, this so one's okay, but yeah, you can just trim a little bit around. It's not going to affect the shape too too much, and then just try as hard as you can something that's handy. If you've got something, we've got with a, a we've got a quick question coming in. Hi, which size do I need for a thirteen inch neck? And that's from Lynn in Somerset. We'll what find did I do out with for my you. Pattern? Yeah, well, I've got I had one it here. Somewhere. Let me have a look. Inside on the first page. Inside on the first page. So you're going to need, oh, well, extra small is up to 11 inch. Small is up to 14 inch. So if so it's a 13 small. inch yeah. neck, you need a small. There you go. That's it. Thank you for your questions. Keep the messages coming in as well. There we go. That's so it. If you've measured your dogs and want us to help out, there we are. I can just do a quick rundown. You've got extra small up to 11 inches small up to 14 inches next circumference medium is up to 18 inches large up to 22 inches and extra large is up to 26 inches and i think my head measures 22 inches so if that's <laughs> any comparison it helps you out today it'll measure a lot more after all your messages because <laughs> you've all been so lovely mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking just saying in the gallery, we wonder how many dogs and cats with tape measures around the neck now. They're all being measured yeah. whether they want to be or not. <laughs> so if you take it slowly and just get a nice stitch around the outside edge, yeah, it gives it a lovely finish. And something with a point um, helps just to bring the the edge over and you can yeah. hold that in place and you know as, get, as you get feed it through the underneath. machine yeah and what stitch length are we using on the binding i'm a, a two and a half a two and a well, half 2.4 isn't it yeah, yeah. 2.4 it always varies on different machines sometimes yeah. it's even sometimes yeah. it's odd yeah i mean i always do a three on a quilt quilting mm -hmm. but uh, where you need to hold something in place yeah and it's going to get a little bit of wear around the outside edge as well so yeah. you have a smaller stitch that's it. a bit more secure Oh, yeah. great. So, so you just carry on all the way around the outside. Yeah. As I said, you fold over this end where you first start. So that will be there. Yeah. And that will be there. Because you will then come and join this one. And that will just go over the top. I see, yeah. So, you've, so got... you've got a nice edge. By folding it over where you start, yeah and then just sewing straight on the raw edge is here and then your folded edge goes over the top so you can seal in the raw edge of the ends of the bias yeah yeah, yeah. nice and neat and yeah. would it probably be best then like you've done there to maybe put that join at the back of the I coat or you do it in the, the neck at the neck i just showed you that so that you could see that it goes round right. uh, round that corner nicely oh i could have done it that because that's around there as well well it's a, but, a nice practice on curves isn't it yeah. for sewing bias yeah. this lots of techniques so it gives in this it project a nice, 
a nice join so you start off that's yeah. where I will have started you start off down here carry on sewing your um, binding in and then fold it over so yeah it's a nice little job with uh, binding as well I love these I love all of the fabrics I love the paw prints um, and again it's just I just love how so well thought out it is oh, Alison thank you. honestly well, it's, it's came from necessity because yeah. we, we used to go away all summer on our narrowboat we used to go away for several yeah. months in the summer but we can't do that now yeah um so uh you know i needed something for pendy and it's like the dry coat yeah you know when you're in a confined space you know and you've got a wet dog with quite long fur i mean he's got quite long fur oh, i can see in there he's got Oh, that's Aww. when he was trimmed. Look at Pendy. But he can wander around in that. He's quite happy to wander around in that while he's drying off. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. No matter, because sometimes they like to move a lot. So if you've got something that you can put on them, yeah. it's better. I could have yeah. done with that, honestly, the other day. I'm going to get that yeah. pattern. <laughs> but then it's kind of like, you can never get them completely dry, can you? And dogs no. don't really like hair dryers. No, so you need they to be don't. careful. No. So it's just having that that they yeah. can wear is brilliant. Yeah. And I thought, well, I need something to dry his head because you can just shove that on while he was on off the boat. Yeah. And just shove that on and then put him in the boat because it's quite a confined space. That's it. This is great. Do you know what? If you're somebody that um, is maybe new to um, quilting, sewing, dressmaking, these are lovely projects if you've got pets or friends with pets as well. I know that one year at Christmas, I didn't buy for anybody. I just bought for their dogs yeah. and cats. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was kind of like I'm doing the dogs now. It's the same with um, my uh, sister and soon to be my brother because they're yeah. having a baby as well. Oh, it's so exciting, um, isn't All it? the babies, they're having yeah. a little girl. Oh, um, no. But, yeah, um, I'll buy for the kids now. So it's kids and dogs. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to quickly recap the kits, if that's all right, Alison. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so as I say, we've got these in uh, two different size bundles, the small and the large. We'll start with the red, and we've not got many of these left, I don't think. Seven left and 11 in baskets. So, you know, more in baskets than we've got available. It's been a popular colour. That's the small then, $16.99. Then we've got the large red. Same fabrics, you get two meters rather than one, $24.99. Nine of those left and 12 in baskets. So if you want it, check out, wonderful. Then we've got the blue, so the small blue, one meter of fabric, $16.99. Nine left and 11 in baskets. There's more in baskets <laughs> than we've got available. It's very popular. Time to check out, I think. And then the large blue is $24.99. Only four left of the large blue. Oh, they're going like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Fab. And then the final one, the final colorway, the green. You get your fleece and your waterproof fabric. So that's $16.99 for the small one meter of fabric. Limited on those again. I'm not surprised because they're absolutely fantastic makes. And then the large green is at $24.99. Don't forget as well, you're getting the instructions with those bundles as well. But if you want the instructions on their own, yes, we can do that. Of course we can. All right, so the instructions on their own, there it is. Pendy's quilted dog coat, nine ninety nine. There's only two left. There's two left of those. That's it. Just the instructions. Now, if you want any of the fabrics that we've just shown you by the half meter, then we can do that as well. They're all on the website, and we're going to run through those now. We'll start with the waterproof paw print fabric. So these are now by the half meter. Okay. $4.99 for the half meter. So the lady that messaged in earlier about not being sure on fabric, this is your chance if you want to buy a bit of extra fabric along with the bundles, then you can. Maybe some different makes as well. So that's the green, paw print, half meter, $4.99. Then we've got the red one with the paw prints. Your waterproof fabric, there it is. Again, $4.99 for the half meter. 
And then you can order as many units as you want. Am I right in saying that, yes, for example, we order two half meters, then it's, it's cut from the bolt, so it will be delivered to you in a continuous length. There's loads of projects that you could do with these from Allison's USB. All right, then we've got the blue. There it is. There we are, look. Lovely fabric, your paw prints on the blue. So the blue paw print's been the most popular. I thought the red was taking the lead oh, at gosh. one point. Yeah. But Right, the red kit is in the lead, but the blue half meter it's funny, is love, in the I lead. I love the green, it looks the country. The green is, yeah, no, <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, do you know what, I love them all. If I yeah. were, do you know what, I want all of these. <laughs> they might go You'll missing at the end of the dog, show. another dog, that's all, one in each colour. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, get another dog yeah. for the other colour. <laughs> right, the fleece, the red is in the lead by the half metre. Here we go. Here we go. This is lovely. Um, and again, you can buy this by the half metre. You could use fleece to make a fleece out of garment if you're a dressmaker. You can use it for lots of things, lots of different makes with the pets as well. Yeah. So there we go. That's in that red colour. 2 99 for the half metre there in the red. And we'll move on to the next one. So we do the green. There we go. It's lovely, this fleece. Really nice. Again, 2 99 for the half metre. So that's your green there. And then finally, the blue. It's nice, that. Really, really nice. I can't wait, we've seen so much already. I can't <laughs> wait for your second hour to see what we're gonna have on that. There we go, so 2 99 for the half meter of the fleece. Now the USB has been very, very popular. I'm not surprised. <laughs> 36 99 but for that many, you're getting so many patterns, honestly. Digital patterns on a USB. Okay. So here we go. You open that it up, packet, that lovely yeah, tissue that paper. that you've got there has got everything printed out so you can see. Oh, that see. might be useful yeah. to see that as well then. So you've got your USB in there, which has got 14 different PDF patterns. Make sure when you buy one, we've said before, that you save it to your desktop as well. So you've got another copy of it. And then you've got all your instructions there, how to operate the USB. And then look, this is what you're getting. All of these patterns, pet snuggle bag, pet snuffle bag, the pet bandana, the doggy kiss clasp bag. That's hard to say after a few, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Fendi's dog coat, the PU dog cat shoulder tape, mouse guard, cat exercise tool, pet wipe clean mat, placement mat, which we've got um, behind there. And that Allison. one, I've put eau de coat on that one. We'll put so eau de coat on that. Yeah. We've got that. Oh, you've got that there. Look yeah, at that. I put eau de coat on that one so, so it can be washed. You were coming. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't stain because as long as you um, set it with a, yeah. a cool iron or and put like parchment over it, yes. gives instructions there. You've got a waterproof surface. Wonderful. So, so that you, is waterproof in, in your fabric. Yeah, and you can go in the washing machine. That's really yeah. great. So we've got that then for you. If you want to have that, that's fourteen ninety nine. The eau de coat. Oh, okay. Apparently, they're just telling me in the gallery, Alison, that Hayley and Ian have said that they haven't shown their pictures yet. Oh, oh look. <laughs> Whose doggo oh. is that? That's Ian's doggo. Has doggo got a name? Fred. Oh, there's Fred. Oh, Fred's got love a coat. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh. And that's Hayley's little Yorkie. Oh. I didn't know Hayley cool had poppy. a dog, I knew she had a cat. A little Yorkie, Aww. a little poppy. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, that's a collection Lovely. of doggos that is Ben's and the yeah. galleries and people from 7th Street and Michael's. We've got Zena, Max, Buck, Bran and Molly. <laughs> Let's have some cats. This, yeah. is, this is Hayley's cat. Oh, look at that. As I say, it is National Cat Day or International Cat Day, one of the two. But we're <laughs> celebrating all furry friends today. And we've got oh, another beautiful. picture. So My there Siamese we are. Let's have a look at this other picture then, what we've got coming up. 
Oh, do you know what? I'm so smitten oh. over pets. <laughs> Sorry, there's a bit of fluff flying around. Let's catch it. <laughs> All right, so the picture's just downloading. Are we, are we there? Have we got it? Oh, this is from Sharon. Oh, it's got a coat Her on. Her dog, Abby, with a coat on. Oh, that could be one of your coats. Yeah. Maybe she's made it before. Yeah, it looks like it. It's Beautiful. fantastic, and I you can see pink. how great they are. Yeah, love the hot the pink. pink for the binding. Yeah. <laughs> so there we are. The USB then is great. It's got all of those things on. So, yeah. you know, if you want to grab yourself a, what I think is a real bargain for any pet lover, you've got all of those patterns in there. It's going to keep you busy, isn't yeah, it? It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they do, don't they? They're worth yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And these are all the patterns. And you've got all the schematics in there as well, showing you um, the measurements and things the drawstring bag but you know you can look at these online and you can print them out yeah you don't have to print out the instructions you no can, you can just print out the patterns if you want to yeah and then uh, look online at your instructions yeah so Depends. there's the uh, yeah. the dog Those coat ones at in the front there. are all the ones that we've got here today yeah. but the ones towards the back are the ones that uh, yeah yeah so that's the, the dry coat with dry the hat coat, like you were yeah. saying the bags with all the templates oh yeah Cat look and dog. you've got the templates there yeah. these are great all uh, right Je jess from upstairs has sent in her dog oh, oh <laughs> Oh, <laughs> they've just it's said lovely, that Jess from upstairs has sent her dog over, I haven't uh, sent the name. I can't remember his name myself. Jess, forgive me. You have told me before. Ben saying, I'm sure he's called Ben Gibbs. <laughs> 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 there we are. The placemat. So you've got lace. And then the upcycling stuff. That's right, yeah, which is handy, as I said, if you like to do um, stuff for charity fundraising. Yeah. So you'll be saving great. all your socks, all your old T-shirts. And, oh, look, you've got to have some of those for your, for your dogs. Some donuts, oh, toy donuts. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wait, I'll give you some of them for your dogs. See, they love them. The cats love them, too, because they're yeah. small. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, our dog, um, our Rufus, he needs really hard wearing t um, toys because he tends to bite through a lot. Oh, does he? So yeah. he needs the denim ones He needs then. the denim. Yeah. <laughs> right, back to the coat then. Right, okay. What I've done is I've put the um, hook and loop tape on here, making sure that the hook is at the top. Yeah. Not the uh, loop. And mm -hmm. I'm going to now put this on. So if you mark the centre of your band, you've already got the centre here from when you folded it over. So you yeah. mark that because you've measured your dog um, from its neck and to behind its legs, so its front legs. And that's where you're going to place your band. So I've put a centre in my band here. Actually, I looked at that and I thought, oh, that's off centre. And I had, I'd mismeasured that. So I have put another line here. Measure twice, just, cut once. Yeah, <laughs> just with a... Um, a removable pen because then you can press it with a cloth <laughs> you can actually press this but you've got to have a cloth or, or an applique mat I used an applique mat yeah do that and all we're going to do now is just to sew that square and then it's done that's how easy yeah because I suppose when we were doing all the waterproof fabrics particularly the ripstock earlier I gave everybody a warning and said you know don't let it see an iron you, yeah you can but you've yeah, got you've to got to be really careful yeah um, if you've got um, a pressing cloth, one of those old fashioned things that your mum and your nan had. Yeah. I, I still use them. <laughs> um, or like I say, an applique mat, that's handy as well. You can use that. That does the trick. Yeah. Do you know what? I always have, even if it's a bit of cotton or calico when yeah, I'm just the dressmaking, yeah. especially just Better always. Better be safe than sorry, isn't it? It is. I've had accidents in yeah, the past. Yeah, because you can be very them. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Are you so, doing any more um, panto costumes and oh things? Oh gosh, loads, Alison, honestly. Oh really? Yeah, we're, we're producing about 20 pantos up and down the country. Oh. I've been up to Glasgow um, at really? the Pavilion Theatre there, so any of our Scottish viewers that are watching, I came for a fleeting visit and we did some photo shoots. This is all with Imagine Theatre, yeah. so I must say hello to all my, all my friends and colleagues at Imagine. 
Um, yeah, but it's a great environment to work. Get to do lots of fantastic costumes. Yeah. We haven't costumed any dogs yet, though. Oh, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> There's always time with the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> well, it's like um, Roxy. I've done this little one for. I thought, you know, if I did one there, I could just put like little frills, couldn't I? <laughs> oh, that would be so cute. Little frills yeah. along there. <laughs> Do you know what? That would be really nice. Not sure Rob would like walking there. Maybe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like these. I mean, these that just co go on the collar. So if you want to do some uh, fundraising and stuff like that, you don't have to include the collar. You just yeah. do that. You and only you need know, one, to, one to show. Yeah, it's great that it gets, slips through the collar and goes on the collar. Yeah, rather you can than take just it off and yeah. wash, and they could keep the collar on. And they stay more stable on the collar, I find. Yeah. And honestly, I've seen dog bandanas sell for quite a bit. So if you want to do yeah. some fundraising, yeah. like you're saying, yeah, I've seen ones made out from Aris Tweed and all sorts. Yeah, yeah, really nice. I mean, it's like the upcycle stuff. I mean, you don't sell them for a lot of money, but every little helps when you're fundraising. Yeah, that's you know, it. When you trying to get things in for a good cause. That's it. So, so do you do much of that yourself then, Alison, like for, for dogs and things? Or um, there's a, a charity called Greyhound Gap that um, I've d done stuff for. And also my Pendy is a Romanian rescue from Phoenix Rescue. Aww. So I've done stuff for them as well. They've oh, auctioned fantastic. stuff. And, yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. That's really good to But hear. children like little stuff to pick up at like fairs and stuff yeah. like that. You know, they like to buy things for their pets. And if they're not very expensive, you, you know. Yeah. But I That's do wash it. the socks first. Yeah, yeah. She <laughs> does wash the socks. All dogs would mind, would they? <laughs> <laughs> no, the dirtier, the better the light, yeah. you know. <laughs> Do you know, yeah. we've tied two pairs of my partner's socks together, <laughs> some old ones, yeah. for the little pup initially. Um, and he was loving that. And they just love yeah. flicking it around as a pup. Yeah. Yeah. you know yeah so uh, yeah there you <laughs> so, go so yeah that's uh, that's it finished basically i mean obviously you're going to have all the uh, the binding. binding around it and yeah. then you put your loop on the underside so that that can go like that mm -hmm. but also did um ian put any swivel clasps in uh yeah i've got some swivel clasps here actually i've got two because it's also nice if you want to make a matching lead oh but how nice yeah <laughs> And that is just basically, I right, think... Right, the black one's gone. That's sold out, so I oh, can't right. do that one. <laughs> but we've got the metal one, the hemline swivel clip. Yeah. Oh, that's just the same thing. 25 millimetre wide, this one is. Yeah. So, yeah, about an inch. Yeah, it's it. only a strip of fabric. I mean, obviously, you don't have to have it this wide if you've got a tiny dog. No. Um, and then you just loop over for the hand strap at the top. Mm hmm And then put this through the, the um, swivel clasp. So there's your swivel class then, 199. And then just sew that If you in want place. to get that to make a matching lead. What a great idea. And because it doesn't um, fray or anything, you can just leave it as it is. Yeah, leave it raw. Yeah. And um, do you do any kind of reinforced stitch for this? Uh, yeah, I do a square. Yeah. And then go through the square with a cross. Fabulous, yeah. That's the way to do it. A bit We've just done than I'm doing now. <laughs> well, it's telly so when you're doing <laughs> yeah. it, stood up. We, um, for hours, um, have got some really robust toys that had got a hole through the centre. So I've just managed to put some webbing through. And oh, I've done right. exactly the same as you, done yeah. a uh, square with a uh, cross in yeah. the middle. It's just good to reinforce yeah. it. Yeah, because yeah, no, if you've got brilliant. a dog that pulls, you don't want any stitches going, do you? Yeah, no, no, there no. There we go. So that's just that's through it. the centre. It shows up better on this one because I did this one at home. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the one you did earlier. Yes. And then I'm so guessing like it's the same it. for the loop at the end. And yeah. there's no pattern in there for that, but you're no, just it's kind of going strap. with it. Yeah, it's you're a just strap. going. Yeah. And that looks so cute. Yeah, the, they do. It's not. Do you know what? I love nothing more than having a matching set of things. Yeah. I'm, I'm a very matchy yeah. matchy person. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could add a little pocket. Mike said oh. they could carry their own poo bags. Well, yeah, <laughs> what a great idea. And do you know what as well, Alison? Now on the market by a popular uh, brand that is a fruit, that does a lot of technology, yeah. um, do these little things of pets that are little trackers. I've got one, yeah. Have you? Yeah. So if you add a little... Um, yeah. <laughs> it's we've like got, I thought orange had got... gone under. <laughs> 
oranges. <laughs> oranges and lemons, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that little pocket. Yeah, we've got one on Pendy because yeah. Pendy goes up with my dad and my dad's got dementia. So we worry that at some point, dad will just open the door and Pendy will go out. Yeah. And at least then that way we can track him. That's such a yeah. great idea. Yeah, yeah, we do the same with ours and we put a little yeah. pocket in. Yeah. But we him. also bought one for the cats because I said, I wonder where he goes. And Mike bought this um, tracker that you can check on your phone. And of course, he came back the other day without his collar. So he'd been somewhere and our last <laughs> cat used to run through the uh, fence, the holes in the fence. And he lost collars. So it's a good job it wasn't on his collar then because it was quite pricey. But he doesn't go anywhere interesting. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, one Christmas we'd gone around my sister's house, had the dog rounds, and he's obviously interested in all the food. Yeah. And then he'd kind of literally just darted over the road in somebody else's house and reopened himself and sat on somebody's <laughs> sofa. <laughs> my cats do that, but cats anyway. are famous for that. <laughs> I think just because it's such a great idea, Alison, if it's all right with you, we're just going to just show everybody the USB yeah. one yeah, more that's time. Fine. Because. There's 14 different patterns in here. So you've got the coat in there as well in this. You could have it separately in the bundle if you've already done that, but you're getting so much more with the USB. You're getting all of the different patterns that we've talked about. Some that we're working out. It works out 264 a pattern. Oh gosh. Daft. Ben's just done the maths. <laughs> You're literally giving it us. <laughs> it comes with a lovely USB that's in the shape of a paw print. How cute. Um, save the designs once you get it. Um, so you've got them saved onto your computer as well. You could save embroidery designs on there if you've got the machine. $36.99. Um, your uh, instructions for the USB and then all of these patterns that you get in PDF the snuggle bed, the snuffle bag, the pet bandana, the kiss clasp bag, pendy dog coat that we've just demonstrated, the PU dog cat shoulder tote, the mouse guard, cat exercise tool, pet wipe clean placement mat, upcycled jumper pet bag, upcycled denim, and the dog food sack tote. <laughs> oh, honestly, there's so much in there, Alison. It's great. Honestly, I am loving it. I'll tell you what, Alison, it's been great to have you here. What an excellent demo. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm sure people it's are going to love all that. <laughs> it's been lovely to have you on as my first ever guest yes. on, as a presenter. One of many, um, hopefully. Before we do go to a break, remember that we've got back in stock. Oh, yes. The dressmaking book by Helen um, Rhiannon. That's it. Okay, so just before we go, I'd like to appeal to everybody. Obviously, we've made loads there for the pets and stuff, but if you're a dressmaker or what's somebody wanting to get into dressmaking, then this is the book for you. So much wonderful feedback that's come into the studio today from our viewers, and that's testament itself. Um, but saying, you know, it's changed uh, and advanced them in their, in their dressmaking. So if you missed out on the launch of it or on the second sellout, on the third sellout, don't miss out on this sellout. <laughs> All right, there we go. Listen, it's been a pleasure. We'll be back with more um, makes and stuff from Joe Carter right after the break. Hi, I'm Joe Carter and I'm a soft toy designer and I quilt as well. I've been sewing for as long as I can remember. My great grandma, my nana, my mum all sewed, and so it's something I grew up around. If I was to give some advice to a new sewer, somebody who wanted to try it, um, that would be to watch a few tutorials, but then to just give it a go. Um, and try not to focus on achieving the perfect end result. Instead, at first, oh, well, always, focus on enjoying the process and learning a new skill. So sort of those perfect results will come in time, but developing a love for sewing, I think is a really great way to go. And a tip I've been given that I still use today is make sure you have plenty of seam rippers. It's frustrating enough if you have to remove some stitches, but then if you can't lay your hands on a seam ripper and you have to hunt around for one, that makes it doubly frustrating. Um, so yes, plenty of seam rippers would be my um, go-to tip. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. 
Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy Alan a present. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Hello, we're back here on Sewing Street National Cat Day. We've had so many great makes already. Um, we're into the next meow. <laughs> oh dear, I nicked that one off Ben this morning. Um, listen, it's fabulous to have another guest here on Sewing Street. Uh, it's somebody that I've not met before, so I'm really excited. I've given her a quick squeeze, a quick hug. Uh, <laughs> welcome everybody, Jay Carter. Morning. It's lovely to have you here, Joe. Honestly, and with these fabulous makes as well for our National Cat Day. Um, so we're launching a new product this morning, aren't we? A new one. Yes, Marigold Cat. Marigold Cat. We've got it here. So I can't wait for you to show us um, how we make this and stuff. But just for anybody that's maybe never seen you before on Sewing Street or whatever, just tell us a little bit about your kits and, and what you do. And Yeah, well, I've been designing soft toys for oh, over 10 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. It might be nearly 20. I don't want to think about <laughs> it. But um, yeah, so in the kit, there'll be all the fabric. And I only use fabric in the kits that I would want to sew with. So yeah. it's really important they have a nice woven backing that you can draw out all your templates on easily and yeah there is a bit of stretch sense. but you can make it work in your favor as well that's good that's really really good yeah no great so 10 years then of sewing these soft toys and they are adorable i'm just looking at the samples that you've got out there on the desk and that pug is lovely <laughs> but we're really excited of course for marigold cat 
So we have got it here on Sewing Street. It's the first time we're releasing this, yeah? $29.99 for the kit. Joe Carter's Premium Marigold Cat Kit, including pin badge. Oh, have we got him here? Or she? Oh, look. Oh, yeah, Marigold's got a bit. It could be a he. These days, you know, <laughs> could be. Gender friendly. Right, okay, so there um, they are. Marigold the cat. Oh, it's so soft. It's beautiful fur. I yeah, think, yeah, it really, really is. Good stuff. And then we've got the pin badge as well, Jo. Yes. Yeah. So um, let's have a look. I'm opening it. I'm opening it. Look at this pin badge for all of our cat lovers there. That's beautiful, that is. And I know a lot of people like to collect pin badges here on Sewing Street. I mean, we've had one since that in anniversary and stuff. So this will be lovely to add to a collection. Yeah. Or, you know, I like to wear one on my lapel. Uh, it's a different, I've got a sewing machine one and Poppy and all sorts. So these are lovely. I love it. Oh, so here we go then. So we've got the instructions then. Here we go. And just having a flick through these. On oh, lovely quality paper, Joe. This is really nice. Um, so we've got everything that you will need, but everything that we need in the kit, yeah? Everything except for stuffing. That's everything the only except thing for stuffing. So yeah. you're going to need your stuffing. But apart from that, we've got everything else. Um, there's a few notes there as well. Um, and then we get into the instructions, some great pictures. We are just saying earlier on this morning, it's great to have the visual and the images as well as the text. This is lovely. Um, and some points as well, bits in bold, all the instructions. I can't wait to get into demo in this because we're going to have um, a lot to get through. And then all the finishing design touches and stuff. Do you get the BDIs in the kit as well? You do. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. We'll have a little look through the box then. And then you've got all your pattern pieces at the back. Look at that. All right, let's have a look through the box then. This feels like Christmas for me. I've been opening loads of boxes <laughs> and it's about the best thing, pets. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go then. Your pack of trim, it's um, little beady eyes there. You've got your, your fabric that you need in there. Oh gosh, it is beautiful. It is so soft. I can't tell you how soft this is. You've got your embroidery thread in there. So you've got everything that you need then. This is fabulous. It's such a lovely colour for Marigold Cat as well. It's so plush. Ben seems to think ginger cats are always the friendliest. <laughs> I think all cats are. Yeah, I heard that ginger cats are either crazy or really friendly, and we've got a ginger cat and it's crazy. Well, we've got one that's both in one. <laughs> it walks around where we live. It, it can be lovely and it can be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and the owner has said that as well on a Facebook group. I can't remember what it's called, but Marigold's a gate name for a cat. Now these are flying out already. Can you believe it? So make sure if you want to get this for 29.99, make sure you check out your basket. And um, we've got some more kits on pre-order. We'll get to those shortly, but we'd love to get into seeing how it's made, Joe. So let's okay. go over to you and show us a bit of a demo. OK, so I've got the face pieces um, yeah. here ready to go. And because there's the sort of... Shall I show it on the cat? Oh, yeah, look. There are sort of Y seams. There's yeah. one here at the top of the face. Um, I've marked on the templates um, the points that correspond just so um, you can refer back to the booklet and see quite how it fits together. Mm -hmm. but I'll start by this section is the middle of the nose. So I'll just sew the pink nose to the bottom of the middle of the snout. OK, fabulous. So um, in terms of um, machine setup, is there any specific needle that we should be using or a universal one? OK, a ballpoint needle is good for um, I've not used this machine before and I don't know how Oh, that's right. Do you want a little bit of scrap fabric just to have a run under, or are you all right? How do you lower the foot? Yeah, it should have done it with that. Oh, is it not doing it? It's not doing it. It's let me fun. come over and let me have a look. Let me have a look. I'm coming <laughs> over, I'm coming over. Honestly, oh. the amount of times that um, I'm wondering whether the height's set on it. It's... Yeah, let's turn it off and on again. That's always Some, best. Sometimes it works. I can't even find the... Is it there? Should I turn it? There we go. Let's try it on and off again. Wonderful. It's the foot that's not, um, there we go. It's reset itself. Now let's just see if that's gonna work. No, it doesn't seem to be. That's a real, um, real strange one. 
Let's see if I can work it out from here. Yeah, it's, I mean, the fabulous machines. And with these machines, if you are now on a user, you'll know that you can really kind of um, use the different settings. And sometimes one of the settings you can do is adjust the press of foot height. So I think that that's maybe what's uh, happening. Although uh, I'm sure Alison's just used this machine and it's been fine. If not, we can make sure that we can get a um, another machine set up for you, maybe. The guys are on it. I tell you what, we'll probably go over a few more of your kits and then we'll get another machine set up and we'll be <laughs> all right. <laughs> How's about that? OK, I'm going to come over. So we've had the launch of Marigold Cat, which we're going to get into the demo in very, very shortly. Um, but before we um, get on to that, we've got some other kits that we've got on the um, show today. Uh, we've got ED Mouse. Oh, look at this. OK, so this is the ED Mouse kit. And um, we've got all the samples as well, which we'll be able to show you. I might go and grab ED Mouse, actually. I'm grabbing him, I'm grabbing him or her. <laughs> there we go. So this is ED Mouse, look. Oh, um, and this is $16.99. There you are. So if you want um, that kit, there you are, Joe Carter's ED Mouse mini toy kit, um, and you get the fabric instructions in there as well. The only thing, as we're saying, you need to be able to supply is your wadding. Um, but there you are. Again, that lovely soft fabric. So that's ED Mouse for $16.99. These are all quite limited um, in stock. So if you want to, make sure you know, you're not avoiding make sure you're avoiding disappointment and um you get in there i love his name reginald pug <laughs> do you know in leamington where i live um there's a few pugs yeah i live in leamington and uh there's the fat pug the black pug and the royal pug oh ben's telling me all his gossip he used to date somebody at one of those pubs <laughs> Oh, look at this. This is Reginald Pug. Um, he is beautiful. Again, nice quality paper on these. Um, so this kit is £31. So you're getting your instructions. Again, everything that you need, all your fabric to make the kit. Make the Pug, Reginald. Um, you're getting your pin badge as well there. He's got a little green bow tie on. Oh, it's probably a little speck on the, on the screen there, but honestly, the detail in these little pin badges is beautiful. A lovely little touch with the kit as well, and obviously all your pattern pieces at the back. So that's lovely as well, and everything in there that you need to make a Reginald. Then we've got Otto the dog. Right, OK, let's go over to Otto then, bringing Otto in. There we go. Oh, and Otto's got a little bit of a patch. It's too tonal. I love that. Oh, how cute. And there's the Otto pin badge as well. So again, same thing, um, same kind of structure with all of these kits is you've got the fabric that you need. You just need to be able to provide your stuffing. But you're getting this cute pin badge as well, getting all the instructions. Uh, that one's £35. And then we've got uh, two more boxes. So we've got Norman. Let's do another cat. It only seems right on International Cat Day. This is Norman the cat. So we've got Marigold and then we've got Norman. Oh, you've got to have both, haven't you? If you're a cat lover, you've got to have both of them. There's Norman on the picture with his wall and he sat up on our shelf today. <laughs> uh, again, you've got your instructions, of course, lovely pictures, and then your little pin badge for Norman. They are beautiful. And then the last one that we've got with us um, is Bo Bear. Bo Bear. That's the one I've got. Have they not given you Bo Bear? Oh, I've got Claude the cat. I'll put Bo Bear to the side. Bow Bear might have sold out, which is why I've not got it. So I'll leave that one to the side. Here's Claude the cat. There we go. He's got a patch on his eye. Claude the cat. Okay, so here. And these are the instructions. All right, so this isn't a kit, this one. It's just the instructions. Um, and all your pattern pieces as well there, which is fabulous. 
Um, so yeah, instructions for Claude the Cat 999. How are we doing on the machine, Joe? Are we a bit better now? Perfect. It's sorted. Go. There yeah. you go, you see. That's live TV for you, but I tell you what, keep calm and carry on sewing, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> All right, so we're going to sew the nose. Um, yes. So if, you, if we got to that part, over to you, Joe. Okay, so I've sewn the nose, I'll turn it that way round, to the bottom of the, the centre snout. Mm -hmm. And then this is probably the trickiest seam, is fitting the side of the snout into this curve in the yeah. front of the face. Um, to make it a little bit easier, snip not quite the depth of the seam allowance, about two thirds of the way, all mm -hmm. the way around. So if I do that, you can And see. what is the seam allowance, Joe? It's a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch. Um, six millimeter. Yeah. So I've snipped all the way around the curve there, just so it will straighten out a little bit easier. And I've got some flex. And it seems a bit um, counterintuitive, but I like to have this piece on top for sewing and sort of bend it round the curve. I find that a little bit easier, yeah. but it's whatever you find easiest. And to make sure these go on the right way round, there's a double notch just for placement to make sure that you're fitting you. the right side snout to the right side of the, the correct side of the face. Yeah. So we're right sides together then. Uh, right sides together, Quarter yeah. of an inch seam allowance, great. So as in before. There he is. Um, a ballpoint needle is good on the machine, but you can use a standard one. Yeah, that's what we were saying, isn't it? Because sometimes it can be confusing with the amount of needles you can get for your sewing machine. And quite often a universal one's okay, but a ballpoint one might help you a bit. It does a little bit, yeah. And the walking foot as well yeah. um, does help with this sort of fabric. For yeah. a long time I was saying, yeah, no, it probably helps. And then I tried it recently and it, it really does, it does make a difference. <laughs> Where it's a little bit trickier, on this cat, for example, the foot's quite bulky when you sew the round foot on the bottom of the leg. Yeah. It can be a bit cumbersome, but otherwise a walking foot is really helpful. Absolutely. I mean, I don't want to show off, Joe, but my fancy duke has got a built-in walking foot. Has it? <laughs> <laughs> some machines do now. I mean, I think some of the owner ones do as well, or, you know, and it just, it's so handy. It just flicks down at the back. It's only this little thing rather than having to feel, but uh, you know, a conventional walking foot's absolutely fine as well, isn't it? Yeah. I've got a bit of walking for envy now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got to get one with it on. It's fantastic. There's <laughs> loads of messages coming in still. Gillian's saying on Facebook Live, she's loving the cuddly toys. Oh, thank you. Well, we love you, Joe Carter, because these designs are fabulous. Princess says, uh, morning, Adam and Joe. Lovely to see you both. I've sent in a picture via email of my cats. Oh, we'll see if we can find it. That's um, Princess. Uh, Derek. He says, could I replace the ginger fur with the black and fleece available on the show? Two of my cats are black. Uh, the other four are white. Well, the thing is, we had some fleece on in the last hour. Yeah. Um, but it's obviously not going to be quite the same as using these fab fabrics that you've got in here. Yeah, it's not quite the same, but actually fleece works quite well. Does for, it? Yeah, it does. Um, I've used it in the past for bears and things, and it's it's quite good for toy making. Well, that's really good. So if you did watch the last hour, we've got all of those fleece fabrics. We've got them on the website as well. So if you wanted to make a different colour and a variant, you know, yeah. get the kit and then add a bit of fabric in as well. And yeah. it's not the pieces are quite small, so we were selling it in half meters. So I mean, that would be more than enough, wouldn't it, I to would, do? Yeah, I would yeah. think so. Fabulous. All right, where are we at now? Right now, it's sort of the tricky seam that's joining the nose and the centre snout around the front of the face. Yeah. And it joins from the bottom of the nose here, corresponds with this point on the on the um, snout, but that's all marked in the, you can refer back to the, pa the pattern and just for confirmation. So I like to sew, mm -hmm. firstly, from the bottom of the nose up with the centre snout on top. This is the way I find it easiest. Well, it's good to hear this and people can watch the shows back, of course, if you get the kit and these little tips that you find easiest, like sewing the two curves together and sewing this yeah. way, you know, you've obviously made a few, so you've mastered, you know, the way to do it. But there's always times where people get in touch and say, actually, I found it a little bit easier to do it this way. And it's great to hear, so I can just put in different ways. Yeah. Of well, constructing things. No, you're absolutely right. And I know for me in dressmaking, like I find, for instance, if I'm sewing a stretch fabric to a woven fabric, then what will happen there? Like I'll often put the stretch underneath, 
and the woven on top because the feed dogs will feed the stretch through um, yeah. without getting it riding on the foot and stretching out. So there's all little things. It's getting to know your machine a lot of yeah. the time. Cool. So, so this, so, go on, this snout's really coming together, isn't it? Yeah, I've sewn that round that way. And then when I sew this side on, I'm going to do it in reverse. I'm going to come from the top down. And then when I finish the seam, I want to finish the stitches right on these ones on this side. I don't want to go over them because it, sometimes yeah. it can cause a little bit of a tuck at the bottom of the nose. Right. So I'm going to start the opposite way around this time. Still with the centre snout on top. Yeah. It's actually coming back together, you know, quite quickly, considering there's a few pieces there. Yeah, um, it's, it's fast. It's... I mean, go on then, how long would it, I mean, you're obviously a dad bandit making them. How, how long would it take for you to turn out one of these? About an hour. Wow. It's, uh... Well, we've got an hour, come on, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah, when I'm doing it like this, I'm, I'm just useless at trying to work out how much time there is left. <laughs> No, I well, know. It's, it's really different when, you, when you're teaching and you're explaining because you really want to do a good job of that. I know what I find I'm demonstrating, you want to go through everything. Yeah. So uh, it's really good to, so we, no, we don't expect you to knock it out in the hour. <laughs> <laughs> I have got some like, bits I've made earlier, so hopefully. Oh, great. Fabulous. So I finished those stitches right on the previous one. So if I open it out, you'll see we've got, it's coming together, we've got the snouting yeah. and so now i'm going to close the top of the face and the bottom of the face and there's darts either side to give it sort of chubbier cheeks yeah so i'll do those and that's pretty much the front of the face put together that's great fantastic and yeah obviously it's all then where there's stuff in to get the nice chubbier cheeks and stuff yeah um but yeah so you've got a little bit of a y seam at the top there you were saying as well have you got any tips for y seams um, my main tip would be try to finish all the seams yeah. um, right at the end. Don't go into the seam allowance, um, yeah. even if you stop a stitch short. And do you mark your seam allowance at those points? Do, um, do you, I mean, I suppose you've done it that often now that you can, you can judge it. Yeah, but it might be worth with like an erasable pen, just yeah. marking in the ends, just so you've got something to aim for. I have put pivot, pivot points in this pattern, um, but yeah, you would need to sort of marking those sort of seam ends. Yeah. Yourself. Pivot points. So I'm approaching the top of the Y seam here and I'm just going to make sure I don't go over, over the stitches from the previous seam. Yeah. So it joins nicely. But it's quite forgiving as well, this fabric. And you can always, if there is a little bit of just brush the fur out and it hides things a lot of the time. <laughs> Do you know, whenever I've worked with any cuddle fleece or any fur or anything, I find exactly the same, that it is so forgiving. I've done a few baby blankets recently, just simple ones out of cuddle fleece um, and embroidered onto them and stuff. But it's so simple because you can sew all the way around or whatever and it, you don't see the stitches, it's hidden. Yeah. So it's the same with this, like you're saying. And even if your seams don't quite match, just brush the fur out and it hides it all. It's That's it. So we've got quite a collection here already today with Otto and Reginald. I love that name, Reginald. <laughs> <laughs> I love his little bow tie as well. But obviously Marigold the cat. And um, we've got some more messages. Rachel says, morning, well done Adam. And lovely to see Alison. Must buy the dog coat for a Christmas prezi. Um, and of course, the lovely Joe, I need the cat kits too. <laughs> Lots of love, Rachel. Well, we're spending all your money for you this morning because all <laughs> of them are so great. Right, where are we at? Right, now um, an ear. Uh, the front's white and the back is this sort of gingery colour. Mm -hmm. Place two mirror image ones, so they're not quite symmetrical, one on top of the other and sew together around this top edge leaving the bottom open right and this sorry is the ear this is an ear yeah so we're leaving it open to turn it through yes although I will after I've turned it through I based it closed just to yeah when it's fitted in it's um, easy to work with absolutely and that's another top tip from you Joe to base things as well into place um, yeah 
like you say, it really helps just keep everything in place. Lovely stuff. There's so many people loving all the cuddly toys. Oh. Right, we think we found Princess's cats. Are these them? Oh. We've been getting everybody to send in any pictures if they can, and we'll, we'll show as many as we can. Obviously, we don't want to miss out on the demo. Um, but there we are, uh, Princess, that's for you, your cats, how lovely. <laughs> the inspiration of the day, International Cat Day. So that's the ear then. So then clip the tip. The, you don't have to do an awful lot of clipping with no. um, stretchy fabric like this because the stretch will allow for it. But places like at the tip of the ear, just take out a bit of the seam allowance just so it turns through nicely. And, and you then, get a nice point then. Yeah. So turn that the right way out. And then baste the edges. There's a little point here. Baste mm. the edges together just a little bit, just for a short section. And then I'll fold them over and baste it fully. But it just stops... If you baste it before you fold, it stops everything from slipping out, out of place. I'm with you, yeah. And do you find these fabrics tend to creep and move? I suppose that's why a walking foot's good. Yeah, they do creep a little bit. Um, you can get used to it over time, but there's, basting makes a huge difference because you can find that you put an ear in at the right place and if it's not basted in position, it just slips down a little bit when you're sewing seams and you want the ears to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's like they say about eyebrows, isn't it? They're sisters, not twins. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if there's a few imperfections, but yeah, you want to you get it as right as you can. Yeah, I mean, often that's what gives it character as well. If it's... Yeah, and that's what I mean. I suppose, have you ever made like duplicates? I bet, do they end up exactly the same or do you kind of find that there is, they They're have their own characters? Yeah, slightly different. Oh, but that's what makes them unique and that's what we like. Yeah. Great. There's lots of ways with toys to add a little bit of personality and just make them a bit different. Yeah. But, uh, there's some face shaping in this, but I'll show that at the end. But cool. So I've basted those just so they stay level for when I fold it over. And you fold between the point and the tip of the ear. Just fold it over and then base that fold in place. With you. And I see on the finished um, marigold there, that's what gives it that nice shape, isn't it? Yeah. No, lovely. And then I'm just going to trim the dog ears. Yeah. The dog ears. I always want to say <laughs> Although dog Although it's cat ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite right. Is it? So but those no, are the I know ears. what you mean. And you want them, obviously, mirror images for one for each side. Yeah. And yeah. then with the front of the ear against the right side of the face, base the ears into position. All right. And are we using a longer stitch for the basting stitch or are you just staying on? Uh, I, as long as I stay within the seam allowance, yeah. I use same, the same stitch just length and it stay. just gets hidden when you do the yeah. full seam. Yeah. So I'll do a sort of a scant seam allowance to baste it in. A scant seam allowance, so a scant quarter of an inch. So just under a quarter of an inch and if you stay in under, there we are. That's one on, I'll do the other. I just think it's fab how like already, you know, the face shape is there, it's coming together. And yeah, there's a, a few trickier bits in there, but with Joe's tips for sewing the Y seam and making sure that you're keeping to your seam allowances and and basting really helping and whatnot, you'll get yeah. there in no time. So that's the front of the face. Yeah. And then the back of the head, this is the way I always do heads on toys. Head pieces one on top of the other and then I just sew it together for a short section along the back. So yes. along this seam here. Yeah. And then I'll attach the back head to the front face. Um, and that way the head's still open to sew it to the body later. Some people like to make a complete head and then hand sew it to the body at the end. Yeah. So stuff the two bits separately and then join them together. But I find whenever I do that, it's always looking to one side. But also, if you machine sew it on, it's just more secure as well. Right. And then do you stuff it all in one then? When... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Although the legs on this, to make them easier, they're um, stuffed separately, but the head and the body yeah. is all in one go. And talking about wadding and, and stuffing, because um, I know it's just feeling them that they're actually <laughs> well stuffed in terms of there's quite a bit in there. How, how much does it take? 
it's everyone sort of stuffs sort of differently. I like <laughs> to do a really solid head so yeah. that I could do shaping and things, but then a squidgy yeah. stomach if possible. But everybody does. <laughs> Sorry, I've right, got the giggles <laughs> now. It's me, I shouldn't have asked. But it's a genuine question, honestly, yeah. like, you know, just so you know how much, because that's the one thing you're not getting in the kits. Yes. But right. a standard sort of bag of stuffing would do. Yeah. One toy. Great. I think. I don't know whether that was much of an answer. No, no, it was. No, absolutely. No, it's really helpful. So when Good. the back head pieces are partially joined, open them out and, join, and match up the centre seam with the centre seam in the face. And yeah. then I sew one side at a time and start from the top each time. Because if you start from one end and go all the way round, it just tends to move Shift. a little bit and it just keeps it nice and even if you do top down each time. Yeah. <clears throat> It's similar in things like um, with dressmaking, if we're sewing a double-ended dot, like we start in the centre and go one way and start in the centre and go another. So it's the same kind of principle really. And that's just like you say, keeping the fabric together so it's not shifting. Yeah. A great tip. Yeah, fabulous. And there's also, I love the pin badges as well, Joe, that come with these. That's one of my favourite jobs. Designing the pin badges. I was going to say, so you've not only designed the pattern, but the cute pin badges as well to go with each one. Yep. No, no, they're really nice. Is the kind of, or they're the kind of, um, buddies, I'd love to just have one in my sewing studio on top yeah. of my sewing machine, like Marigold Cat sat on the top of my machine would be fab. I have, um, I don't often have soft toys in the house, but I'll always have one that gets, you know, sort of has its place for the month at the minute there's a puffin on the piano <laughs> oh, i love that puffin on a piano puffin on a piano <laughs> <laughs> do you know i play piano i've got a, i've got a baby grand at home so, so i need a puffin you on my a puffin. piano I'll bring you one in next time. <laughs> i mean a piano is lost without one really yeah what is a piano without a puffin <laughs> <laughs> right, so do the same with the other side of the head but i'll put this yeah. head to, and also fit the eyes yes at this stage yeah yeah I'll move that to one side and I'll do the body. Perfect. In terms of fitting the eyes, is there any, because I've never done any toy making before, so it's probably good I'm asking this question. Is there any kind of knack to it or technique with fitting the eyes? Um, I I, should I get some? I don't want to distract from what you're going to do, but just a good. Uh, Here we go, quick. I've got some eyes. Because I personally, being on it, I've never used these before because I've never done toy making, so I find it really interesting. Um, what you want to do is make the smallest hole possible and you can always yeah. make the hole a little bit bigger but don't go in there and really yeah you, know, you want not sort of this sort of size scissors but really snippy ones and just make a really small hole yeah and then see if the shank of the eye the back bit will fit through it's okay if it makes it a little bit bigger as you put it through mm -hmm. but you don't want um too big a hole to start with otherwise the eye can become loose That's and you it. can it's always it's often a good idea to put a little bit of um if it's a thinner fabric this is a bit thicker so you don't strictly mm. need it but if you're using cotton or a thinner fabric put a square of felt cut yeah. a little hole in some felt and put it over as well or batting works just to really give something for the back to yep. grab onto and fit the back move any seams out of the way so yep. it's flat to the fabric really push it down and then from the front just make sure you can't get or you can only just maybe get a fingernail underneath just to make sure it's really firmly nice and secure. fixed in place. Jay, thanks for that. I really put you on the spot with doing <laughs> that, but no, it's great to see those little details. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. All right, so we're moving on to the body now then. The body has a lower stomach and an upper one. I thought I'd misplaced that piece then. Um, again, I find it a little bit easier to have this side on top and bring that, bend that around the curve. The yeah, sewing. So I'll sense. join that on quickly. Just so it's got like a little white bib. And with this curve, we've not necessarily had to clip into it on this one. No, it stretches it's enough. Right. I mean, you can do if you want. Mm. Um, I'll just show. I try not to stretch it too much, but rather just bend it round. That's it. And place it. And the problem with this can be you want to see some fibres over overlapping because they're a little bit longer than the edge of the fabric. You don't want to turn it over and see you've barely taken any seam allowance yeah. on the white bit. So you could be more cautious um, 
and take a bigger seam allowance if you want because with stretchy fabric like this you can get away with it no problems there's going to be a little fold there so I'll just lift the presser foot to even it out but the stretch can if you feel a little bit short at this end you can just give it a little bit of a stretch and make it fit that's it well done uh, Joanne um, has said hi Adam and Joe. love the toys I grow up um, with a dog that was a cross between a wire fox terrier and a smooth dash and uh, he loved he looked like an overgrown Jack Russell terrier oh <laughs> I've got a question in here as well from Catherine. Good morning, Adam and Joe. Could I ask a question, please? I'm struggling to attach the head of my Gracie bunny. What am I doing wrong? All right. Um, I, I mean, it could. It's hard without seeing. I know, but just tips. I'm trying to think of how it might be tricky. Potentially, if this seam at the back is too um, long, mm. it can. You don't. You can't open it up enough to get the to manoeuvre it round as you sew. So you could unpick this. A little bit so you've only got a few centimeters seam at the top and then it'd be it would open out a bit more um i'm trying to think how the arms go together on basting it by hand just with long stitches first so it stays in place when you sew it on can help as well yeah if the arms i'm trying to think gracie bunny how does she go together <laughs> there's so many of them listen we're putting you on the spot but all those um uh, techniques that you've given us with the seam at the back and everything that might help in itself you know and yeah. the basting stitches try and open that up a little bit more um, yeah. so you've got a lot more flexibility but worst comes to worst you could stuff the head complete this stuff the head on its own and the body separately and then hand and sew do it that way with nice strong thread though and yeah. hand sew the head on yeah um but yeah if you want to drop me a message or send me a oh, photo I'll, you know have a look oh, at there it. you go there you go, uh, Catherine. Um, thanks very much, Joe, for answering that. Um, that's great. Um, Sue says, well done, lovely. Sam Shepherd, I've sent a pic of my collectibles I'm making. There's loads of people messaging. It's lovely to get that interaction. We love that here at Sewing Street. Um, somebody said they loved Alison's dress, the fabric. We'll have to let her know when she's uh, in again in, uh, in the next hour. Wonderful. So all of these kits then, all of these characters, I'm doing a bit more on the body now. So I make an arm. The arm is, the hand is one piece and the arm is one piece. And they sew to, join together along this bottom edge. Mm -hmm. And there's a pivot point, it, mine's faded a little bit here. Um, so when you're sewing, you can sew along to the pivot point and then lift the press the foot and reposition. Great. So the second part of it just makes it that little bit easy and you've got something to aim for. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and again, that will just help, you know, having those little points with the fabric, won't it? Make it that little bit easier for you. Yeah, sometimes it's just difficult to judge where the centre of the hand will fall. Yeah. So I've lifted, needle down, lifted the presser foot and just readjusted for the second yeah. half. Great stuff. And is it a similar process for the arms and the legs? The legs are slightly different. Once you've done the arm, fold it over and then sew along the side and around. And there's a pivot point. I don't know mm. if that one shows up a little bit better. Aim for that. Pause again with the needle down and readjust just for the little thumb section. With you. Just so he's... <laughs> Give him a thumbs up. Well, I tell you what, these kits have got the thumbs up from us today. I tell you, Marigold, the cat, kit, everything you need in it. Uh, you only need to supply the wadding. That's the only... I keep saying wadding. The stuffing, there you go. The stuffing's all that you would need to get, but the kit with the instructions, twenty nine ninety nine. the graphics on the screen now. Um, you know, and it, these are gonna make, you know, if you're making it for yourself, you know, like I said, I'd make one for my sewing room. But if you wanted to make one as a gift or give a kit to somebody as a gift as well, that'd be really, really lovely. Um, I know I'd be chuffed to bits if I received one of these. And it's particularly because I sew, 
Uh, but I've never really done any soft toy making. I remember as a kid, Joe, um, my nan had bought me a like, little tiger kit. Yeah. Um, so way back when, and we got somebody in the in the church um, and the Sunday school that was a sewer at the time to put it together for me. Yeah. Like, I was supposed to be doing it, but in the end, this lady <laughs> took over and just did it. Um, but those are the kind of early memories that kind of sparked my sewing, and I went off into dressmaking. But See, I don't dressmake at all. No. Um, <laughs> I keep saying I will start, but I find it, I find big things because they're quite small and manageable, but a dress is, <laughs> trousers is quite big. Do you know, it's horses for courses though, isn't it? Because for me, I'd be like, oh gosh, they look really small into cut pieces. <laughs> there you go. Right, so we've got the arm uh, done. The arm done, little clip into the corner at the thumb. Yeah. And then turn the right way out. And then stuff the arms and then leave the top section. I don't know if you can see, there's not so much stuffing in there. Yeah. It just means they hang a little bit more loosely, not sticking straight out, but also it makes them easier to sew in. Great. Um, because these are in the seam when we join the head. Yeah, and that again is another great tip. Yeah, because you could have them just like straight out <laughs> like that if you weren't careful. Um, but yeah. Okay, the leg, two leg pieces, one on top of the other and sew together along the front edge here mm -hmm. and for seams like this this is where a walking foot is really helpful yeah because they won't shift and I suppose because the pieces are too small like um or so you know or smaller you're not having to pin anything do you do you find that you have to use like things like quilting clips on any projects or I don't even use anything like that I don't use pins because I'm so clumsy I just catch my fingers yeah on no, them all the time and the seams are so you know so much smaller than what I would be used to, you see, but it's like learning to use your fingers, I suppose, as pins, as you're running it through the machine and, and learning how to, you know, with your tips, shaping yeah. the curves of the fabric. I would always sort of base it with long stitches or hand tack rather than yeah. pin. And pin, then tack, so that's yeah. how a lot of people were taught to sew. I always compare it to driving a mirror signal maneuver. <laughs> it's pin, tack, sewing, sewing. <laughs> So I've just made a couple of little clips there where it curves at the front. Yeah. And then there's a toe piece that fits around, it'll be like that, that fits around the front of the foot. Yeah. Just to give him socks, sort of a different colour. It's great though, and that's the yeah. great detail. Yeah, because you could quite easily have just, you know, done the, the pattern piece as just one colour but just to have those lovely white little arms and feet really add the detail to to marigold so that's the toe piece on and then there's a little dart in the front that'll close now i oh, sew so yeah. from the cut edge i bend round to sort of taper the end of the dart but sometimes a needle can chew the edge of the fabric so it's you don't have to do it this way round. If you prefer to sew from the fold to the edge, which I think is the more usual way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. I mean, one thing I find um, on my machine, again, I'm showing off, uh, <laughs> but I've got mine changes plate from being um, a zigzag plate, uh, the standard plate, to a um, straight stitch only plate. And it has like a little tiny hole where the needle goes down in the throat plate. And because of that, it helps with sewing smaller things. Yeah, it doesn't and drag it down. Doesn't, yeah, that's exactly it. It's really clever. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to talk about I'll lend you my machine. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many machines. I'll tell you what, I've got some vintage ones as well, and it's only little small, like, featherweight. Me and Alison were talking about them. Yeah. And uh, they'd be perfect using them to make things like this, because the pieces are small. Yeah. So, like a hand small vintage machines to... uh, I've got a hand crank but I've also got um, they've got motors on them my yeah. little featherweights are like from the 50s and people that go into quilting go mad on them because they're these cute little machines yeah. um, and I've got them in like little shelves in my sewing studio oh nice so I, I need to clear a shelf for a marigold <laughs> or an otto yeah, absolutely. And puffing the penguin I want on my piano. Puffing the penguin? Puff, puffing on a piano? <laughs> puffing the penguins are different things. <laughs> right, we're back to you, Joe. Okay, this is the foot piece. This is quite a tricky seam, but just take it nice and slowly. 
sew a few stitches, pivot. So that tends to be how I still do it now and I've been doing this for years. Um, and then start seam allowance with in on the foot to, um, just to make it a little bit easier when we sew the back up. Fab. So starting a quarter inch in then. Yeah. Um, we've got loads of people messaging in. Um, everybody loving the um, soft toys. Um, and some from, uh, from Kim. Adam, you're doing a fantastic job. Oh, thanks, Kim. Could you send get well wishes to our Jenny Jackson? Oh, yeah, she's not very well. You Do you know Jenny Jackson? I do. Jack? Is she not? Is she poorly at the minute? Well, I think she's overstretched it, bless her. I mean, she's um, been on holiday, but then she's uh, had some fabulous quilts and things on Sewing Street here. And she's been at Festival of Quilts. She's done oh. really, really well with it all. But, yeah, a lot of projects. And she's a bit sniffly, I think, after... The weekend now she's because I used to go with her to these shows. We both go. Oh, because you do a chat, don't you? On yeah, on, on a Wednesday yeah. night, pin and tonic, yeah. yeah, which is a great name. <laughs> we just have a laugh. We never yeah. t we set up to talk about sewing, and we always end up talking about everything but <laughs> you know. But you know, if you want to join us on it, we do it on Jenny Jackson's Facebook Live. But um, yeah, she's um, she's been saying she was really well behaved this time. That I'm a bad influence on her because I take her out drinking. <laughs> I don't Still know what fault. she means. <laughs> so get well soon, Jenny Jackson. Uh, yeah, loads of people messaging. Keep those messages coming in. It's lovely to hear from you. As I say, we don't always have time to read everything out, but it's great. And if you have got any questions. Right, here we are then. So back on the toe part. The foot's on the bottom. And then for the leg. So they're essentially stuffed separately. But yeah. if you stuff them at this point, it becomes really difficult to manage the seams with stuffed arms in and stuffed legs so to sort of make it more user friendly at this point I'll sew the back of the leg together but only to about here and leave an opening at the back of the foot with yeah so that they can go in empty and then you stuff each leg separately at the end and close so you're hand closing each leg and the back of the body at yeah. the end but that makes so much sense, um, you know, to make that easier for you so you're not having to deal with, you know, <laughs> stuffed marigold parts on your machine as well when it all comes together. It and can be a battle. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so no, that is, you know, great tip again, just to leave that. And then when it comes to closing everything off, Joe, um, is there any kind of specific hand needles that we like to use? Do you use like curved needles or anything like that? I just use standard needles, but they always become curved. <laughs> in fact, I snapped one in the green room and it was, I'm so heavy, heavy handed. Did you? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I do have to sign up, you know, fill something in in a book. <laughs> but yeah, so for me, strong needles. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, any sort of hand sewing needles. It's fine. Yeah. Cool. So there's that hole in the back then, and then turn the right way out. and then baste the top end together to keep the raw edges level. But bring the front seam and the back seam together so that the, fo the foot will point forward. Yes, yeah, so I was just about to say, that's really important that is, because otherwise you won't have that sit in the right way, will you? Yeah. So front and back seam together, and I'm guessing that's the same, isn't it? On, well, obviously on the other leg, but is it the same on the arms as well, or does it not matter? The arms are different in that they, are sewn with the seam on one side and they go in so that the thumb ah, of course. faces forwards. I'm with you, yeah. Um, it had a lot of arms, this cat. There I, you go. They were, I just was never quite happy with them, but I like these ones. And these. So you've perfected your yeah. arm patterns. It's always the bit you least expect that you end up spending ages on. I made a snowman recently and he must have had four hats and I just was not happy with any like style of hat even. Are you a perfectionist? Yes. You've got to be. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what? Though sometimes it can be your own worst thing. I find that I don't get on with stuff because I'm trying to make something so perfect. But sometimes you have to go, I just need to go for it. Yeah. And then edit it. I, I, I regularly say I should be enjoying what the thing that I'm doing and not. Yeah. Because sometimes it can really spoil my sort of attitude to a project if it's not as perfect as I think it should be. Yeah. 
Um, but then I did make a quilt and all the points have to be perfect and then somebody spills something on it with it. This is it. Yeah, so you think, just let it go. And when your friends coming over or whatever, family that don't so, they're not going up and looking at your points or looking <laughs> at Marigold's arm or looking at, you know, your invisible zip in your back of your frock. They yeah. just go, isn't that wonderful? Because they, we see it all for its little bits and all its good and everything, but yeah. people don't. No, you know, and it's not that. the important bit either. No. But. And like so, you yeah, say, this um, fabric's forgiving as well. It is. I've been sort of trying to train myself out of being quite so obsessive about points, especially in yeah. patchwork. I can really ruin a, the enjoyment in a quilt. Oh, if, it does. Uh, if at one point won't match up. Yeah. For me, I have to have a nice clean sewing room um, and I think a tidy mind, tidy work and all of that. But if I say to myself, right, I'm going to sew this so neat, I'm going to sew this th seam the neatest I've ever done or this hem, it never, t it turns out being the worst. Yeah. Whereas if I'm just sitting down not thinking about it, it happens. Yeah. There'll be seams that I struggle with at home and then I come in here and say, this is quite difficult, this one can go wrong and it probably will now because I'm just going to do it quickly and every time <laughs> I do it, it's fine. Yeah. So when I'm not thinking about it, it's, it works out it's weird so there you go top tip of the yeah. day don't think about it just do it <laughs> yeah if you've got a scene that you're struggling with just go on live tv and do it quickly and then yeah. it works out fine <laughs> <laughs> do you know i remember my first time demoing on live tv with my machine and that lot and it, i'm pretty sure it's the first time i'd sewn standing up yes that is a new experience <laughs> yeah it is isn't it and it's like oh gosh you know but i think the important thing for us here is that we kind of learn and the tips and stuff we're not looking for it to be neat we know you're standing up but we're looking for the tips and the how to do it part yeah which and is it, great. everything goes at some point everything goes wrong for someone i'm i, oh, I made a toy once and i put the tail on the front <laughs> <laughs> brilliant so, yeah. <laughs> That was a very unique toy then, <laughs> a unique Joe Carter edition. Not available on Sewing Street, unfortunately. <laughs> no, <but>. not anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Have you got any plans to bring any others out? Because obviously you've got quite a collection already. Yes, I've got one that's sort of half done on the table at the minute. Mm. Um, Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll keep for that as a little cliffhanger and keep some intrigue. We'll look forward to that for sure. Righto then, where are we at? How are we doing for time? Are we... Yeah, we've got about five minutes, so I can get a bit more in. Right, should I move on to the head? The legs, should I do this bit quickly and then move on to the head quickly? Because there's some face yeah, shaping. Yeah, go there. on then. Should I do that? Right, the legs, front of the legs against the right side of the stomach. Yeah. Base them into position, there's notches. Yeah. Um, that indicate where they go. And then the base piece, so that's around the front, so that's all fitted together. And then there's back body pieces. Just move the legs out of the way. And so down the side, there's a pivot point at the bottom and then pivot to sew around the back of the base. Mm -hmm. So I've got a body here that's done. If I took both the legs inside, so the back body pieces go on, you pivot there and sew round yeah. to join those. And then if I open that out, you can see the legs are in that base seam and then baste the arms in position. Yeah. And then sew the head to the bottom, to the top of the body. You can hand baste it in place first, so it's on and it's straight before machine sewing. You can start in the center and sew out each time to join the head, that can mm -hmm. be a bit easier as well. Um, but then that's how the body goes together. But I've got a head here. And I thought to make it easier to show what I was doing, I just, just got the head. Yeah. And the eyes bulge a little bit on the finished toy. So there's some internal face shaping stitches. So I've threaded a needle with doubled over thread and knotted the end. Yeah. And on a finished toy, I'd come in through the opening in the back and out at the bottom of the snout. Mm -hmm. so that the knot is held and hidden away inside but you don't have to because it will sort of hide amongst the fur anyway and just make a few stitches just to secure the thread so it's really locked in place yeah and then the shaping stitches am i in the right spot they go from the bottom of the snout up through the face and out under the eye yeah. So make that stitch and then go back 
make a small stitch but not so small it might pull a hole in the fabric and use coordinating thread and they'll be hidden anyway and then just pull that down oh, just to pull shit. the eye in and it really does change the shape of the face I'll repeat yeah. that just to um, a couple more times just to really make sure that's strengthened but all soft toys have this sort of internal face shaping as a finishing technique this for me Joe, is, is taking it to that next level it's you know taking it to a professional level which is what you are and yeah. that's great you know, i can see what a difference in the studio that's made yeah and hopefully you can see at home as well that's great is that and then if you and then once you've done the face shaping then if you, obviously the embroidery thread for the details on the face then yeah the mouth is just a little stitch down and then a w i always think of it as a w and you can mark this on with an erasable fabric pen to sort yep. of back stitch over and the whiskers are really easy to do as well have you used anything sp specific for the whiskers or just it's just the same black embroidery thread yeah so i you just two strand thickness and i leave a tail of thread um on the outside and then just make a couple of little stitches just to secure it and then i tie the thread to the tail that i've left in a double knot mm -hmm. and then just trim them down that's great oh i love marigold it's, it's beautiful what an excellent demo as well joe thanks oh. so much honestly thank you um honestly they've been going so well so many lovely messages in about all the different kits don't forget if you've got one in your basket make sure you check out because they are popular um and that's uh, been marigold who's been brand new today um so it's an absolute privilege to have joe here to demonstrate but also have you know something new on the show as well so that's absolutely fabulous love it and then all of those other ones as well that we went through marigold um was 29.99 half the stock's gone but there's lots in baskets so the thing is you know don't miss out if you're wanting to get this for yourself or a present for somebody now's the time to check out so it's been lovely to have you with us honestly it's lovely to meet you because it's yeah, the first time i've met you, you. it's on there <laughs> and it's like and so i asked about your stuff in i'll promise never <laughs> to do it again but uh no honestly i've been really inspired watching you doing this i think many of our viewers would be too so thank you so oh, much joe do you know when you're next thing with us i don't know oh I've, um there's well, no we'll we'll look out. yet but i do have something on the car you know on the machine at the minute yeah so. or we'll watch this space and look forward to the mystery project you got on your sewing table yeah fabulous thanks very much joe um after the break we're back with alice and marion and we have a little surprise for this hour i'm being told even i don't know what it is that's how much of a surprise it is thanks for joining us thanks so much to joe and we'll see you right after the break I'm Becky, I'm the soft craft expert for Crafters Companion. Um, I come from London and I've been sewing pretty much all my life. I particularly enjoy doing embroidery, I'm really keen on that, but I've, I've, my background is um, dressmaking and also sort of patchwork and quilting. Um, so I do an awful lot of sewing for all sorts of different things. I suppose once you start sewing, you start doing lots of other kinds of sewing so I particularly like got into needlepoint and um, during lockdown but I suppose embroidery is probably my real passion. My mum was a costume designer um, so we were always sort of surrounded by bits of fabric and material and ribbons and that kind of thing and I was always making teddies um, and my dolls clothes as a small child so it was just something that was quite natural and in fact I've got so used to being able to sew um, it's just become a natural sort of part of what I do. Um, I'm always fiddling around with fabric as my husband puts it, um, making something new, um, trying something out always measure twice cut once um, i'm a great one for not doing that and i always regret it and making sure that you've got an iron to hand is really important i use a tiny little um sort of almost like a travel iron that i have right next to my desk when i'm working so it doesn't take up too much space
stuck for ideas for the perfect gift, why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy Alan a present. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Now, if you've been joining us for the past couple of hours, you'll know we've had some great kits, great products on the show, and we have now got a little bit of a surprise because from an earlier hour, we had a great um, show with a quilted dog coat from Alice and Marion. It was a complete sellout. Well, guess what? Here at Sewing Street, we've managed to get the pattern back in stock already as quick as that. Um, we've not been able to get lots, it's limited, okay? So it was 9.99, this is for the instructions, all right? Um, from sizes extra small to extra large, there it is, Pendy's quilted dog coat. Already 15 in baskets, already. <laughs> 20 in baskets, it's going up by the moment, all right, okay, it's popular, okay? It was a sellout earlier on today, it's probably gonna sell out again, but just to let you know, it was a brilliant demo. You can see the demo in the first hour that we had at nine o'clock with Alison. Um, but there you go. We just wanted to let you know we've got a few more in. Thanks so much, Alison, for getting a few more in for That's us. Right. Absolutely <laughs> fabulous. And she's back here. She is the lovely <laughs> Alison Marion. Welcome back. Thank you. And we're going to have some uh, more great projects yeah, uh, more for our pets. pets. Yeah. Um, to start off with, the snuffle bag. The snuffle bag. No, this not is the great. snuffle bag. The, the snuggle bed. The snuggle bed. The snuggle yes. bed. We're going to do that one. Yeah. Fabulous. Um, there's two in the range. It's um, a tight snuggle or a loose snuggle. Which do you prefer? <laughs> well, <laughs> my dog likes a loose. My cat likes the tight. And Aww. I can show you with these here. The tight one doesn't have any excess fabric at the back here. So when the cat's in, it's quite tight. Because yeah. basically it's a bed with a blanket attached i see but that one that you've got over there on your desk is that uh, if you look at the back of that one i don't know it's what got some pleats in there you can yes. either pleat it or gather it and can my dog see? likes that because he's got more room in there then i see that's so genius again well thought out you think of everything well it's because it's i've done it for my animals yeah <laughs> no it's great yeah. it's, now there's three different colourways then that we've got in these and the most popular so far has been the multicoloured, I can see why. Shall we do the multicoloured first? All right, here we go. So I have to say, I think this is one of my favourites. 
So the multicolored paw print fleece. Okay, I don't remember if that's the correct um, description. What does it say on the screen? Spe fabric. Yeah. So this is a bundle, is it then? So you get in the pattern and then you get in the one meter of fabric and of course, you know, your zip as well. That's really important. The zips in with the pattern. 14.99. This is just gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's very much um, like the fleeces that we've had in terms of feel on today's show, but it's vibrant. Look at that. Honestly, like if I, Lovely, making something for my pet i want Lovely. i want out of yeah. this this one's my choice <laughs> we've only got a small amount of stock of this so if you're wanting to get your hands on the rainbow paw prints we've got less than 20. so you know if you're wanting that there it is we've shown it you um 14.99 now the other colorways that we've got is the blue one all right so this one's a little bit different design um really lovely though um it's got the bones on it as well and i quite like that that you've got the paw prints and the bones all right so there we go today's price um again with the instructions in the zip 14.99 you can't go wrong with that really it's going to make a lovely um a lovely little cuddle snuggle bed for your um for your pet for your loved one yeah loads in baskets of that one as well which one are you going for at home i'd like to know i know i like the rainbow one but i also like that one actually i like the fact that that's got the bones on it right if we were sitting in ben's living room then he would choose the next one here's the next colorway it's the gray i'm guessing that's your color scheme of your living room ben black and gold but the grey would go in <laughs> if you've not seen ben's a bit of an interior designer you know <laughs> i've seen <laughs> yeah, it's great isn't yeah, it alison yeah. well we I found out that all the colors of his room today we know his bedroom's bottle green yeah and so is charlie's yeah. <laughs> and he's it's not the same room just to clarify yeah. that's our room has start <laughs> we've got the grey here then again the uh, paws and the bones there as well so you're getting the instructions the zip and then uh, your meter of fabric there so the different colorways there they are all together look lovely now if you would just like the instructions in the zip and use your own fabric which of course you can we've got that as well which is 9.99 here it is now we've already seen what's happened with Alison's pet coat instructions. This may go the same way, <laughs> we don't know. So if you are interested, I say, get it in your basket and get checked out now. Um, you know, you don't want to be disappointed if you're wanting to uh, get your hands on this one. Um, again, it's just nice that we've got the options there of the tight snuggle and the looser snuggle one as well. And again, really thought out, not only are you getting the instructions, but you're getting the zip in there as well. So it would just be, if you bought the pattern, it'd just be getting your fabric yeah. then that you'd need. Now, Alison, just asking you in terms of the pattern, um, I know you told me earlier on that there's two sizes, isn't there? Yeah, there's one based on a pillow. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about having foam cut or anything like that. The larger one is based on a pillow, uh, a standard bed pillow. And yeah. the one I'm going to demonstrate now is the small one, and that's based on a 20 inch cushion. Fabulous. Yeah. Just quickly, we've got a message. I would love a fleece for me with the multicolour. Yeah. <laughs> I from agree. So, well, you can get the multicolour by the half metre to go along with your pet. So you could match your pet. Oh, that's oh, taking it to the next level, it? isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I must say, Alison, as well, somebody messaged in earlier. Forgive me, I can't remember the person's name, but they said they loved the fabric of your dress or top. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Yes. Someone, I don't know who it was now, but someone said my top was funky and I'm not sure sure whether that's good or bad <laughs> i'd say it's definitely good it's definitely good and someone else messaged me about my my brooch as well oh i love that it i'm gonna do workshops at um yvonne's belfast quilt fair for that oh <laughs> she gets about she gets about that's fab yeah so that's the uh, multicolored one by the half meter so the blue by the half meter again there it is 2.99 this is by the half meter now 
and then we've got the grey by the half metre. One more question for Alison and then we'll delve straight into the demo. Morning all, have I missed the bone mat that's behind you, Alison? Uh, that's only on the USB. That's a little something that's on the USB. It's an actual quilt as you go and then it's been um, waterproofed with eau de coat. There you go. So we have the USB in the first hour. Here it is on the screen, 36.99. Loads, about 14 different pet patterns on here. Um, here it is, Pampered Pets Digital Pattern Collection. Um, so yeah. It's basically everything I've but ever made for my animals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And at that price, it works out £2.64. Yeah. <laughs> Bargain. Get your hands on it. Right, <laughs> let's make a snuggle bed. Well, Over to you. Yeah, the zip that's in the pattern will do the large or the small. So um, obviously we're just going to cut it down for the one that we've got. And it's a lovely simple make, again. <laughs> yeah, but so, that, sometimes that's what you want. Yeah, you've got um, diagrams here to show you for the tight and the loose snuggle. And then the actual measurements that you're going to cut. So I'm doing the tight snuggle, mm -hmm. which means there's no um, no gathering or pleating in the back. So it's my, one my cat likes because it's nice and tight. Yeah. Um, I don't need that. So I've put my machine on zigzag because we've got a lovely big chunky zip here. And I've placed my top, so the little blanket piece, wrong side down onto the main bed piece. I've already, just so, because it's quick, I've already finished that edge there. If you've got a nice edge on your fleece, you don't have to do that, but it finishes it off nicely. Yeah. So the first thing you're gonna do is basically make a tube with a zip in. So I've got my uh, right side of my uh, fleece top facing me, and the zip is then going to go teeth down, right side down, and we're just going to stitch that on. You don't have to have a zipper foot for this because it's not critical. You're not fitting in a invisible zip or anything no. like that. I'm it just doesn't matter, I suppose, no. is it, if some of the zip tape's shown? Yeah, so we'll just get that pinned there and I'm just gonna go down that one side. So you've got the right side of the zip to the right side of your fabric. Oh, Stitch the, length 2.4. Foot pedal down here somewhere. The zigzag, I've got. Oh, a, of course, yeah, you want yeah, a zigzag. I've got 3.5 width and two length. Okay, which yeah. Which is what was on my machine, so it should be something. There we go. No special needle again, no. just a universal. That's it, nice and simple. Obviously, we do a zigzag because there's a stretch in the um, the fleece. Yeah, I was just about to ask about that. Yeah, I mean, reason? you don't have to. I've just set up the machine for the zigzag. You don't have to do this bit zigzag, obviously, because the zip stabilizes the fleece. Of course, yeah. Now, where you were talking about neatening the edges, and I know you've uh, folded yours over, if you've got an overlocker at home, could you overlock that edge if you wanted to, yeah, to neaten it do. off? Yeah, The only thing I would say about this is make sure you clean your machine afterwards, because when you're using fleece, yeah. um, you really need to clean your, um, oh, yes. your machine afterwards. So now, we've already got that one in there. We're going to bring the zip up and join your top of your zip, right sides down again. So you're basically making a tube and you're oh, going to join up so that this edge will meet up once, you, once the zip's in. And um, both the different sizes is exactly the same method. I'm yeah. just get, guessing yeah. that, you know, obviously- It'll take more of the zip. More of the zip, yeah. exactly. Obviously I'm gonna cut some off. I mean, if you wanted to keep this long zip, you could. It doesn't have to be a chunky zip. Um, I've got chunky zips here, but I mean, if you've got a zip that uh, is the right length for this, 
It doesn't ha necessarily could. have to be the chunky zip because could. all you're going to do really is have it so that it um, is easy to wash. Yeah. You take it off. Take it off and, and pop I, in. When I did my first one, I put the zip inside down here. I thought, oh, that'll hide it. But apparently Ben can't show the video. I got a video of what Pendy does with his bed and he sort of scruffs around inside and I thought, well, that's not any good. He'll catch his claws in that. <laughs> So I, uh, I've now put them on the outside. Oh yeah, and so I quite like that. You know, you've made a feature of the zip, especially in the fact that the fleece Oops. fabric's got the white detail on yeah. anyway. Um, I wouldn't be using a white thread at home, but it doesn't matter because it's no. going to be inside. Well, that's it. Um, I'm guessing this is going to be a make that people are going to make for their own pets. Maybe might want Gifting. to make a couple yeah. and, and gift. So I know you're supplying a zip within the pattern, but if we want to make it again, just for reference, how long a zip do we need for the longest? Well, it's for a 20 inch pillow, a uh, pillow cushion yeah. for the small one of course so, yeah uh, i would add a couple of inches yeah just for ease of so sewing, 22 really. inches yeah. or there or thereabouts you'll be okay yeah because i can i can really see people making lots of these well they well, will do they've been buying so the patterns so. <laughs> yeah they're so easy so there we are that's the zip actually in yeah now we're going to join in the side so that is going, you've got three layers now because you've also got the little blanket layer, but you're not actually yeah. going to pull your zip straight there. The zip is slightly underneath. I like that. So you don't yeah. see it, it's actually down on the ground. Yeah. Whoops. So to do that, That's you great. actually pull the zip a couple of inches, leave a couple of inches there and then bring all three layers and this bit around. is obviously explained in your instructions yeah. so stuff like all of it anyway yeah do so you find you're layering the three yeah so obviously we've got a bit more thickness there then yeah Alison so uh, it's not a problem because it's so it compresses nice and yeah. easy you just got to make sure that you catch this in at the bottom. Yeah. And that's it, by pinning it and just making sure you've got it all yeah. in place. And then we're just with the zigzag again. The zigzag is quite important with this bit because it uh, it is stretchy. Yeah. That's it, you don't want it warping out of no. shape. I mean, it's quite a relaxed thing anyway, isn't it? But yeah, yeah I mean, nice. it's not like fitting a dress. You don't no. have to worry too much. I mean, it's like the um, seam allowances and things like that. But you do want to make sure that you've got all your layers together. But as you can see, the sewing machine... I don't have a walking foot on, and the sewing no. machine is making light work of it. Yeah, okay. The only thing on. you have to be careful is when you get up to the zip. Yeah. Because you've now got that onto one side, like, tucked underneath. So yeah. we're going to go over it. So we're going to go over it, but it depends on your sewing machine. My sewing machine at home, I suppose just out of respect for my sewing machine, it might go over and press the zip out of the way. It's a nylon zip, so it's not an issue. But as you can see, I'm just walking this over. Yeah. The zigzag width that I've given you mm -hmm. easily goes between the two teeth. Fab. There you go. And, and just, just pulling just that hand in. wheel towards you, never the other way, but yeah. towards you, just yeah. to... Great. There we go, that's that side. And then Fab. the same on the other side. And is there a specific seam allowance down the side seams for this? Um, about or? half a metre, a uh, half a metre, half an inch. I mean, again, it's it's not critical. Yeah. And that's, because I mean, because... Because the fleece has got some give in it anyway, it's going to fit your, your yeah. 20 inch by yeah. 20 inch pad or whatever. I've got one with me, so it should be. All right, and then we go. It's absolutely lovely. I'll go down this side, it won't take me very long. Oh, I see, yeah, so that double, have you double turned the fleece over, or just, just a At single the end, turn? Yeah, up the, no, yeah. I've double turned it because yeah. this was a bit of a, a rolled. Um, what can I say? This rolled 
here. Look what I've done. Yeah, it had like a rolled salvage. Right. So I couldn't leave that. So I turned the salvage in. Yeah. And then um, I did it again. So it's a double turn. Nice. But you can see what I did. So that you didn't, I did this on purpose. <laughs> That's what I do as well, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> I've sewn the zip. <laughs> right, I'll take that out in a minute. <laughs> I need to be a few stitches. <laughs> Do you so want an ant? Do you want me to you, come to your rescue with an unpicker? When you do, I'm going to be sewing it. <laughs> 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 so this side's fine. <laughs> but we make these mistakes on here so that you don't. Oh gosh, do you know what? The amount of times I've done it, Alison. And the best <laughs> thing to say. I, mean, I was jo just going to say, don't forget to take your zip. Oh. <laughs> 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 the thing is, there's no point in trying to hide it either. I remember no. my very first time no. on with John and oh, I went, oh, oh that. and John, John can sniff it a mile off and he'll go, what you done? Yeah. What you done? Yeah. And I'll, I'll go, uh, well, well, I've done this and uh, I shouldn't have done, but yeah, just so you don't do it at home. We make the mistakes here so you don't have to. <laughs> That's <laughs> the point that we... where you can say, when I was watching Alison do it. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's got, and it just proves the point that we're all we're human, human. Yeah. and <laughs> that, you know, no matter how long we've been sewing, we all still, you know, make, make mistakes. And your unpicker becomes your best friend, yeah. really. You know. Because I used to prohibit myself from sewing things and really think about it before I did it. And now I just go, listen, Adam, if you go wrong, just unpick it. Yeah. It's, it's fabric with some You can thread recover through, everything as long as you haven't cut it wrong. That's it. That's the most important thing. That's it. And I suppose using an overlock is a bit different. But yeah, you know, with a sewing machine, like you say, you can recover everything. Yeah. I'm about to do it now. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> no, it's fabulous. Honestly, these fabrics are gorgeous as well. Well, they're lovely to work with because yeah. they're so easy to sew. And Although, um, as I said, you do need to um, clean out your bobbin race when you have finished yeah. sewing fleece. Well, that's been really we important. I know that I was, um, my snuggle up pattern that I made, yes. which is like an oversized onesie kind of thing, that was out of cuddle fleece and that molts like yeah. a lot. Yeah, because that's more furry, isn't it? It is quite yeah. furry, yeah, but it's just really important, like you say, to make sure you're keeping your machine clean. Um, and I had one of a demo in that, I had John following me around with one of those little hand old vacuum oh, cleaners. Hoover, yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. They're so handy, those are. But, you know, it's it's great to sew this stuff, but it is so important, like Mary, uh, Alice, I keep going to call you Marion. <laughs> Why am I doing that? I'm not afraid. Alison keeps saying, you know, um, to make sure you're keeping the bobbin race clean and all that lot. In fact, Gary, one of the Juki chaps, I'd been on here, that show, sewing the cuddle fleece. Yeah. And he took a look at machine cause it, my machine because he was in. I says, uh, oh yeah, just have a, a you know, quick look at it and make sure it's all okay. He's like, yeah, it's all okay. But he says, what's the muck in it? <laughs> I says, it's from the show we've just yeah. done. <laughs> right, um, so we sorted the zip. I would, I would normally um, snip those off, but I haven't got my um, spare scissors with me and I don't want to do it with my dressmaking no, scissors. No, don't do it with your nice ones. No. <laughs> so we get the idea anyway. Yeah. We know what you've done there. Ah, oh, look some. at that. Michael's on hand very much. Perry. Perishes. Magic Michael, they're giving you nicknames now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I love it at Sewing Street because it's such a team. You must feel this, Alison. Whenever you come in. And oh, it's lovely. The yeah. Gallery. Really lovely. Yeah. yeah. There we are. It's finished. There we go. I'll just turn it out. And as if like magic. Here we go. As I said, there's a 20 inch pillow, this one. Yeah. And I have always um, done it on um, pillows and cushions like this, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't, if you wanted to do one for a bigger dog, that's come undone there, that's because I didn't do it properly, um, that you couldn't use a single quilt folded into four yeah. and then just upscale this. Fab. 
Yeah, you could do, couldn't yeah. you, if you wanted a, a bigger yeah. version again. Yeah. I love the fact that you've just done it so we've not got to worry about the padding and stuff, that it's stuff that's accessible, a pillow, yeah. a cushion. Yeah. Well, right. I was thinking you don't want to be going and organising to get foam and stuff like that cut, do you? No, well, this so, is it. I mean, but my, my Pendy is a medium-sized dog. Mm. He's quite chunky. And he's fine with that one, and my cats love this. Yeah. I know that ours would love it, <laughs> honestly. I don't think we would get Rufus in one, but we'd definitely get, uh, although I don't know, um, but we'd definitely get little Stanley in yeah. one. He'd love it. And then you've just got your zip in the back to take it off to wash it. Yeah, great. Which is so important. You need to do it, especially oh, when the do. pups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. We're going to have a little bit of a recap then. There we go. So that's so. It's quick, now, isn't it? <laughs> I tell you what, no, but that's great. And sometimes you want an easier mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You don't want yeah. everything to be complicated all the time and it's practical and useful. Um, um, what could you not love about this fabric? Look at it. Right, there's 10 of these kits left and 18 in baskets, all right? So more of you have got it in your baskets than what we've got left. Just letting you know that. Um, okay, so we've got this one first. This is the um, multicolored paw prints. This is um, for the kit. You get in the instructions, you get in the zip and a meter of your fabric as well, 14.99. So that's the uh, multicolor, that's a brilliant price as well. To be honest, you'd probably spend more than that as on a bed in a pet store yeah. or something. You know, so, and the fact that you've made it yourself. Yeah. There's always so much more special. Fabulous. Well, I'm sure as well, if you do one, you'll embroider Stanley's name on it. Oh, Lovely. <laughs> I love it. I, I do. I yeah. do all that. I the love an embroidery machine yeah. for fun. All right, so that's the multicolored. Have we still got some of the blue left? We've still got a bit of the blue. All right, so again, this is the bundle, the kit. You're getting the meter of fabric, you're getting the instructions, and you're getting the zip as well, 14.99. Again, more in baskets than what we've got. It's a bit of a running theme today, actually. It just, you've just absolutely <laughs> shown us some amazing things, and that's, uh, that's great. And then we'll do the gray to finish. This would be the one that Ben would have in uh, for his pet in his living room. With his black and gold. With his black and gold. They are instruction zip and the grey colourway there as well. $14.99. Now we do have something else for you as well. We've got the drawstring snuffle. Which sounds like a dance. <laughs> it's not a shuffle, the yeah, snuffle. Shall we make it up? <laughs> <laughs> now this is great, honestly, because especially when you're training pups and stuff, yeah. I love it. And have you used you've used some of the rainbow stuff in I it? Have, haven't yeah, you? yeah. This is great. So this is to bury treats in. Yeah. And then yeah. to find them in and they the take ages yeah. to find them. Do you know what? <laughs> Even just doing that's really nice. <laughs> So they're going to love this for sure as well. Um, you can put your treats in and you can tighten it as well. Look at this. Well, I put Pendy's bits and pieces in when we go away. I use it as a and travel bag as, as well. Travel. Well, do yeah. you know, we have a travel little bowl for water yeah. and stuff because we take our dogs everywhere. Yeah. You could put a little bowl in there. Yeah. So versatile. All right, so that's what we're going to be having a look at. Let's have a look at the pattern for this then. So here it is, the pet snuffle bag. This is just the pattern, $9.99. Again, don't forget earlier on in the show, Alison's brought with her today a wonderful USB and you can purchase that with all of these patterns that you've seen today, plus many, many more. This is on its own, the pet snuffle bag, $9.99. And it's just lovely. I just love the concept of this. Absolutely fab. And again, we've got all those fabrics that we've just shown you. Um, the fabrics that have been throughout the day as well. How much fabric would we need to make the uh, snuffle? Well, if you're, using, um, if you're using if you're using fat quarters, you need three really because you need um, an outer, an inner, and your tubing around the outside. So yeah, because um, the outside fabric you need. 50 by 70 centimetres, 75 centimetres, so that's three quarters of a yard, isn't it? But yeah. th three fat quarters would be good. Yeah. There you go, so got, you could do it from Yeah, that. you've got your lining, so you need one for the outside, one for the lining, and one for the binding. Fab. Yeah. But it's based on my drawstring bag, which 
I did. Yeah. Just as a standard bag. Um, and I use them for everything. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, you I see. I keep my sewing stuff in it. I've got a makeup bag. Um, You've actually that's... given us more for our money again because <laughs> <laughs> you've given us so many ideas. Yeah. Um, but I was looking for something and I was on the Dogs Trust and they had a snuffle um, thing, but it was based on a rubber mat. And I thought, right. how are you going to clean that? You can't put a rubber mat in the washing machine and, and you know, dogs are dogs and cats are cats. Yeah. Both my dogs and cats have them. Um, you need them washing again. So this you can just throw in the washing machine. Great. Yeah, so a little bit of fleece to uh, do give it a good shake, mind you. Once you've made it, you know, give it a good, get rid of all the little bits and pieces. The yeah, yeah, the fluff and all of that yeah. lot. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we've got some fabrics in as well, so they might inspire you for a number of things. Um, for our pet mates specifically that we're thinking about um, today, maybe some um, projects that we've had on earlier on in the show. Um, but let's go through some of these then. So we've got some ginghams and we've got some plaids. Oh, look at this colour. This isn't far off my That's shirt, you. actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want a shirt in this. So this is a gingham um, flannel fabric. Oh, it's Robert Kaufman as well. Oh, nice. Ooh. So this is half metre, 9 99 All right, so that's the uh, mustard and navy. Then we've got the same again, but in a different colourway with the navy and the green. Lovely stuff. This is for your posh dogs, your posh pups. Yeah. <laughs> And your fancy cats. Right, so that's that colourway. Oh, I love this that's one. Lovely. A nice would, teal and navy. That or the next one would be my choice. Yeah. <laughs> really, really nice. They'd be nice together, Nine ninety nine. 99 they are for me. So, yeah, they, this is lovely. Alison's saying this would be her choice. Um, and then the next one as well. Look at this. That's it's, a Bobby Dazzler, isn't it? I'm not sure if it's going to show up as vibrant on your screen, but it's a real, like, rich, plummy, purpley, pinky colour with an Ava. There you go. These are all by the half metre. Right, we've um, got another gingham one. Okay. These Let's are all classic fabrics. Well. I know. Well, <laughs> you know, I love flannel though. Yeah. I love flannel shirts, to be fair, yeah. for the winter. Um, nice grey and blue there. Grey and navy. Um, let's do a few plaids. There we go. So this is a blue and uh, black plaid with a nice uh, lighter grey going through it. It's really nice indeed. That's nice, isn't it? And then one more plaid. They look lovely quality fabric too. They are, honestly, they yeah. feel lovely, Alison. Yeah. 9 99 um, These are all Ro Robert Kaufman ones. Do you know what? They feel so lovely. Mm. Um, there you go, that's the final plaid, a nice bit of red going through that. Make some shirts out of it if you wanted to. You could make, you know, some posh pet beds. <laughs> um, right, there we go. Yeah, this doesn't actually right. have to be in fleece. No, you could you do, could that do it. Yeah, you could. It'd be lovely in flannel. There's a, there's a well known yeah. kind of country brand that I've seen in shops that is all that kind of stuff. I it's won't most say of their the stuff name. Green. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, it sells for a fortune. Yeah. And like you could have your own there. So yeah. there you go. All right, let's get on to the demo of the snuffle bag then. I'm really excited to see how this is made. Right, okay. So I, I start off in the pattern, because you start off with the drawstring bag. Um, it's basically the drawstring bag without the lid. Okay. There's like a little flap that comes over to close it. So you don't cut that out. But it's all in this extra cover here. It's all covered there. Um, and I show you um, basically how to cut the circle ish. It doesn't have to be an exact circle. Don't right. worry too much. Um, and you, as I said, you need a outside and the lining, and you do need um, a little bit of wadding. Have you got any wadding? We've today? got some wadding today. Yeah, right. So I don't know if we can bring the graphics up for this. Um, this, I, I'm not sure. We've got a couple of types. This might be eighty twenty. Yeah, I just used the ordinary craft wadding for this. Oh, did Cause, you? Yeah, because it's got to be washed and done. Yeah. So that uh, 
I mean, that would work. OK, so this is the uh, 80-20 that you can use for a lot of quilting projects, etc. For the half metre, 6 so uh, that's that one. And then I'm not sure whether we've got some craft wadding as well. Uh, well, we'll be able to find out for us anyway. But yeah, so we need some wadding there, yeah, basically. Just, just a little bit of wadding. So then um, with your circles, uh, 505 or pin the wadding to your lining, the back of your lining. Yeah. And in the instructions, I show you how to um, cut out the bias binding strip. Fab. And is it cut on it's, the bias? It it's is cut on the bias because we're going round the, the circle, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you're going to cut a strip, press it in half, and then with your lining and your channel, you're going to put that around and pin in place. Then you're going to lay your outer right side down onto the channel and the right side of the lining, and so all the way around the outside edge. I've sort of um, skipped over the bit where you actually separate your channel yeah. because obviously you've got to put two lots of um, uh, cord. piping cord, cord, through, cord, yeah. Yeah. No cord. Um, to go in. So I, it's all explained in there. So you split it in half mm -hmm. on both sides. There we go. So you've got a join on both sides somewhere. There it is and just sew all the way round. So not really any need to snip it because we've only got a quarter of an inch seam and it's not going to be that critical. So once you've done that, you leave about a hand's width enough to turn, enough it to through. turn through. So when we'll turn that through. So we have got the 8020 that I just said, but we've also that, got the premium oh yeah. polyester craft wadding. Yeah, that's wadding. what I used. This is yeah. what um, Alison used. Um, it's so here that is on the, the screen now. Because machine quite a lot. Yeah, exactly. Because it's polyester as well, it will take the washing, yeah. won't it? Five ninety nine. quickly too. Yeah. Five ninety nine for that if you want it. There you are, the graphics are on the screen. Right, at this point I would normally pin this, but I'm not going to pin it. So oh, where she's I've going left... rogue. She's not going <laughs> to pin it. <laughs> <laughs> Where I've left that turning, we're going to put over a quarter of an inch because that's the seam that we've left. Yep. So we'll go around there and I'm just going to go all the way around the outside to hold that channel in place. I'll start here. Now, shall I do it in zigzag? Yeah, let's do it in zigzag. I wouldn't normally do it in zigzag. You can use an um, embroidery stitch here if you would like. Sorry, a what stitch did you say? You can use an embroidery stitch oh, if you've yeah. got something on your machine. Oh, that would be a nice little touch, wouldn't yeah. it? A decorative um, yeah. stitch. People are loving you, Alison, and loving your pet makes today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's because we all love our pets. Oh, that's it, exactly. How can you not? We've got loads of um, messages coming in. Rosanna said, posh paws, fab show. <laughs> that's great. Um, my own picker is not my best friend Adam. He's only there to be tolerated. A bit like my husband at times, only joking. <laughs> <laughs> and that comes from Stefania Bianco. There you go. What? Hamish loves his snuggle bed. It's filled with my pillow. I had to buy a new pillow for me. <laughs> that's the way it goes, isn't it? Well, that's right. It's nice. First. It's nice to have a use for them, isn't it? Once you've got rid of them. Yeah. and you've got new ones but that's like a lot of the um upcycling projects the um the pet bed from a jumper if you've got jumpers well i actually bought a nice one from a charity shop to turn into a bed for the um the greyhound gap because i had a pillow and a cushion that had seen the best days you know so, yeah um I used it for the stuffing of that, so yeah. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Honestly, Alison, all these projects have been wonderful today. Um, and I do like this one. I mean, I love yeah. them all. <laughs> I'll have to post all the photo. Oh, I didn't get a photo of Ben with this, that snuggle bag on his head. I've got a photograph of John and Rebecca. <laughs> oh, what with it on his head? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> while I'm doing this, I'm actually pulling the channel away from the fabric. Yeah. I see. So it's all staying nice and flat. And yeah. 
That's great. <laughs> Nearly there. <laughs> it's sneaking up on that. You'd be able to see it home if you're fair. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it on I his head. I didn't see that. <laughs> Honestly, the shenanigans our production team get up to, you know, are unreal. <laughs> but, you know, they're the ones that keep us going and the backbone of the channel. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ben says he's putting that on his LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and of course everybody that plans the shows as well, <laughs> you know. So we're going to go to the inside now, and I'll just do a couple of these. This doesn't need zigzag. This can go back onto a straight stitch. Right. Yeah, I mean, so you're just you going to have your this. strips. And does it matter how wide, long you cut these strips? Uh, you want them a fairly decent length, but no, this is just bits that were chopped off when I made the bed. That's it. So again, using your using off cuts, that, really. Yeah. I'm just going to sew them down onto the centre of the the bag, down through the middle. Yep. And then finish off your ends, either reverse or do a lock stitch, but not forgetting that it's going to be visible on the outside of the bag sometimes my lock stitch goes a little bit messy so yeah i i've reversed there so you just fold over one side and then put your next one inch inch and a half away right and then sew down the middle again is it yeah and then when you've done that you about four or five pieces or you can just carry on if you like it depends how full you want it to be Is that about four or five pieces each side of the centre? Yeah. Yeah. And then for each, I mean, I've got others I'll put in, yeah. but for each one of them, just cut down in towards the centre. Obviously, don't get right to the centre because you'll, you'll cut your fabric as well. That's it. So it's just enough to free it up and give that yeah. effect. Oops. Need to sharpen my scissors. But I've got my uh, Fisker sharpener. That was one of the best things I bought. Have you got one oh, of those? I've that not. Black? I need oh, to get brilliant. one. They're brilliant. So you just carry on doing that all the way along. And as you get more in, it gets more um, uh, full. Yep and when you cut those out so you've also got uh, two lengths of have you cord cord i think have we got cord on the show today as well we've we got any cord in stock yeah we have oh. we have i know i've got and a, a bit here i don't know whether we've got the bodkins ah. i have to check on the website we might have a few left so this is white piping cord uh, by the half meter 99p Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So if you were to 10 units, obviously you'd get five meters there, which is handy to have for all sorts of things. I'm finding on a lot of my costume makes, I'm piping oh. a lot of stuff um, at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, um, it yeah. just adds a real, but you could, you know, adding piping to any kind of thing really just add some definition and extra does, detail yeah. but this right, with this cord we're using it as um threading it through the channel yeah to then make the drawstring yeah so you've got two pieces and each piece we've got a quick message in here alison please could you give me the code again for the usb i missed it the first time yeah so we'll do that for you there it is it's coming on screen now the graphics are flying in there they are O B A two eight three. There you go. Thirty six ninety nine for the USB. I know there's been a lot of interest in that, and I think it's great. You've got the projects you've seen today, plus lots, lots more. And I think somebody were asking about the mats earlier on, and they're all on there, and literally you've got the templates think, and everything. All there the as templates, well. yeah. I think literally everything you could think of to make for your pet is on Alison's <laughs> USB. <laughs> yeah. You can tell what a sad person I am because no. they're all things I've done. No, you're not. <laughs> Honestly, it's brilliant. Hmm. 
and I like, you know, it, well, your pets are uh, your extended family or members well, of are. your family. Yeah. I said to my next door neighbour, because they're having their uh, fences taken down at the back of our garden to have new ones with concrete posts put in. Yeah. So of course, yes, they get, the, get home and um, let Stanley out and then realised, oh gosh, it's all open. Oh no. So I was like, oh no. Um, but they were so lovely, like, we're so sorry, we'll get it all done. And yeah. I said, there's no bother at all. And yeah, we were chatting and I says, I've been telling the girls at work and telling all you viewers today yeah. in Sewing Street about, I says, I'm talking about him like he's a baby. And she's, yeah. Well, he is well, your he baby. Is. Yeah, they, they are. <laughs> they are, they've become yeah. so much. You, you know, your cats, your dogs, your budgie regards. <laughs> <laughs> I had a budgie as a kid. Yeah. Right, so there, uh, the, that's gone all the way through the whole of the channel. You don't just go halfway. And I put a knot in the end. Yeah. And then I've got a little bit of fabric there just to stop it pulling through. So that all that is, yep. is a square of fabric with quarter inch seams both sides. Any particular size of square for that? Or? Two by two it two was. Two by two yeah. inch. And then you're going to make that in, turn that through so you'll sew up there and sew across there and you'll turn that into a little thing. And look at those eyes. It's <laughs> great fabric. I think that's yeah. fabric that we had earlier on in today is, in the yeah. show. So, you know, if you like yeah. the uh, fabric that Alison's demoing from, then. Uh, yeah, we did have it early on. I don't know if there's any more left. So you've done one side. So now with your next cord, you start from the other side and do exactly the same thing. Go all the way round. Yeah. With your cord. And, that's and then why the two you... all pull in together. With you. And this is why you're using your bodkin yes. rather than yeah. a safety pin. Yeah. I mean, safety pins tend to open, don't they? And then yeah. you have to... Honestly, the amount of times I've, I've had it. I'd be lost without one of these. I mean, it's such a, a simple little piece of equipment that you were, if you were starting up, you wouldn't think you would need, but no. I use it so often. But there's certain tools that as you're going on your sewing journey that you kind of collect. It almost becomes a separate hobby in itself, yeah. doesn't it? Well, they do say that collecting fabric and sewing are two different hobbies, yeah. don't they? <laughs> and they are. And sewing machines is different again. Yeah. Yes. And then, yeah, all the tools. And then, if you're like me, storage. Storage solutions yeah. when you get a sewing room. Yeah. That becomes the obsession then. Yeah. Oh, getting gosh. The I can't Getting the box and thinking, what am I going to put in there? <laughs> yeah. I can't resist the tub. <laughs> I just bought some. Yeah. And they're all like rainbow, multicolored little <laughs> craft tubs that sit in this yeah. thing. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Because... All of your little things like your hooks and eyes and your, your poppers and press yeah. studs and snaps and yeah, <laughs> love it. <laughs> so that's what I've done. I've gone all the way round again. Fab. And then and you've then just got those the, tabs. That go, just goes on the end. And get sewn in place. And that's it. Do you know, I this is going to be such a joy to make as well because like in the inside it's literally just you've got the fleece um and you and you're sewing it in you're not needing to pin it yeah you're not needing to over complicate opening an envelope as a yeah. teacher once <laughs> said to me it, oh really it, oh that's a good thing yes yeah. it's, it's it's great and you know there's times for me i mean i do a lot of complicated dressmaking and tailoring and then get creative with all the costume side yeah, of stuff I bet. but there's sometimes where i just would love to do this sit down and make something for a there pair that is functional a great design yeah and you know you can sit down there and just get on with it and sew it and I like so yeah that. that's it it just it'll be full obviously with yeah, the gray i'll put some more in there and then when you have done, you just grab hold and pull, and pull it together. It. And that's why I use it for Pendy's toys and things when we go away. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It's so functional. Yeah. So functional indeed. That, as I say, if we were going to have one of these, like we'd carry the um, water bowl in it yeah. for our dogs. Because we take our dogs to London, you know. Do you really? Yeah, we, we take Rufus, not the little one yet, but Rufus on the tube and everything. Yeah. And he's so good. We find a dog-friendly hotel. We walk around Hyde Park, St. James's Park. But we do it in the summer. And yeah. we have to make sure that we've got, obviously, 
Yeah. <laughs> Ben's just said my dog has the life he wants. I can bring you next time, <laughs> Ben, if you want. <laughs> Bless. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that has been so brilliant. I don't know whether we've got anything left to recap, but I think we might have a few bits. <laughs> Right, so let's recap everything that we've had on the show then. So we're going to recap the pet coat instructions. Now these were a sell out this morning. We managed to get a few more. Half of that stock of the few more that we've got has gone and there's more of than that in baskets. So we really need to um, check out if you want this. And what we don't want on your Tuesday is disappointment. <laughs> 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 that was not on the menu. All right, so uh, Pendy's quilted dog coat there, nine ninety nine. That's just the instructions for that. Did you want to see one of those? This, I think, this is is the one of the day. I'm going to be honest with you because it's got so many patterns on it. Fourteen PDF patterns. You've got the USB, um, all of the projects that you've seen today, and more. Everything you can imagine making for your pet for thirty six ninety nine. I think Ben worked it out at two pounds sixty four a pattern or something, Daft. So there we go, well worth getting. All we say with this one is if you do get it, make sure that you download and save the designs first onto a computer. So then you've got a copy of them on your, on your desktop or whatnot. They are lovely. So that's the USB. Then we'll do the snuggle bed uh, pattern. The multicolored's gone, I'm not surprised. There you are. That's so that cute. It was fabric. So we'll do the pattern on its own first. So if you just want the pattern, nine ninety nine. You do get the zip in there as well, um, which is long enough to make both sizes of the snuggle pet bed. So there we are. That's that one. Great instructions. And then if you want to, um, this is the bundle. This is the blue. We've still got some of the blue left. So this is instructions and the blue fabric with the paws and the dog bones. There it is, and that's $14.99, that one. Wonderful, and then we can do it with the gray as well. We've got some of the gray left for you. So there you are, the um, pattern and the gray, $14.99. There we go. So that's the fabric there. Obviously we've talked about um, the wadding and stuff that you might need for the snuffle bag. We can get some of those fleecy fabrics on their own. They are on the website. So this is the only way to get the multicolored now. We've got it by the half meter. So all the bundles have gone, but 2 99 for half a meter. Just add it to your order. It'd be criminal not to really, <laughs> wouldn't it? Have a bit of each and there you go. So that's the multicolor half meter at 2 99 We can do the blue at the half meter at 2 99 Lovely, lovely, lovely. So you know all these great pet fabrics today. And then we've got the grey. I know we've seen them with the patterns, but I'll just show you again, just if you want to and open them out. There you go. Lovely. That's the grey um, fabric there, 2 99 for half a metre. And then we finished on the drawstring snuffle. <laughs> Here we go. There's the pattern, 9.99. It's just the pattern with this one, um, but really clear instructions. Really simple to make. If you, you know, somebody that's only just got into sewing, and I think we'll be right in saying, Alison, you know, be beginner friendly. Yeah. yeah. All of these Definitely. projects really, yeah. you know, and with the demonstrations today, you can watch them back here um, on Sewing Street, of course, if you need a reference with uh, Alison. So there you go. We've had some pictures of dogs come in. We've had more dogs than cats. Yeah. <laughs> we are a nation of dog lovers though. But we have had some cats. Oh, look at this one. Oh. This is Hayley is Bryant's Hayley's dog. dog. Yeah. yeah. Oh, beautiful. What's Hayley's dog's name? Yes. Um, Marge. Marge, that's it. It's yeah. Marge. Look at Marge. Love it. We have had a cat as well. Oh, there's a few pictures of cats there. Oh, look. Oh, what are you making today? <laughs> that looks like a Burmese. Well, oh, they it? become your sewing buddies, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. I know I have the dogs up with me in the studio, but the cat's the yeah. same. 
Oh, look. Think the difference with dogs There's is though, you cat. can take a bed and they'll sleep in a bed, but yeah. with a cat, they don't do that. No, they like to roam. They like yeah. to roam. <laughs> yeah, they like to help because <laughs> they can get up on the tables. <laughs> <laughs> Another yeah. dog in a coat. Look. Oh, that's Lorraine's dog. She posted that onto uh, Facebook. Yeah, that's one of these coats. And that's one of yours. Yeah. They're getting around, you see. Beautiful, Honestly, so it? practical. She embroidered that one. A cat in a sink. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. Pets are the funniest. <laughs> because we're not exclusive to dogs and cats here. What have we got now? Oh, that was a... A skateboarding power <laughs> <laughs> Celebrating our furry and feathery friends here on Sammy Street. <laughs> they do say that dogs This is Izzy. She barks like a dog. Oh, really? <laughs> and meows like a cat. <laughs> she can do it all. There you go. Izzy, the skateboarding parrot. Oh, my gosh. Do you know what? It's been so much fun today. It really <laughs> has. With all the great demos and stuff. I just want to go home and make all these now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fab. Alison, when are you back in? Um, first of October. First of October, yeah, great. That's gonna be my Christmas show. <laughs> oh um, I'm not in on September because we're over in Belfast for the quilt fair. Yeah, is so, that where Vivon, Vivon, did you say? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh fab. So, so you do workshops gonna... over there, so it'll be nice to catch up with uh, Jules as well. She's over there, aren't so Oh yeah, yeah. Jules Maeve. Yeah. Like, which Jules is over there with you? Jules Ju Mayoff. Jules Mayoff, yeah. 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 That's it. Oh, great. Yeah, so that'll be nice. We thought we'd take a holiday and uh, join it all in. Yeah, no, so, it makes yeah. absolute sense. Yeah. No, wonderful. So we've got a cottage over there. So great. Be nice. And any new projects for next time that are on the on the cutting table? Oh, I couldn't say, could I? <laughs> say, could I? <laughs> Everybody's keeping me in suspense today, isn't <laughs> that? Oh. I'm sure Tucker will make a return. People might remember Tucker the turkey. <laughs> oh, I remember Tucker the turkey. I've seen that one. I remember yeah. watching you do that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, great. So yeah, I got a few bits and pieces that all and some. Um, I only did a few last year, um, like decorations, little angels and yeah. things like that. So yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, listen, Alison, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, as Thank you. always. Thank you. Um, I've been delighted with all of those um, makes. Hopefully it's inspired you. Don't forget to check out your baskets. Um, make sure you get your hands on all these pet goodies. And we've got some fabulous fabrics in your last hour coming up. Uh, that's right after this break. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting to toy making, needle felting and of course applique which is my favourite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Have you heard?
heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street, you can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Oh, hello. Here we are. Welcome back to Sewing Street. You've just caught me having a flick through uh, Helen Rhiannon's book there. Um, it's fabulous. Um, we managed to get some more of these in stock earlier and in the uh, break um, I've just been having a little bit of a look through and honestly it's such a great book. So here we go. So we've got the sizing at the, uh, at the top end of it. We've got altering the waistline. She takes you through everything in this book. It's fabulous, you know. Um, and so many wonderful comments that have come in. And I have to say, as a dressmaker and having to read through it, like, you know, big shout out to Helen because it absolutely makes sense. But, you know, holds your hand, teaches you all the right techniques. But also, most importantly, how to fit. I think that's the real nice thing. 
Um, and talking about constructing garments, obviously, and different necklines, like, look, you've got your collars here, uh, cutting out and sewing your collar. And just in the diagram alone, I can see how beautifully those curves are clipped, um, you know, so they'll turn through nicely and give you that lovely Peter Pan collar. Um, how to make this outfit. So we've got separates there with the blouse and things, box pleating. I mean, all skills that are transferable into other things as well, but, you know, a-line skirts even if you dressmake every day it's good to have a refresher i've i must have about 10 different dressmaking books on my uh, shelf in my studio um, a couple of being like pattern making books and things like that um, but then i've got ones from a well-known bbc uh, program that have been bought over the years as presents I did happen to be on the Great British Seven P. Yes, Ben. <laughs> um, it seems a long time ago now, but I've got some of those. I've got a um, another sewing book, an older one as well that goes through like couture sewing and, and hand sewing techniques. So this again is another one to add to that collection. Go the skirt. Uh, how to sew the fitted skirt? This is really great. Cap sleeves. Honestly, sweetheart necklines, curved necklines. Adapting the pattern, that's it. Absolutely so useful. Um, taking you through that. How often do we get a commercial pattern um, and you go, right, okay, well, I'm in between sizes or my bust is there, but then my hips is over there and my waist is there. And which one do I go for? Well, what, um, what we're doing in here is showing you how to adapt that pattern. And I love the fact that Helen has chosen not to go for a size 10, 12, 14, 16 in the patterns, but she's just color coded them and gave them a number from one to 20 or whatever it is so you're not hung up then on a size what you're looking at is your measurements and they're both provided in centimeters and inches as well now as we say the first couple of times this book was launched and came on sewing street it's sold out and um, we've managed to get it back at a deal price at 19.99 so it's definitely one to add to your sewing library look at the gorgeous pictures as well that's what we're making one an ice cream now Oh, we've got a message. Adam, it has been such a pleasure watching you today. You are a lovely and proficient presenter. Oh, I say, I hope we will see you again in the role, Julie. Oh, thanks so much, Julie. From Leicestershire, my hometown. Oh, Leicestershire, yes. That's where I grow up. And now I live just out Le outside Leamington. There you go. I have to say thank you so much, everybody that's messaged in. We love having all your questions. We love the support that you give them. Um, and how welcome you are for our um, guest demonstrators. But then, you know, on a personal note to me as well, my first day in the role, honestly, you've been fabulous. Thank you. You've all been great. Um, cutting out in calico here. Um, altering, you see what I mean? And all the diagrams as well, we're taking you through it. It is, you know, an encyclopedia really of altering a pattern. Um, there we go and we were talking earlier about the differences in fabric as well this is great because when you first start dressmaking or sewing you know it's a little bit of a minefield what fabric do I buy how does the fabric behave um, well here you know we've got some descriptions of what poly cotton is what wool is what polyester satin is you know and even now I still end up learning about different compositions of fabric yeah, it's impossible to know everything, but what this book is going to do is provide you with a reference of, you know, a, a lot. Um, ease of handling, washing, talking about drape there, types of fabric, and it's learning what types of fabric are right for certain projects in dressmaking, neatening the seams. I mean, even going through if you've not got an overlocker, I mean, the more you get into your dressmaking, you'll want to get an overlocker for sure. Um, that's it. I know, I think I lasted till I was 14 and I asked my mum for an overlocker and she said, what the hell's one of them? And I says, it's this thing. And I didn't even know what it did at the time really other than neat and seams. But I knew I needed it. I knew that's what the professionals have. I've never looked back since. And I always say you kind of get your machines, this is dressmaking really, but um, sewing machine, then an overlocker. And then if you're sewing stretch, a cover stitch machine. Um, 
But you know, if you're a quilter, it's more about you know having the right accessories, having your quarter inch foot, having your scant quarter inch foot, your rulers, and all of those type of things. So you know, it's the bread and butter of our sewing. Your machine sewing, choosing a sewing machine, get a good quality brand, visit a local shop, try out a machine. You know, all these things that are important. You know, because it can be quite an expensive, especially if you're getting into sewing, um, you know, you can't buy everything at once. And what I'd say is build up your tools, but kind of look at a couple of smaller projects that you want to have a go at first. And it's always better to start smaller and then build your way up uh, and then build your tool set up, build your skills up, then work towards, you know, having a better sewing machine than the one you've had previously. I got through, you know, a lot of my sewing with a very basic machine and it's only till, you know, I started doing a lot more professionally that I really upgraded my machine with a considered purchase. But you know, this book is an upgrade to your sewing library because it's giving you so much information. It talks about tools here, look, concealed zipper foots, overlocker, we've talked about cutting mats. All right, I have the sewing bee book, but Helen's is so much more. <laughs> We can never confirm nor deny this one. But what I will say is Helen's book gives so much. We've said that already. Sue's already messaged in. There were two Sue's, the two Sue's from different places um, saying, you know, that comment, that's been the general feedback over this book. It gives so much more. And I think it's because it's taking it from, you know, here's a pattern, here's some instructions to here's a pattern, here's how to adapt that pattern, here's the fabric you should use. Uh, Helen's book has been a game changer for me even attempting to dress make she is just so talented and helpful it's an investment it is Kim thank you very much 19.99 it is an investment in your own craft and hey listen we know you can't buy everything all at once we get that I, I didn't but part of the fun of your sewing journey is collecting things we say this if Alison earlier on you know you might add Helen's book to your collection then you might add something else or it might be your fabric stash that you're adding to and they're all separate hobbies trust me I know <laughs> and my other half will say to me oh you don't need any more fabric and I'm like but I do I need the rainbow paws <laughs> it's not a want it's a need we'll leave that with you for now and um, we might recap it at the end of the show but I just wanted to give people that chance because we know it was so popular but whilst we're on books We'll also do Helen's other book. Now this is really, really appropriate for today because today is International Cats Day, but this is pets in general. So perfect pets. Lovely, uh, colorful front cover by Helen Rianne. And so the same author as the dressmaking, the easy guide. Um, the dressmaking easy guys a hardback cover. This is a, um, a nice soft one. Oh no, it's actually quite hard. It's because it's got the patterns in. It's sturdy, isn't it? Yeah, I think at the back. Let's have a look. Yeah, look. Your pattern sheets and templates are there, look. Bunny bottle bag feet. Our doorstop. So not only are they animals, they're functional things like doorstops and things. We need a doorstop. I need a doorstop. Fox pillow, front and back main body, um, goldfish pot holder, dog toy, so there's, there's pet toys in here as well, penguin apron beak, we'll have a flip through this book now, but you've got all of those patterns in the back, let's see if I can get them in the way they came out, <laughs> always the challenge, all right then here we go. No, I'm not going to do it. It's under pressure on the TV, isn't it? Oh, 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 we've done it. It's in. There we go. Right, let's have a little look through these then. Because they're so colourful. Oh, there's a little mouse egg cosy there. Look at that. How cute. That's sweet. And again, tips as well. You can make a matching set for the whole family or make each mouse to fit the personality of each family member. Have fun. Oh, there's the penguin apron that we've just seen the pattern pieces for. That's fun, isn't it? 
Oh, gosh. I mean, you know, on Christmas Day or something, if you didn't want something completely festive, although you could add a little Santa hat or something to it. But, you know, when you're with the old family, to pull that showstopper out, love it. Or as a present, goldfish pot holder. That's nice. A nice little bit of rickrack on there as well. Um, this one. Oh, what's this one? Then? There's a few instructions with this one, look. Let's see. The cow handbag. That's cute, isn't it? That's a nice little mate. You know, for somebody that looked like something a bit quirky, or you know, even children, do you know what I mean? They are fun little weekend makes. Something that you could get the kids, I love getting younger ones involved in sewing. Uh, my nephew, Logan, he uh, loves to sit with me at the embroidery machine and uh, press, press the go button on it, is what I'd let him do. But they get so intrigued. And anything with cars, he's a big fan of. So any car fabric I can always find, you know, I'll, I'll collect that. Bunny bottle bag, there you go. Again, nice little touch for a gift, isn't it? Maybe around Easter time, you know, you could use the bunny pattern for other things as well, I'm sure. Hedgehog pin cushion. That's cool. That's a bit cool, that is. Do you know, I love making anything for me sewing machines. It's like pets and, you know, making for them. <laughs> my sewing machines are my babies as well, so I make for them. Oh, this is nice. Butterfly placemat and coaster. And again, your little tips, the coast is only small amounts of fabric, so you can use up some scraps to make them. Great idea, scrap buster. And then, you know, fox pillow, piggy pillow, bear, laundry bag. There's this loads of projects in here. Look how cool the frog is. The frog peg bag, oh, that's got to be a favourite. Oh, that's brilliant, that one. Look at the sheep as well, sheep hot water bottle cover. Oh, these are just great. Oven gloves. They're good. That's got to be a dog in it. A dog oven glove. There's a dog, a dog toy. Okay, so it's not necessarily a pet toy. It's, it's a soft toy. Uh, outdoor stuff we talked about earlier. And then, and then look, even again, basic techniques. She's not just giving you the pattern pieces and says, get on. She's really looking after us, is our Helen. Attaching fusible wedding, positioning, pressing seams, sewing machine, iron, threads, pins, scissors. It's all in there. Look, that's a great little book. So perfect place. And as I say, something to get the kids sewing as well would be really great. We'll leave that one with you then. Right, I'm going to take a little trip over to the other desk because we have got some stunning, super soft fleece. Come with me. Here we go. <laughs> Just like that, we're back in the back in the frame. Okay, so this stuff I've worked with a lot actually. Um, I managed to bring out a, a pattern last winter called a snuggle up, which was basically an oversized hoodie. Um, but it is the softest cuddle fleece and it's really suitable um, for things like a snuggle up or a, a hoodie or something so for clothing or you could um, you know make some pet things with it as well you know if you wanted an extra soft pet bag um, I suppose as well even um, we had Jay Carter on earlier and she was showing us her toys and things so if you wanted some different colours of things I'm sure this soft fleece might be appropriate um, you know, it's great if you wanted to make some dressing gowns. Um, you know, everybody needs a dressing gown, honestly. And it, a dressing gown is always a gift at Christmas that was a staple. Dressing gown and slippers. Right, where shall we start? Let's start then with the white first. This is so beautiful and soft. This is the white, not to be confused with the cream, all right? So you can tell the right side and the wrong side on this. Oh my gosh, it is just super soft. All right, so we're just checking the price on this one. So this is for the half metre. All right, and I'm just, what I'm going to do, because we've got it in cream as well, I'm just going to show you the cream against it. So you can see the one I've got laid out is the white, and that's the cream against it, just so you can see the colour difference. Now it's not five pounds. What we're bringing up on the screen is not right. Get them blue arrows going. That's a bit better. 
3.99 for the half meter as i say it's lovely stuff to work with this now every time this is on it just fly out and i, I know that from when we did the show last winter with, with all this cuddle fleece again and we're not seeing it since then since november 2022 so we've got it back which is great um it's lovely so soft um do you know as well um i've just made from this exact stuff actually a baby blanket for a friend and all i had done is sit literally take two colors of it so you know you could probably do it from your half meter um or you could do it you know from different color shades and that but i just literally sewed two rectangles together and embroidered the name on um, and that was absolutely great. Um, so it's nice and simple to do with that as well. Um, so that's the white there. Um, we'll move on to some of the other colours as well. I've just, uh, I think, lost uh, any communication from the gallery at the minute. I've lost Ben in my ear, which is a shame. I'll go a bit rogue, but we'll go on to the next colour, which is this lovely um, mustardy type colour, really. Look at this. It's really quite wide from memory as well. Yes, yeah, so a standard width. There you go. Wonderful stuff. Um, again, really, really nice and soft. Um, it has got a little bit of a pile as well. Oh, I've got the team back in my ears now. <laughs> it's so bizarre when you're used to doing it and you've had um, everybody in the gallery in your ear all day and then all of a sudden it's silence and it's like oh I'm, I'm flying solo <laughs> go on then <laughs> this is how it felt <laughs> it's turned the lights off that's how it goes there we are so this lovely ochre colour Now, I know we're shying away from the fact, and Ben has promised us some summer on Thursday, if the, if the weather forecast right, but of course, winter will be here. It, is, it will be coming. Yeah, it was a bit dark last night, actually, when we were walking the doggos, um, and we thought, oh, it's a bit darker than, earlier than normal. Anyway, so that's that ochre colour, not to be confused with orca, <laughs> which I think I said once on a show. Um, so that lovely ochre colour again a colour that complements that so yeah i was saying the baby blanket you know if you took like a pink and a cream or a pink and a white or a grey and did the front one colour back the other and then you know you did a little bit of embroidery on it this is the dark grey one now do you know what i found when we did the snuggle up it was like finding stuff to make for men and because it was an oversized pattern um it really worked and a lot of the grey was popular then because you could make you know that kind of thing for christmas presents for the gentleman in your life um not to say that ladies can't wear gray at all absolutely of course you can but there we are it's cut to order so we're giving you the price 3.99 at a half meter but of course you know if you order you know as many units as you want we'll give it you in a continuous length so 10 units would be five meters and so in with this stuff um we've mentioned a lot today um, about using a walking foot um, and a walking foot is i would recommend to use when you're sewing two layers of this fabric together so that would be a number one tip for sewing this fabric maybe a ballpoint needle as well you might get away with a universal um, but a ballpoint needle might help again um, if you're embroidering onto this fabric then it's using the right stabil stabilizer so you'd want to make sure you wear, use the right backing you could use a tear, or, tear away or whatever for the back but a water soluble one and having a topper that would be really important if you're going to embroider onto this type of fabric um, for baby blankets is having a uh, water soluble topper um, and that will stop the stitches from sinking in to the fabric. Um, it is a little bit fluffy, I'm not going to lie. So when you're cutting this out, um, you might want to have your hoover on hand. <laughs> but, um, but when you're wearing it and once you've sewn it up and finished all the seams um, with the project, it's absolutely fine. It's just whilst you're cutting it that things get a little bit fluffy. <laughs> so it's good to know, just as a warning, I remember when um, I was demonstrating my snuggle up, it was with John and he was coming after me with a, a little handheld Uber that we'd got on the show. But again, a real useful gadget for your studio because 
or, or your sewing space. I can't help it. I can be try and be as neat as I can, but I always end up with thread everywhere. You know, you just just how it goes. You can't help it. There you go. So that's the grey colour. Right, OK, this is the cream now. This is gorgeous. A fancy bathrobe in this. I'm trying to think what else you could uh, do with it. I mean, you could, you know, make a lot of baby makes, I'm sure, with this kind of stuff. Or, you know, um, bath makes for yourself. But it is the softest um, fabric. It really, really is nice. We have got another message coming. It's great to have um, your messages in. Adam, it has been a really enjoyable morning. You are a great presenter. From another Sue in Essex. Oh, bless you. Thank you, Sue. Honestly, it's a pleasure. I love being here. I love being here with the team. Um, as I say, I'm only uh, in covering. John's on his holidays. And as I said at the top of the show, thanks, John, because he was the one that got me on the show initially. Yeah, it was. He'd seen me on the that programme we were talking about, the Great British Sewing Bee, and he asked me if I'd have liked to uh, like to come on to Sewing Street. Of course, I jumped at the chance and ended up demonstrating. And of course, I love that, and I'll still be back demonstrating. Um, I love it indeed. Hopefully, with John when he's back from his holidays. Yeah, I don't even know where he's gone. Where's he gone? Has he gone to Spain or Greece? The, the, the debating now. He's gone somewhere. <laughs> so somewhere hotter than here. He deserves a break though. Right, okay, so this is another colour for us. Silver this is. Now another tip when you're sewing this is just take um note of which way the pile goes. Can you see that as I run my hands there, there is definitely a nap or a pile to it, a bit like velvet, really. So if you're sewing anything that needs to be directional, then just make sure you're cutting everything the same way. What topper would you use for embroidering fleece? I'd probably use like a water soluble one, so one that will wash away in water. And all that does is it really helps to concentrate the embroidery stitches on top um, and stops it sinking into this cuddle fleece. Because obviously there's a nap on this, there's a pile. Um, if you just embroider straight on, which I have done in the past, like you can see it, but you don't get the best result. Whilst if you use a, some um, water soluble, um, back in on a topper on on the fabric it'll stop the stitches from sinking in um there you go and there's lo lots of uh tips in fact i'm sure we had um a visit kim in for a great uh, embroidery demo with a great machine well let's just sort the price out on that yeah we just noticed it's coming up at 4.99 it's not <laughs> Um, we're not paying extra for the silver, don't worry, we won't do that to you. It's $3.99, there you go. Lovely. All right, let's go over to this colour. I'm spending so long on this fabric because I just like stroking it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just gorgeous. Right, this is the rose. Saying it's $4.99, but it's not. We're lying to you. Never mind the red hours, we've got the blue hours today. 3 99 for the half metre. And I've got to think this is about, you know, 60 inches wide, 150, it must be. Um, it's pretty, uh, a nice width on it. Yeah, I can tell if you're doing any dress making from this, like, you know, where you uh, a uh, dressing gown and whatnot. You've got the selvages together there, the fold. You'd get a nice pattern piece there. Yeah, wonderful stuff. Oh, we've got a tape measure. Let's give it a measure while we're here. Why not? So I've got it folded over double at the moment. So yeah, oh, so over 60 wide, just, it's about 62 wide. And if you want that in centimetres, it's about 158. 158 centimetres-ish, 60 inches wide. There you go. So yeah, nice width on it. So you're getting quite a bit for your half metre, 3 99 that's the rose. How beautiful is that? Just straight. It's one of those that, you know, you could just have it in your stash and like, <laughs> you just have it in your stash to admire and look at it and stroke it. Right, going on to the next one. Oh, a nice navy blue. This is a classic colour. Absolutely. There is, um, 
it is fleece so it is like it's obviously not a woven fabric it's a knitted fabric but it, i'm pulling it and to be honest it's not overly stretchy it's quite stable which is good really i think the thing that you're battling with not battling with but the thing that you've got to comprehend is that you're dealing with thicker fabric it's got a little bit of pile on therefore it's got some loft so using a walking foot um a little stiletto or a, a an awl or a, not a stiletto is in a shoe you wear <laughs> but um like alice and marion was using early on it's like a little um little pointed tool or, or an awl or something you can just direct it through and make sure it's well under your machine before you start sewing if you just show it the machine it's not like a cotton where it'll feed it through you've got to make sure with this fabric it's underneath your, your foot nicely and you can overlock it as well uh, hi gorgeous Adam you're doing a wonderful job really lovely seeing you as I and many of us missed you at festival of quilts love your girlies Christine from County Durham. Christine, I missed you. I missed you as well because I know that Christine was a winner on the uh, quilt that was displayed. Well, we'd got the, the winning blocks um, and I saw your picture, Christine, as well as Sandra. So I must give a shout out to Sandra who um, did the Mariners Compass. Um, she's a friend of Met on Ships. Um, a few more messages. You've been brilliant this morning, Adam. Hope you will be back soon. How wide is the gorgeous fleece, please? Yeah, so about 60 inches wide, just uh, just over, or about 158 centimetres. There we go. Adam, I have so enjoyed your presenting today. You are a natural. Thank you. Do you know what? You're all too kind. Thank you, Margaret from Hertfordshire. Adam, I'd just like to say you've been a delight to watch. You seem very relaxed and I've thoroughly enjoyed seeing you present today. Well done, Louise in Hertfordshire. Honestly, you're all lovely. And do you know what? Before the pandemic, this is a little bit of what I was doing because I was working on a cruise ship, uh, managing the entertainment product on there. So I got, you know, I'd done a bit of presenting, albeit live um, in front of an audience. Um, but we used to do all sorts of things. I'll make you laugh. We used to do a sports auction and they put me on that. Well, I know stuff about sewing, but I don't, I'm not the type of bloke that knows a lot about football and sport. <laughs> <laughs> we managed to do it there you go thank you so much for your lovely comments so that was the neighbor so as we say we're about 60 wide on this just over um and if you've got an overlock with four threads on it you can overlock this together um but again just make sure you get it right under your overlocker so this is the last one this is the black super soft fleece half a meter at 3.99 Lovely. Now, lots of people have had this gorgeous fabric in the baskets in lots of different colourways. And you can see how they all complement one another. Now, the most popular has been the dark grey, actually. But just some of these colour combinations together, like, you know, the, the pink and grey could be nice. Or, you know, pink and white, if you're doing babies, lot, Or even just soft the grey and white. Um, I like, like, that's a classic combination, the grey and ochre. And I'm probably getting fluff everywhere now, but who cares? <laughs> I'll leave her up, I promise. <laughs> there we go. So we've got all of those lovely fabrics for you. So the dark grey has been the most popular. I think the navy has been quite popular as well. Um, so yeah, some different fabrics that we've had on today's show. Obviously we had at the top of um, the show at eight o'clock, all those waterproof fabrics, the ripstop fabrics and stuff. Things that you might not necessarily have used before or have in your stash, but great to get. And when the 3 99 it seems a little bit silly not to, you know, try it. Um, and to be honest, that's how you get experience is with sewing with different fabrics. Now, a tip from me to you is before I start any project, um, whatever I'm sewing it in, I run a little bit of that fabric underneath my machine uh, with the stitches and to make sure that the tension's right. But exactly how I will be sewing the garment. So I don't go straight onto the garment and I do that without fail for every project I do, no matter what it is. But that way you, you're sewing different fabrics and you, you learn that way then with different fabrics. And if you're sewing some of the offcuts, it doesn't matter if you go wrong, um, but you can kind of work out then what you need to maybe adjust slightly on some scraps and offcuts first before you go on to the main project. And as I say, each fabric has its challenges 
um, and this is just that it's got a pile and it's probably a little bit thicker so a walking foot the right needle and um, making sure it gets underneath the machine um, for it to be driven through there you go cuddle fleece oh i've had a suggestion here another Adam, another string to your bow. It's great to see you interacting with us and the guests. Maybe this could happen once a month. Oh, I don't know, Susan from Merseyside. Well, listen, you'll have to have a chat with the powers that be. <laughs> Do you know what, though? We, when we're lucky, I, I love um, when I've guest demoed mode with Rebecca and with Stuart and obviously with John. Um, absolutely great. It's been fantastic. Um, Let's just get another message. Fabulous presenting today. Well done and more, please. <laughs> more, more, more. Well, we'll see. Do you know what? You've been, you've been fantastic. You're the ones that keep us going. Right, so that's the cuddle, please. Um, are we going to be going on to... We've got a few more bits, I think. Right, I'm going to whip over to the other desk and see what else we've got. We've got some more goodies, can you believe? Some half metre fabrics and going on the pet theme, I think, again. Right, so we're going to do the bundle first. I love these, all right? These are limited. I'm just going to tell you that now. But what a lovely bundle. There we go. Look at the colours of these. That's cats on there. These are, oh, there's, there's some uh, birds on that one, look. 52.43, that's not right. That's what it should be. So we're crashing the price to 49.99. And we're down to single figures. This is lovely, honestly. This is really unique fabric in terms of the design, I think. Um, Catsville collection. You probably won't use them all together, but there's certainly things that you could make again it's when you're using uh, if you're quilting your blenders and your solids um they'd mix in but they're a real jazzy type print do you know what i mean it's like a jazzy cat jazz cat <laughs> there you go but you know they're lovely so uh that's a bundle there so you get one two three four five six seven designs and seven prints there in that bundle and that's three and a half metres in total. Well done, Adam. You have all the qualities of a fabulous presenter and a wonderful demonstrator. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Honestly, I love it. And we all get excited about fabric anyway, don't we? Well, I do. I love these. Honestly, do you know what? Yeah, they might be a bit too busy to pair all together. But, you know, broken up with some solids and things. It is a lovely collection. Ben's just saying he'd like some pencil cases. I just think that they're, they're cute because they're not your, they're, they're a bit quirky in terms of the design. <laughs> it's fabulous. We're saying it's like if Keith met a cat. <laughs> it's got a little bit of a, an inspiration maybe from him, some of the colours maybe. Um, but yeah, look, they're lovely. So if you don't want the bundle, we do have these fabrics available by the half metre as well. But having said that, a lot have already sold out. And I'm not surprised that purple one on top, that's sold out. So that's gone then. It's 7.49 for half a metre then. So we've got this one, we've got the blue one. All right, so that's 749 for the Catsville Collection. A birdie sky fabric, half a metre there. That's very nice. I love that. It's just fun, nice bright colours. I love to see stuff um, that's bright. A little tote bag, little pencil case. You know, anything you want, really. That'd be cute, wouldn't it? So we've got that one. Um, the next one on my pile is the same design, but in the black. Black and gold, yeah, almost. This would go in Ben's living room. <laughs> Can you imagine having curtains made out of that? <laughs> there you go. Isn't that lovely? The design of it. I actually really like that colourway. 
and the beiges and the orange and the yellows peeping through. Really lovely design. It is quite high end looking. For a cravat. <laughs> In your birdie cravat. <laughs> lovely i really really love that and you know even if you could get creative like because it's such a busy print but talking about putting it with a solid if you made a cushion and i did like you know picked out one of the colors for a bit of piping and then maybe like you know split it on a diagonal on the front and then use that as the accent fabric you know the busy print and then a complementary color i could really see that with a bit of piping picked out <laughs> Hello Adam, you're doing such a fantastic job, really natural, I hope to see more of you presenting soon. Do you know what, somebody once told me, thank you very much, that's uh, Sally from Essex, thank you Sally. Somebody once told me, Adam, just be yourself, because you are unique and nobody else is like you, and that goes for everybody, you know, you are your own person. It takes a lot of confidence to be yourself, but there you go. It's the only way to be. You can't be anything else, can you? Well, I certainly can't. All right, here we go then. What have we got with these cats here? These are crazy cats. <laughs> have we got these in stock? They've sold out. Sold out. Do you know what? This is what you could have had. You can get it in the bundle if you want to, if you really, really want this one and you'll have to have the rest in the bundle, but we've not got it singularly now. They are. This is what you could have had. We're teasing you now. That one's sold out. Is it done in the black colour way as well? Is that... No, okay, so we've not got it in the... Oh! The last one's just gone. <laughs> we've not got it then. Oh, dear me. I love this. This is like jazz, jazzy cat. <laughs> And, and a jazz cat and the uh, other one is uh, even jazzier i hope we've got it got some left hopefully we've got some of this we've got a meter and a half left that's it so 749 it could be yours it's like a, a montage of cats a moggy montage <laughs> there they are they've got them there Three units left. Uh, eight people have got it in the basket. All right. Somebody's going to get it. But £7.49 for a half metre. Okay. It's nice, that. Wonderful. And then moving on to the next one, then, which is the same design, but just in a different colourway. This is the Jazzy A Jazz Cat. <laughs> Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, I think that was my favourite one as well. I'm not going to lie. It was everyone's. That's why it sold. There you go. All right, then. OK, so they're all sold out, those ones. So we've got uh, basically out of the bundle, those ones left for the half metre. So you can still get those. You can get the mega bundle. So the mega bundle is all of those fabrics that we've shown you. The seven of them. There's only three of those bundles there for $49.99. That's been really popular. That well, I can see why, because it's it's something a little bit different from the norm. They're really funky designs and the colour's really vibrant. Which is what we love. That's great. Okay. Right. Well, we've got some other bits and bobs as well. Yeah, let's do the panel. All right, so um I'm not sure who I've seen demonstrate this. It might have been Emma Bradford, you know. Well, it might be new in. There's ones that have been similar. Um, and I remember seeing a Christmas tree at one time. I remember seeing a Christmas tree panel. Anyway, this is um, a Naren Japanese cat's panel. Now, we're doing a bit of research on these, and apparently a Naren, it, or I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, would be something that um, Japanese people would hang between a doorway 
to keep um, any kind of foreboding of, of Mother Nature away. Maybe we should all hang them up for over the night of summer. Um, but that's kind of where, and you'll often see them in Japan in shop doorways and stuff. And that's kind of, you know, a little bit of history. I'm, you know, I might be 100% accurate there. I'm not Wikipedia, but I did have a quick look. And I do remember actually, I was lucky enough to go over to Japan um, earlier on this year. And I remember seeing some of these. Anyway, this is the Loren Japanese cat's panel. So, um, it says it's half a metre, but it's uh, 19.99. Is that right for this one? It's a, well, it's a full panel that is, um, and it's almost it almost feels a bit lininy as well. This one, it's, it's certainly got a linen look with the weave. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could have this as a hang-in if you're a cat lover, how beautiful would it be? You know, if you back it, you've got your 80-20 and your 505 spray, and then you've backed it, done some straight line quilting or free motion uh, quilting. Um, and then a nice piping, maybe if you picked out the red, would be nice in a piping, or you could, you know, keep it quite simple. Um, and that's really nice, a really nice design of the cats. They are. So that's that panel at 1999. Um, there's a few uh, messages that have come through on the Facebook as well, actually. There. Uh, and yeah, oh, I forgot to say to Christine, actually, I miss being at Festival of Quilts um, because I was there last year and had a great time. I, I was, I'm just too busy. Um, I've been pattern testing and sewing all sorts of stuff, so I couldn't make it. But fingers crossed for the next sewing event or the next show. Um, when Jevon said, hi Adam, having a lovely morning watching, that was our cat Bella on before helping out and she's watching you on the iPad. Oh, <laughs> and Christine says, haha, moggy montage. <laughs> so we've been looking what Japanese cat panels look like. Ben's been looking and he's found this exact same panel, what, somewhere else? Oh, okay. So somewhere else, it's twenty four fifty eight. Well, we've got it at a better price than that. Look, so nineteen ninety nine. So a bit of a price comparison there. There you go. That's what I mean. Yeah, in between the doorways. Yeah, it is. You know, quite a traditional thing in Japan. They are really cute. I mean, to do, that one's obviously probably doubled up to the panel that we've got here. But, you know, if you wanted it as some wall art or something, really, really nice. Decorative. Oh, yeah, the big long sticks and stuff that you could, yeah, build. Um, yeah, that's it. Sew a little loop, hang it round. You could have it as a wall hanging or, you know, between the door or whatever. Um, so there you go. Yeah, fabulous stuff. We'll leave that one with you for now. So there we are, 19.99 if you want that uh, panel there. As I say, it's got a nice linen look to it. I'm not sure of the composition. Right, all these other fabrics now are by the half metre. But we have got another panel, we think. Is that this one? Is it this one? All right, <laughs> let's go for it. Oh, this is lovely. This is festive. This is 9.99. <laughs> Do you know what? This is lovely. Look at this. Oh gosh, it's a lovely panel. There we go. Look at these cats. It's got even a bottle of wine. Noel. A cat and it's like a cat in a teacup there or something. A little present. Those are cute, aren't they? They're little kittens, really. These are. Look at that joy which is our, what our pets are. So the, the, these are lovely. You've got some separate panels here for Christmas time. And you know, you could, you could make some placemats out of this and maybe have the joy bit as the centre panel of the table. Or it could be cushions, or it could be tote bags, or it could be whatever you wanted it to be. That's a great thing about sewing, is your imagination is your only limitation. <laughs> right, there you go. Wonderful. So that's that one. Right. Right. OK, we're going to go through some half meters now then of some of these wonderful fabrics that we've got. 
and we'll just go in order as I get them. So we've got um, this one. This is nice. Okay, so we've got the graphics in here. Six ninety nine mod cat kitty silhouette red at half a meter. So six ninety nine for your half meter. That wonderful. So you've got different cats on there. Very nice. Um, the next one, are we sticking on the, are these festive? They look a little bit festive. These are mice on here, I think, with little presents and things. It's cute. You've got some reds and greens in there with the mice, so yeah. There's, yeah, and there's little sprigs of holly in between. Yeah. It's nice, it almost feels like, unless you close up, you wouldn't necessarily know what the design is on that. Yeah, it's quite a ditzy print, but it is mice on there. Just to let you know, that is cute. Furry and bright is what it's called. There you go. Sticking on the uh, festive theme. Um, oh, we've got some more kitties. Look at these. Santa cat, <laughs> believe cat, drunk cat. <laughs> There you go, present cats, so cats in a sleigh. So again, yeah, festive. Because um, the thing is, I know we've just had Christmas in July, but you need to start making your Christmas makes early on. Right, okay. Oh, we've got the uh, tea in a, uh, tea in a cup. Of course tea goes in a cup. <laughs> oh, I could write you a coffee right now. Although the lads have been ask, looking after me today. They've made me a couple of coffees, yeah. Right, uh, here we go then. So your cat's in the teacup there, again, festive. Um, these look like little candies in between, the reds and the whites, bit of a candy theme going on. That's nice, isn't it, on the white background? So that's lovely. And then the next one we've got up is on a black background and it's cat in a stocking. I think it's cat in a stocking anyway, let's see. That's a cat in a stocking. And the stocking's got wings. That's unusual. I like it. That's fabulous. So you've got the little candy wheels in between the cats. Uh, we've got different cats, grey cats and ginger cats on that one. It's lovely, isn't it? And then the white little speckles feel like snow on that one. It's all lovely fabric. Right, now this is unusual and nice and uh, I think quite designer actually in the, the style because it's quite simple. I don't know if you can see, again, it's one of those prints that until you get close up, you see what it is. And when you do get close up, you'll see that it's a little um, outline silhouette of a cat's face. Just simple line, digital, on the blue, really nice. It's what it is. Um, lovely 6 99 for your half meter on that. So that's nice. And then we move on to this one. Um, this is a Riley Blake. Mod Meow. Oh, uh, I can see it again. These are really nice because it, it's not dead obvious, but then it is when you look. So it's like, um, you know, on the Japanese panel that we've just had with the really um, stylized, tall, skinny type cat. That's what these are. So it's the silhouette of the cat. Very nice on that really nice uh, honey color. That's really lovely, actually. Love the colour. Next one, oh, we've got another festive one. So, I mean, you could buy um, the collection of festive ones, couldn't you? There we go. So this one then, here we are. We've got the moon, you've got the trees, the snow, the candy canes, <laughs> Santa cat. <laughs> oh, this is cute, 100% cotton, obviously. Fairy and bright collection there. Uh, is that the uh, 9 99 We well, think that's bigger. Um, let me have a look. Um, well, that's the self edge. No, that's half a meter. Because the half meter's cut that way. Let's crash it. A brand new as well. Seven ninety nine there for that one. So crash the price there a little bit on that one for you. There. Are. Wonderful stuff. Next one then, what we've got in here. Oh, this is fun. Again, nice like uh, bright rainbow colours in here, but subtle with it, little stars in between. Um, it looks like they're in cocktail glasses or stacks of glasses, or it might not be there at all. It's a little bit abstract, but uh, 
yeah, you've got these little black cats and they're quite stylized, quite designed. Or are they like spec? No, it depends on which way you look at it. Like these little cat stands, yeah, that's what they are. Yeah, it's cute. And then we've got two more left. Um, I think, although this one looks very similar to something that we've had earlier on. That's the cat's fill. There you are, 749, Catsville Collection, Prism, Tabby Fabric. That's nice. And then there's one more here, and this is cute as well. Uh, a bit softer in colour, this one. Embroidery hoop toss fabric. They are, so it's like cat faces in embroidery hoops, basically. That's nice. So there you are, all those fabrics by the half metre. Now remember, today, back in stock, it's the last time I'm going to mention it today, um, but I know that when it first released it was a sellout, um, well we've managed to get some more in and again they've been flying out. So if you want um, the easy guide for dressmaking, it, this you know, it's probably, might be your last chance to get it. Um, there's so many in baskets, 100 people have got it in baskets. Listen. I think that, you know, I can stand here and say it's a great book, which I believe it is. You know, looking through it, I'm a dressmaker and I think that, yeah, it covers a lot of things and one of the most important things is fit. But when we get feedback from people that have actually bought it and the general consensus of people that have messaged in has been it's dressmaking and so much more. And I think that much more is, is the, the fitting side of it. And Helen really holds your hand throughout all of the steps and really gives you... Um, some help with it full scale patterns in all the sizes it's really really a great buy for anybody that's um, you know into dressmaking but wanting to perfect fit um, you know I've talked about it earlier on today and I say this is the last time I'll mention it but this is the interesting bit the advanced pattern alterations you know gaping armhole if you've got a gaping armhole nobody wants one of them then, you know, this is how you adjust that. You know, a full bust alteration, or as commonly abbreviated in the industry as an FBA. Yeah, um, or you can have, you know, a, a, a smaller bust adjustment as well, um, and shows you how to make the alteration. You know, so it's, it's taking the pattern and understanding uh, the pattern pieces um, to get a nice fit. And that is what I would say is the selling point of this book. It's not just a pattern, here you go, make it. It's also, here's a pattern, here's the sizes we're providing you as block patterns, but here's how to alter that pattern to suit your body shape. Make a twirl. I'm not going to lie to you, there are the things that take a little bit more time. Like when you're getting into dressmaking, you just want to kind of go ahead, make a project and wear it. But the more you go on, the more you realise making a twirl you know our calico is really important because it allows you to then get the fit right and alter it and making that twirl and following helen's instructions is here is going to help you um, make those adjustments that you you're going to need to get a nice fitted garment there it is helen rhiannon dressmaking the easy guide and i think easy because there's lovely descriptions tips and uh there's great images in there as well Right, we're going to just uh, quickly mention and run over again the super soft fleece, all right? Um, you've seen it in all the different colourways. Here we go, we've got it in the white, the rose, the ochre, the cream, the silver, the grey, the navy, the black. Lots of different colours. The most popular has been the grey. Um, so here we go. Here's the graphics coming in the screen. Um, the prices for the half metre. As we said, it's about 60 inches wide. Um, so it's nice and wide for you. 3.99 for the half metre. All of them are 3.99 for the half a metre. You know, it's a nice fabric to have in your stash. Lots of these colours, as I said earlier on, will complement one another. Um, so if you wanted to buy a different couple, you know, a couple of colourways. Because I always think if you're doing a dressing gown, so if we're doing it, I don't know, in the navy, 
then it's always nice then i mean the navy and rose the lining on the hood would be nice as a different color so that's why i'm always like do you know what if you can you know get a couple of complementary colors the colors that you like together um and it'll just give a garment some definition lovely right well it's time now to see what's coming up on tomorrow's show so let's have a look at tomorrow's menu what have we got um tomorrow for you at 8am we've got jason yen to garden of dreams part two there you go stewart's presenting that so that'll always be a delight. I love Stuart. He always gives me a good giggle. 9am, Crafter's Companion, multi-craft festive treat decorations with Becky Swan. I've met Becky. I spoke to her on the phone. She's great. She's lovely. Uh, 10 o'clock, you've got sewing room tools. Well, I've been talking about tools all day. So there you go. You maybe can add to your tool collection. 11 o'clock, Crafter's Companion, again, with Becky Swan. So I'm guessing she'll be doing some more demonstrating for us. And then at 12 p.m., uh, K Facet Quilts and Fabrics. What a fabulous lineup you've got up tomorrow. Well, there we go, folks. You've got a great day to look at, um, forward to tomorrow. I just want to say from me, thank you so much. I must say thank you to Alison, to Joe. Um, thank you for all of your messages and messaging. And that's what makes the show. It's not just me in front of a screen, although it kind of is, but you messaging in makes a difference because it makes it interactive and we love that. Um, so yeah, loads of fabrics that we've had on the show and I have to say I look forward to seeing you next time I'll be back demonstrating for sure, maybe back presenting um, and I hope John has a lovely holiday, who knows, watch this space, you've been a delight and I'll see you next time, thank you.